All right, 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 all right. Let's get started. How you guys doing? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Hello, hello, hello. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are doing well. Let me get booted up. We got a pretty good day of scrims today. I think we actually have a really, really good variety today in terms of games. Um, so you guys might remember we used to do five killer pulls per week, and where we basically have five killers, and you would do like you know pick, pick, ban, ban, and then tiebreaker. And we bumped it up to seven, like maybe like a few weeks back. And today is like one of the first weeks where I think we maybe have all seven killers potentially being played, uh, I think. So let me just take a quick look real quick. Um, the schedule, is it updated? It is. Yes, yeah, so we have Wraith Legion guaranteed in the first set with Nemi tiebreaker. Billy Blight with a Nemesis tiebreaker. Billy Nemesis with a, Dem with a Demogorgon tiebreaker. And then Wraith Pyramid Head with a, Demogorgon with, a, with a Demo tiebreaker. I think the only thing that's not guaranteed is Demo. I think Demo is in two tiebreakers. But other than that, I'm pretty sure everything else is guaranteed, right? Wraith, Legion, Billy, Blight, Nemi, Pyramid Head. Yeah, everything else is guaranteed. So the only thing that's not guaranteed is Demo. Um, demo is like in two, two separate tiebreakers that we might get to. But... Yeah, I mean, everything else we're at least guaranteed to see, which is fucking awesome. We're also going to guaranteed see two Billy sets, which is also pretty fucking awesome. So, I don't know, man. Great sets. Great, great, great sets today. I'm really curious to see how, how a lot of these games go. There's a lot of wild cards here, right? Like Legion, I have no fucking idea how that's going to go. Uh, Billy is still, I think, up in the air, I think, because, like, I, I don't know. Like, Billy is such a weird killer right now, and he's extremely strong, and I really don't know how people are going to adapt to it. And also, on top of that, there's also the new rules. There's also the new rules and everything, too, right? There's, a, there's, a, there's like, the whole, there, there's the whole new rule set where we have a bunch of, uh, a bunch more bans and, like, restrictions, and I'm curious to see how that plays out, especially with killers like Wraith and stuff, where, like, there's going to be more bans and more things where, like, I feel like people already struggled even with all the things that we had allowed before, right? Like, we even had, like, Delhi and all this stuff allowed before, and now, like, all that stuff's gone, and so are, like, a lot of the strongest perks for, like, healing and resetting and stuff. Um, so I'm curious to see how the teams adapt to that and how they do. So, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, Rats of RPD picked Legion because Bucketman... Um, Bucket Man, uh, 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 is like a Legion man, and he's been asking for Legion for, like, literally, like, ten gazillion years now. Like, he's always, he's always hounding Dino to, like, add Legion to the pool, and Dino's like, ugh. And they finally add him to the pool, and they finally got to play him, so now he better shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's basically what we're getting at, is he better shut the fuck up now, you know what I mean? Like, he better, like, he better stop. Uh... I'm quite interested to see how Wraith, play, how Wraith plays out. Same, 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 same. Yeah, because our balancing is actually still pretty lax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so our balancing previously with Wraith was like extremely, it was like extremely lax. Like it was like, not even lax. It was like borderline absurd to be honest with you. Like it was like again, like you allow like Delhi Unbreakable, you allow like Botany and all this crazy shit. I, so I feel like this new balancing feels like it's. A little bit more towards like what people are used to but it's still a little bit leaning on the survivor side right like we still allow all exhaustions and everything which is a pretty huge deal uh we still do allow like some reset perks i think like some things to help with like resets so there is still some options there um so yeah i mean we'll see we'll see because again wraith I, we, we've seen wraith dominate even with like the like delhi unbreakable right like even allowing things like delhi and botany and circle even like circle of healing like we even allowed like circle of healing before right like we allowed all that crazy shit before and um he still was doing pretty okay like i feel like he was getting decent results most of the time so i'm really curious to see like i, I don't i mean i i think i, I think i think we, it might not end up being that different because like it, it's really gonna depend right like we might see some kind of like domination games from killers but we might also still see some survivors doing just fine right it's, it's still gonna be a big skill matchup so i guess we'll see it's gonna be the killer from frosty eyes first up against the survivors from rats or of of uh, rats so um let me see let me see yeah yeah exactly dino yeah yeah like allowing like like uh like allowing exhaustions i was actually thinking about this I, I didn't really want to do it because I figured it's like unnecessarily like if it, it, it feels kind of unnecessary in terms of like restrictions, but I was thinking about trying to get bounds landing specifically banned against Wraith, but allowing the other exhaustions because I feel like there's so many like 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 things like gallows in main building becomes so much more safe when you have bounce landing involved, right? So I feel like allowing like maybe like live and sprint burst and having those be like the only options you have there as opposed to balance but like even that just feels unnecessary because i feel like you might as well get rid of all of them if you're gonna do that you know so i don't i don't know i don't, I don't know actually yeah finesse even said the same thing no 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 balance landing i do feel like balance landing on dead dog is kind of 
yeah, it's kind of nuts, but I don't know. At the same time, like you still have live, you still have sprint merge, you still have other options outside of balance. So like, I don't really know how big of a difference it's going to make. Like it does make a bit of a difference, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Are we going to have the correct dead dog saloon map this time? Yeah, we all, we, we've, we've had the correct dead dog saloon. What do you mean? Yeah, here, I'll show you here. I'll even pull it up on screen right now here. This is the correct dead dog saloon. Here you go. Ready? There you go. Correct map. Correct clock callouts right there. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bell Atlantic makes the already the, the the already safe. Yeah, exactly. It makes the already safe places much safer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But like like uh, Balance Lando. Or, or sorry. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Like like a uh, Balance Landing can just pressure Gallows off cooldown easily with no fear whatsoever. It may, it also makes like the buildings with like the little railways to go up extremely safe. It makes main building like ten times more safe than it already is, which is like kind of insane. Like I feel like Balance Landing is just extremely strong in so many ways on that map. So. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's definitely a thing. That is definitely, definitely a thing. If we win tonight, will you give chat one little meow? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll hit you with like a, I'll hit you with a strong maybe. A very strong maybe. All right, who am I waiting on? Who's the, who's the killer here? What's happening? What's, what's, yo, like, what's the haps here? Are they doing build checks or something? Are they freaking out? What's going on? Where's team? Where's team? Where's team? Where's team? Where's team? Team, 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 team. There they are. Sick. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, bad tempers from um, bad tempers from uh, the little, 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 little frosty eyes. I can't remember the team name. Sorry. Going up against the survivors of yeah, sure, perfect. Is Contra playing survivor? I don't know. I'm inviting him anyway. Let's get let's get let's get the gamers in here. So again, Wraith, uh, Dead Dog Saloon with the new with the new restrictions. There's a lot of things that you, that 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 can't be run in this set now. So again, you guys, if you guys have been watching streams a long time, you probably have a general feel for like what's been allowed and what's not been allowed. So let me just give you like a quick rundown since we're kind of chilling right now anyway on the kind of things that aren't allowed now. Because I think we put Wraith in tier. Oh, we actually put him in tier two. Oh, I actually didn't realize Wraith was tier two. I thought he was in tier three. That's interesting. That's interesting that, 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 that we put him in tier two. I think I was the one that made us do that. So I think that's on me, to be honest with you. I'm pretty sure I pushed for that really hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, you know, I still don't take back entirely. Like, you know, now I'm kind of second guessing it. I'll be honest with you. Like, now that I'm looking at it, I am second guessing. That was me. Dino wanted to put him in tier three. Maybe Dino even wanted to put him in tier four. I don't know. But like... I remember putting him in tier two, and my and my reasoning is because survivors, again, like Wraith puts up pretty fucking good results. I feel like like Wraith puts up pretty damn good results, and he has been putting up pretty damn good results, even with things like Delhi and you know Unbreakable and stuff. Like I feel like he's been popping off. But at the same time, okay, so the 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 additional band perks are like Autodidact, Botany, Champion of Light, Dead Hard, Deliverance, uh, Inner Strength, Overcome, Resurgence, and Breakable. But there is still a decent bit of stuff that is allowed, right? Like you can still run like desperate measures, um, 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 you can still run like second winds. Uh, we'll make it. Um, like there is still some good like reset perks that are still allowed. So there actually is a good bit here. And you know what? This will actually be an, 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 an interesting showcase. We have two wraith matches tonight, right? Okay, so we have this 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 wraith matchup with frosty eyes and rats, and then the very last set of the night of sorrow versus four dots one locker. And that's a more, if I'm not mistaken, I. I I, I know I recognize a couple names from Four Dice One Locker, and I don't know if we, have we seen Sorrow yet, or am I thinking of a different team? But I think that, I think those are going to be two very like high skill teams, right? So I think that'll be a uh, a very solid showing too. I think I think both these race sets will will get a pretty good showing, and maybe after these sets are done, we can consider moving Wraith down to tier three. Because honestly, I actually thought he was in tier three. <laughs> I'm gonna be perfectly real with you. I kind of surprised myself. Like past Tofu surprised current Tofu when I saw this just now. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> okay, yeah, here, I'll give you guys a gamble. Frosty Eyes versus Rats. Um, There you go, you guys can gamba it up. Go nuts, go, go nuts, go gamba, go nuts. There you go. Two minutes, go nuts. Yeah, I think I think tier three feels, feels, feels more fair. Because then you're just getting rid of things like um, you like you're getting rid of DS. You're getting rid of we'll make it. You're getting rid of second wind. You're getting rid of uh, resurgence, and 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 I think like leader and uh, inner strength maybe even like there's a lot of like basically like the main difference between tier two and tier three is like mostly reset perks. Like there's like there's like there's some other things too like deja vu I think is banned in tier three and it's not banned in tier two. 
um, which also is just like a good perk. But I think, again, with Wraith, I think the biggest thing that kind of shits on Wraith is when there's a lot of like strong healing perks, right? Like, for instance, with our previous rule set, right, where we allowed everything, it was crazy because it was like circular healing. You could, like you could have circular healing, you could have botany knowledge, you could have we'll make it, and like all these like crazy different ways to like reset people, which is wild. I mean, we still honestly do have a lot allowed. Like we still do allow, uh, we'll make it, um, you know, all those things that I just said or whatever. But like, yeah, we'll see. Because I think if we were shaking it down to tier three, it, it feels like you would probably. Feel like I think you would feel a lot better as uh, about like getting tags as Wraith with like tier two or, or with tier three bouncing as opposed to tier two bouncing. Past over had some wild thoughts on the bouncing, dude. Was there anything else I said that's crazy, Dino? Dude, I don't know. I don't know. I literally right now I'm like that wasn't even that long ago we had that conversation, right? It was like a couple weeks ago. Was there anything else I said that was crazy? Like you could be honest with me, Dino. If I said something else, if I said something else crazy, feel free to tell me. Cause I, I thought, like again, right now, I, I just thought about Wraith, and I was like, oh yeah, I probably said to put him in tier three, right? Like I probably said to do that, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What, dude, dude, fucking, what else was past Tofu doing? Oh my lord, I'm scared. I'm, I'm terrified. Uh, yeah, the survivor team is rats. Yeah, this is rat survivors, um, and this is the killer from Frosty Eyes. Yo, Maya, what up? Good to see you, gamer. Hello, hello. Lily Cracker, what up? Hi, hello, hello. There's, uh, there's definitely multiple perks that should 100% be banned in certain places that aren't. Can you give me some examples? Because honestly, you can maybe just convince me right now. I, I Look, I don't know, man. I, I was on the fly, and I was just I was just saying and doing shit. You know, I'll be honest with you. I maybe, I maybe might regret some of those choices. If you can think of anything, feel free to bring it up, and maybe I'll just, like... You know, I might stick to my guns. Maybe, like, maybe I'll stick to my guns on it, but, like... Like, for instance, if you would have asked me, like, three days ago about, like, Wraith being in Tier 2 instead of Tier 3, I'd probably have been like, oh, yeah, what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, you could probably put Wraith in Tier 3. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. That's kind of funny. Rookie Spirit slipped through versus GF. Is that really that big of a deal? I remember Laser telling me about how Rookie Spirit can be, like, pretty good in that set. But is it really, like, a huge deal? I mean, we'll see. Hold on. We'll, 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 uh, we'll uh, come back to that. Because I feel like with the... My I'm thinking like with all the other stuff we allow, it might not even be that big of a deal. But anyway, we'll we'll we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, all right, builds and survivors are shown. I didn't take a thorough look, so hopefully there's no penalties or anything. Actually, I probably should do that. Uh, but pretty much the build you expect from Bad Tempers. He's got uh, Swift Hunt and Shadow Dance, Bamboozle, Sloppy, Pain Res, Corrupt. Pretty much the build we'd expect. Um, Vigil fixated, Desperate Metro Sprint Burst there. Uh, head on with we'll make it in Rezzy, Bounce Landing, Hope, Adrenaline, Deja Vu. And uh, for the people, yep, 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 yep. So nothing banned being brought, so that's good. I mean, builds are good. Builds are good. But yeah, I mean, pretty solid stuff there. It's pretty much what we were seeing. I, I actually don't think we saw we'll make it on any of their builds, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I mean, still pretty... Pretty solid setup from the survivors, it looks like. And Bad Temper's kind of struggling to get anything going. He is taking a call. He's, he, he took a chase here, but he hasn't actually gotten a hit yet. And he's chasing around Bucket Man at the moment. And even this feels like it won't be a hit. He should be able to make that window. He'll, he'll be able to get the drop down and maybe? But no, Bucket Man actually gets some, gets some good distance away. That looked like it might have been like a live, like a delayed live. Refines Allen, who is Smokey. And Smokey should at least get a tag here. But pretty good start from 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 rats. I mean, this first chase has not been uh, has not been terrible for these guys at all. Pretty good opening. Jackpot is gone though. So he's got to be careful. Maybe that wasn't calmed. I don't know. But oh, the head on, oh, the head on from the Rebecca. So good from the locker. Gets him out to these fillers back at uh, back gallows. But these fillers are a little dangerous. This gets a little bit sketchy here because you gotta start winning 50-50s, right? I mean, there's one 50-50 in Smokey's favor. And he's just actually, he's actually just going to kick the pallet, which is a little surprising. I mean, they, he didn't have Shack Pallet to fall back on, so that wasn't really that safe. I think kicking that pallet was maybe not necessary. Rebecca's here to take a hit. She doesn't even need to, actually. So, yeah, she's going to bail off. And she's going to kind of take a hit anyway. That was a little sloppy. I mean, I kind of get the idea of wanting to take a hit for your teammate, but he didn't really need a hit at that moment. So, you kind of just ended up, like, donating a hit for free when you could have just been, like, away on Jens. And, ooh, that was a good play from Bad Tempers. He's going to get the down, although he sees the guy crouching right beside him. He's going to bait this, right? Surely, yeah, I was going to say. I don't, Dwight, I don't know. I don't know what this Dwight's doing. He thinks he's hidden, but there's no way, bro. There's no way you're hidden there. Like, what are you doing? But one gen done. There honestly should be good, a, a good bit of progress elsewhere, you'd think. Ooh, 
The man of the bucket! The man of the bucket coming through and getting the save. Okay, all right. So still no first hook. First hook still being delayed a little bit longer. That was a really good down position too because that was going to be right dead center of the map. So denying that's actually really big because that would have been a like because like because like that would have been a, a a hook position basically wherever Bad Tempers wanted it, which would have been a really good position for him to be in, considering this kind of rough start. But instead they get that save and now the rough start continues. Still a pallet back here as well. Ooh, Smokey loses that 50-50 though. He's going to go down. So the down does come in, but again, good, good, but actually not a crazy, you know, like I actually thought there would be more progress on gens than there is. This heal is coming in pretty slowly onto JTF from Bucket Man. And Dwight is injured in doing the Gallows gen right now. And he has live. He doesn't have bounce landing, but he has live. So not bad. I mean, they have a, like, they have about like 50, maybe a little more on that gen at the bottom of the street. And then Gallows had a little over 50 as well. So two different gens have progressed a bit, but honestly, not as much progress as I thought there'd be. Good vault from Dwight with Lithe. He'll be able to get some distance off that and go into this. Again, you're, he's kind of going back into this place though. Like this pallet's pretty, like this pallet right here is pretty good. But beyond this pallet, most of these pallets back here are sort of death traps. And even this one is not like perfectly safe. It's like solid, but it's not like, a, it's not like perfect, right? Mr. Memphy doing a really good job though so far. Bad Tempers actually kicks it on the wrong side and gives Memphy the whole map, which he'll use to make Shaq. Although I think he's dead here though. He does, do they have head on in this locker? Okay, they had, they had head on the locker, I see, yeah. I think Bad Tempers knew it too. He was trying to play around it. He's gonna go ahead and get the down and to pick up in Shaq. That first look also wasn't a pain res either, by the way. Did they finish Gallows? Is that what they did? Yeah, I think they did. Gallows is done. This gen at the bottom of the street is also very important. That's a very, very important generator, right? Oh, they actually, actually, they didn't do Gallows. Wait, what gen did they do? Oh, I'm a dumb bitch. I didn't even see what gen they did. Okay, so there, are, I guess there is more progress than I realized. Because, yeah, both these gens are at about like 50, 60, and then they got a different gen done as well. I just don't know where. In top side somewhere? Was it, oh, was it over here across the street? I think it was it was either main or it was or it was one like over here on the on the uh, on the right side across the street at like three. I don't know. Unhook comes in. the The heal does get interrupted and it looks like Bad Tempers wants to stay on Dwight now. This is a little surprising because I feel like we're kind of late in the trial now to be going for a tunnel out, right? Like if you're trying to tunnel out Dwight at this point, you're gonna lose too much for this, right? Especially because you you saw that. Oh, Rebecca. Ooh, Rebecca coming in and getting a st getting a stun. Try to get a blind with a firecracker, but doesn't get it either. But like, yeah, like you like you saw the progress on Gallows and the end of the street. Like you know they're close to popping, so you know you're getting close to one gen left. This feels like way too late in the game to be going for a tunnel out. And yeah, he is gonna lose those two gens, and he didn't even get the rehook onto Dwight either. So yeah, targeting Dwight there doesn't feel like the, a, a great play, and he does get punished for it quite a bit with pressure. Oh, Dwight, maybe forcing DS. Trying to force DS. He doesn't. He actually. It actually runs out. But he still has live up. He still has a pretty good pallet here as well. Ooh, good play on that pallet by Dwight. Very, very well played. And this is going to be a big result for survivors, man. There's only one gen left. And Bucket Man is currently cranking it with Deja Vu. And Bad Tempers just cannot get anything going, man. This is. The, 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 this could end up being somewhere between like two and five stages, depending on how this goes. Like, this is not looking good at all. He does find the gen that's being worked and gets hit on the bucket man who's going to use the bounce landing proc here to get away. That'll help him make main. Memphi gets healed up. And yeah, this is going to be a very strong result. So we were talking about all the restrictions for Wraith and how we have pretty lax restrictions. And I think, I mean, I was going to say, I think that's showing. But realistically, I feel like there was also just like a lot of like play here that like went like there was, like there was a lot of like like micro play that was in the survivor's favor that the killer could have gotten more out of too, right? It's definitely not all builds, but I definitely feel like the builds are helping quite a bit, right? The exhaustion perks are making it a bit difficult, um, as well as just all the other like fast resets and faster gen things that that, that, that are existing. And I'm, I'm wondering how much that's really playing a role. Final gen gets done, Bucket Man has adrenaline and he's already on the gate. And Smokey gets found and he's honestly one of the targets where if you're rats, you're probably okay with this. He's only worth two stages. He's only worth two stages. You can gladly just let him die. And yeah, they're going to. Because Bad Tempers isn't going for anything more. They're already opening the gate down the street. They're out of here. They're out. That's going to be four stages. 
Are they gonna try to greed this for more? Don't greed this for more. Just take four stages. Don't you fucking dare. If these, I swear to God, if these motherfuckers try to greed this for more and then end up like punting away like six, seven stages, four stages is a fantastic result. Just take your four stages, okay? Take your goddamn four stages. You can just beat that on your killer side. You don't have to risk it. Oh, that Rebecca should have got it. And like that Rebecca is also fresh hook. I hate, I hate what they're doing. I hate it. I hate this. I cannot begin to tell you guys how much I hate this. This is so risky for no reason. This is so fucking risky for no reason at all. Four stages is a fucking phenomenal result, dude. You can just take your four stages. If they somehow punt this away and give the killer like more, if they somehow make this like a fucking six stage game, like right here, like bad tempers could have, that was the perfect opportunity. He could have literally stealthed up and went after Rebecca because she was completely isolated. He had it. Actually, same thing with Bucket Man here. He could maybe even do the same thing with Bucket Man here, maybe. Maybe, although it's, a little, it's looking a little less promising this time, but maybe. He needed, to, he, needed to, he needed to go further in Cloak. He needed to go further in Cloak. He needed to get, like, in front of him with Cloak. If you would have gotten in front of them with, with, with like, like uh, with Cloak and and uh, 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 and then uncloaked, he actually would have gotten it. But, uh, you know, to be fair to the survivors, as much as I hated that play, they did make it work, and they ended up getting three stages instead of four. So I guess they made it work. I just want to be clear that I still fucking hated that play. And I think that was terrible. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. I got to be blunt, okay? Because I want to make sure I call out shit that like, even if it works, it's still really important to note whether or not it's good or bad, right? Because like, bro, I think it would have been like, I think I had bad tempers. Like, had, I think, okay. To be fair, I think bad tempers probably was already in like a kind of a rough headspace because he was having a rough game. But I think had he like hit that Rebecca who ran topside isolated, and I'm pretty sure it was a dead zone down there, right? I'm pretty sure they already used all the pallets down there. He could have cloaked up, ran through Rebecca, and just gotten that hook on Rebecca, and she was a fresh hook, dude. So like, if he could have used that plus the other tags that he has, like the other injuries and stuff, he could have maybe turned he could have maybe turned that into a six stage game, which actually ends up being not a terrible result, right? Like six stages is actually not bad at all. So like again, they almost punted that in, they almost punted that into like six stages three fresh, which I think again it's not worth the risk because four stages two fresh is already a phenomenal result. Like I don't feel like you should feel the need to like do more than that. You know what I mean? Like I don't think you should see four stages two fresh and be like we need more. Like that, bro. That was. Whoo, my lord, my lord, my lord. That had me sweating, I'll be honest with you. But rats do end up with a really, really good result. They end up with a very, very, very solid result there. I mean, three stages, two fresh is going to be ridiculously hard to try to beat here. I mean, I know we talked about all the restrictions that, that, are, that are in play and how the survivors are still allowed with a good bit of stuff, but, like... I don't think it's gonna matter that much because like especially when you know right like going into a game like this first off this wraith can now run no ed right like this wraith can now just kind of slap on no ed and be like yay we have no ed so even if we have a rough mid game we can still just pull it out end game right so like no ed's a possibility but even even if no ed wasn't a possibility you basically just need three hooks right like you basically you basically just need three hooks and if you get a, if you get three different fresh hooks on three different on three different survivors like you can just slap on pain res and then just try to get three hooks and then there you go you know what i mean so, yeah, uh, I mean, this is definitely going to be a tough result to win, especially knowing, especially the second killer knowing the result that they need, right? Like, them going in and knowing that all they need is three fresh, that's going to be very, very difficult. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We will see how it goes. Flawless going to be playing Wraith for Rats of RPD. And we'll see. You got a link for your overlay at the top of scoring. Uh... No, it's all made through stream elements. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, Dino can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure that the overlay was actually made by by Upside Down Lex, I believe. So shout out to Lex. Um, I'm pretty sure she's the one that made the overlay, and and we just kind of use it in like a Streamlabs or sorry, not Streamlabs, Stream Elements uh, capture, I believe. So yeah, I mean, I think the image might be in there if you wanted like the same thing for yourself, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. We'd have to organize that later, I guess. It was actually made by Shay. Oh, really? Wait, what did Lex make? Did, didn't Lex make something for us? Am I crazy? See, now, now I'm all confused. So Shay, like, as in, like, Elvin Shay, right? Damn, bro. I'm, like, crediting the wrong person out here. What the fuck's wrong with me? Are the chair sniffers playing tonight? No. No, here's here's the here's the schedule. We got Frosty Eyes versus Rats. McGowers are making their 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 uh, debut versus Mirage. Mirage is a team we've only seen one time. They're a, they're a team that was made through the solo queue form, but they looked really good the day that we saw them. Like, 
I, I mean, I should say really good, especially for what we expect out of like a solo queue team. Like they seem like they had the general basics down already, which is honestly usually when we see teams made from like a solo queue team from 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 like a solo queue form or whatever, usually it's like really sloppy at first, like ridiculously sloppy. And um, yeah, no, they look they actually they actually look very solid. So I think that matchup will be interesting. Mirage versus Megawars will be a very interesting one. I'm curious to see how that plays out. That one could end up being like a stomp on either side, and I feel like I wouldn't even be that surprised. Like I really have no idea how that's gonna go. Uh, Despair versus Dingatrons will be a good one too. I think that's gonna be Despair's first time showing. Dingatrons we've seen a few times. That's like Watermelon and Friends. Um, and then Sorrow versus Four Dwight's One Locker, I think, are also maybe two new teams that have comp experience. So I think there's gonna be a lot of teams showing up for the first time today, but a lot of them are teams that already do have experience and kind of know what they're doing. So yeah, it'll be an interesting, it'll be an interesting day. It will be an interesting day. Lex did make something for us, but it went unused. And yeah, uh, Elvin Shea. Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. So I actually wasn't sure about either of those. Dude, Shay has been doing work. My lord. When will you form a team with your mods and get destroyed? Bro, I'm holding out hope for the fucking over 30 team of me, Hens, Ostarva, and then, I don't know, maybe, maybe Slobby. Maybe I can get Slobby on there since he's over 30 and he's showing interest or something. I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that over 30 team where we all, we all make grunting sounds when we, when we stand up. You know, that's like, that's like the main requirement is that when you, is that if you're sitting in a chair and you stand up, you got to go, Ugh. and then congratulations, you're old enough to be on the over 30 squad, baby. And we're going to see what we can do. You, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So AKA it's never going to happen. Probably is actually what it is. You know? Four Dwight's one locker was in the Swiss tourney. That's true. They were. That actually is a good point. Is it the same team Psychomantis? Because like Amanda, I feel like I recognize your name. You're like a Twins man, right? I recognize you. You've, you've played Twins in scrims before, and I feel like I've seen you on a team, but it wasn't Four Dwight's One Locker. But maybe I don't. Re maybe I don't remember the exact. Like I'm pretty sure Four Dwight's One Locker used financial stability as their killer in 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 the Swiss tournament, right? Or was that a different team? Fuck, I don't know. Like maybe I'm all mixed up now. Oh, eruption, pop eruption. Fall is actually not going with Noed. Interesting or bamboozle. Wow, this is actually, I'm going to be real. I hate this build. <laughs> I hate this build. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm being like very hypercritical today. I'm sorry. But like, I kind of hate this build considering the win con. I mean, again, I, I think he's probably still going to do okay. Considering the fact that the win con is like pretty soft. But like, I feel like if you wanted to like play safe around the win con, this feels like not the way to do it. Like the fact that he doesn't even have bamboozle either means that like, Hypothetically, like, again, I think the only thing that could go wrong here is if you just struggle a lot with chases and you can't really get anything going and then, like, you end up with, like, a very similar game as last game and then you end up, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like you I feel like you just make sure that you, you make sure to have Bamboozle in the build. You put Noah in the build. That way you just get, like, a down or two early and then still have Noah to fall back on. Even worst case scenario, you get it, right? This feels like the build that he used... Like, it, 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 like, pretty much every perk he has only works when a down comes in. You know what I mean? Like, nothing works before a down comes in. So I feel like, again, he just he just got it down at five gens. So, like, he's doing fine, right? But I'm just saying, hypothetically, build-wise, this feels like... Uh, this feels like if... This feels like not playing it safe at all, and instead, like, trying to go for a big result, as opposed to trying to, like, safely get the win con. But I guess that's fine, right? And look, if he's confident, he's confident. It's fine. It's con he's, he's just confident. It's cool, dude. It's cool. It's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Um, I do think not having Bam is interesting though. Ooh, Bates Peer into that vault. Actually swings a little bit short there. Doesn't throw his pop down on that Gallows Jet either. Instead of, and, instead of just kind of committing to this. The Unhook comes in onto Nancy across the map. And now he's going to go throw pop down in Eruption. And he's just going to bail from the chase too. I think he wants to go after Nancy. Nancy's currently being healed, but is he going to find it? Oh, he is heading right towards it, and he is going to find it. She is she, she, she is going to get back to full, though. Not for long, though. Not for long. Hit comes in. And again, main building could end up being a bit of a struggle here without Bam. But that's a that's uh, depending a lot on how they play it. Just has his pallet out front. Nia is here to take a hit. I don't think that Nia necessarily needed to take that hit at that exact moment. But like, you know, it did get her across the street. And also, there's no sloppy in play, so I feel like taking hits is a little less scary than before. No, she gave up the window! No, Nancy didn't claim the window! She ran past it and let the Wraith body block it! No! 
Oh no! And she's gonna get blown out of the locker! And then Eruption is gonna pop on the gallows gen! And then it's gonna get Pop Goes the Weasel to get put up on the gallows gen again! And then it's gonna regress some more! And then Nancy's gonna be put on, on the second stage! Oh no! Soul number two coming in on Nancy. A little surprised that he didn't hook her a little bit more mid map. Like, I feel like he could have hooked her kind of more mid map and then, like, made it to this hook or uh, made it to this gen faster. You know, who, who am I to judge? To be honest with you, I also wouldn't, like, I, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Pierre gets a blast mine stun on him, though, making him look foolish. But he does get the pop down and the eruption down. That gen, I think, being hit with four four regression events now. I think I think the first pain res hit it too. I believe, unless uh, well, maybe they did hit something else. I don't know. It was either three or four, but it's starting to get close. They're not really in a rush to unhook here. I mean, WinCon is basically going to be met. There's going to be no way like the survivors have to have like a perfect game while the killer like doofs up a bunch from this stage in order for this to not be the win for rats. Right? This is looking pretty good. Because Nancy is, as a matter of fact, they're kind of, it looks like they're going to let Nancy die. Yeah, like, I'm not even actually sure what Michaela's doing right now, because she's, like, not doing a gen, but she's also, like, sort of hovering. Like, they're kind of losing out on gen progress, because Michaela seemed a little bit indecisive. So, yeah, Nancy dies. That's going to be the, that's going to be, one. Well, sorry, not the tie, because I guess the fresh hook. But basically, next hook wins. So, if Lalo's gets another hook at any point, he wins. They do finish Gallows, though. It looks like Balanced from Pierre is going to get him into main. And hold on a minute, gen number two is gonna pop on the street. Wait a minute, all they gotta do is get two more gens done and then open up the exit gate without anybody getting hooked and then it's easy peasy, baby, and then it's easy peasy. Hold on a minute, shack pallet's still up. There's still a lot of pallets that back here behind gallows that you could tie together. Nia just gonna sacrifice that pallet. That shitty filler back there has been broken already by Pierre, but I think she might make that pallet. Nice. And gets a stun from the inside of the map, too. She probably should have just ran, like, use that. She probably, should, she probably should just use that distance to get out of there, but ends up being okay. And the Wraith actually has to leave that chase. Wait a minute. Can Frosty guys still bring this back? There's no way, right? Because hypothetically, like, they would actually win if, no, if nobody else gets hooked. Like, if they could some, I mean, I still, it seems very unlikely still. But if they can somehow actually do this, like if they can somehow actually get all the gens done and get out before another person gets hooked, they would win. Like, like they would win. It would be three hooks, one fresh, or yeah, three hooks, one fresh versus three hooks, two fresh. That hit coming in on the Pierre, though. He breaks out the main wall. Uh, drops down with balance and does have this window. As long as he doesn't let it get blocked, he doesn't let it get blocked. Pout out front is gone though, and I think Pierre's dead, which is not good. Or no, does he make this? No, he dies. No, he dies. Yeah, and, they, and if this hook comes in, it's GG. Oh, 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 Aqua. They're keeping the game alive, baby. They're keeping it alive. The save comes in. Pierre making his way back in towards the map. Oh, is he running to this really shitty filler though? Oh no, he gets blocked out from one side. This is very killer favored here. Paulus baiting the throw. Baits the vault. And yeah, like, Michaela's here, but she's like, what can I do? Nothing. Yeah, that's going to be it. That's going to be it. Yep, yep, yep. That's going to be it. That's going to be the down. And Pierre's going to get put on hook. That's going to be the fourth stage, which is all they need for the win. And that's going to be it. GG's. Rats are going to take the first set. And that feels, uh, this feels actually pretty, pretty solid too, considering the, this set was chosen by Frosty Eyes, right? Like this was Frosty Eyes' choice of set. So they're going to be winning the set that their opponents picked, which is going to take, which is going to take them into their set, which again, these fucking weirdos picked Legion because fucking Bucket Man is a goddamn weirdo and likes Legion. So their set's going to be Legion and that's the one that they chose. So assuming that you know if we want to say that they have an advantage in the legion set that means that they should be in a pretty good position to maybe just close out the set possibly i guess we'll see i think legion might be dead dog saloon too right i feel like that probably makes the most sense but i don't i actually don't know i'm not really sure he might be somewhere else i actually don't know i'd have to go look but i feel like he would be dead dog saloon yeah yeah okay i figured yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's what that, that's what would make sense to me but i don't I, I really honestly didn't even look into it even here, it kind of feels like they're not sure how to handle this. Pierre's just going to go struggle. Aqua was kind of hovering the hook. But Pierre's just going to go struggle. And Nia's just been kind of cranking a gen in, in, in uh, mid-map. And she's going to get found too. Okay. 
But P but Pierre is still just rotting on hook. Good greed there from Nia. Does get away with it. And Michaela's just now making her way to the unhook. 99 sprint burst is gonna get popped. All right, Nia, I mean, Nia did pretty okay there. This gen, oh, not the standstill tech from the Wraith. Not the standstill tech. Not the standing still as Wraith so you become completely invisible tech. Oh no, oh, not like this. Oh. Oh, and again, these chases at main become so much more miserable without, without Bam, man. Like these windows actually end up being pretty valuable without Bamboozle. They give this window right here, Nia showcasing really well why it's kind of a pain in the ass. And that's not, and that's like not even using like the upstairs windows even either. Like just definitely a major pain in the ass of a, of, of a building to have to work around. And Shackpile is still up? I didn't even realize Shackpile was still up this whole time. Holy schnitzkies, man. So Shack Pilot finally just now getting used. And there is kind of a three gen on the top side, but like, we'll see how well he can hold it. I don't know. Finds, finds Nia again. That gen in the middle did have eruption. She makes the vault. There's Nia doing a really good job in chase. Good double vault too. Playing this chase very well. Doesn't have a filler here though. I don't think there's any fillers out here at all. I'm pretty sure all these pilots have been used. Well, this, 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 her pathing is a, is fantastic though. This Nia is, this Nia, that Nia was doing work, dude. Like that was actually a phenomenal chase from her. She bought so much time for her team. They're going to pop main gen. This gen on the street's going to have a good bit of progress, but it's most likely going to get hit by pop and maybe pain res too. This might just get hit by like 60% regression right now between pop and pain. Well, I guess it'll just get popped. I mean, or sorry, it'll, it'll just get pain res. Pop won't come through unless they actually work it. But the problem now is that there's is, a, is that the hook is right beside it, so it's gonna just regress a bit. And we'll see how they opt to handle this. I think Flawless is gonna be pretty content with just hanging out here. I feel like he should know, like Flawless should know that like the progress he sees is pretty much all the progress that there is. You know, like they didn't have that much time here. Like he might be a little worried about the gen back there, but I feel like this is most likely all the progress they have. So you could probably just sit on this hook the way he is, yeah, which feels pretty smart. Like, I think just sitting here and just being like, yep, 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 this is my hook. This is my gen, and I'm going to watch it regress. I think even kicking this is fine. Yeah, he, he actually uses his pop there. I think even kicking that earlier probably would have been smart. He kind of gave a little bit of a chance for an unhook there. Oh, they're doubling this gen, but they failed a skill check. No, they were trying to, like, I think they were trying to, like, pseudo sneak that gen by doubling it and not even worrying about the unhook, but they failed a skill check, so Flawless is like, oh, okay, well, I know what's going on over there now. So, he's gonna head over. And find some gamers. And this feels not great for the gamers on the survivor side here. Was the other survivor just, okay, the, the other survivor actually did make her way over and she'll be getting the unhook. But Pierre's now death hook. Sorry, not Pierre, I mean, Nia's now death hook. And I think Pierre has been hooked once, right? Or am I just, or, or like, am I just saying shit? Or is Pierre also death hook? No, yeah, he's also death hook. He's in a hot blocker, but he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. And they have like 40% gen progress on like both these gens. Maybe. I don't even know if the other one's at 40. It might be less than 40. So yeah, this is actually looking like possibly a 4k one here. Pop goes down on that gen. He does find a target here. But. Ooh, fakes the. Like, fakes going around the building, but. Oh, finds her now. And this Nia has so little to work with, man. Like, she has, like, basically nothing here. Like, I'm pretty sure almost every resource on this map has been used at this point. Like, there's, like, the, like, there's definitely the pallet behind main that, like, really dog shit pallet. I mean, there's obviously the windows at main. There might be the, I, actually, there, there might be that pallet behind, there might be that good pallet behind main too, at like the little cart. That that might also be there, but like, I feel like you're kind of getting like criminally low on resources at this point, right? There might be one behind Gallows somewhere still, but like, there's just very few. Ooh, good bit of progress here though. It's gonna get interrupted. Yeah, there's still one by Gallows. The hit comes through. They're both tagged now. Lucky break though from Aqua. He's going with the standstill tech again. 
By God, he's doing it again. By God, he's crazy. These guys are going to reset, though, I think. I think these guys are going to reset. Yeah, so he's hoping that they're going to come back and try to do the gen while injured, but they're not. They're actually going to reset. But he's trying. He's trying for it. He wants to make it work. He wants to make it work a, a, a second time, which I, which I respect. Hello, mind if I ask you a question? Are you built like a one a one by one Lego piece? What does that mean? What's a one by one Lego piece? Is that like, is that like a little square with just like a fucking pole sticking out of it or something? Bro, what? I'm not even exactly sure what. It's just like a rectangle with like a little like, huh? Yeah, it's like a little, yeah, but it's a Lego piece. So it, it probably has like that little like, you know, like phallic shaped thing sticking out of it, right? They're both, a, these guys are both currently a water tower. And they're just kind of chilling. They're both just chilling at water tower still. They have not made a move back in towards the map. And I think Flawless just, okay, he finds them now. I'm a little, a little unsure what they've been doing. They've just been kind of chilling at Water Tower, like being like, ah, we don't want to go in. We don't want to go into the map. Aqua's going to get hit. Sells a little bit of Lucky Breakup. I think Flawless probably just wants to commit to this. He's going to hop Locker, but it's going to pop Eruption. He was worried about head on, but yeah. Oh! Oh! Was trying to get pulled for the, for the, for the old save, but doesn't work. This is going to be Fresh Hook Michaela, so I think we're going to be chilling here for a minute. There we go. Nia's going to run to main. I think they're going to be just trying to die for hatch now. So, yeah, this is, this is going to be a 4K1 for Flawless. So, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, so. Oh, okay. You know what? I'll wait until the next Wraith games to, like, give my, my analysis on the balancing, but. I, I'm just going to say, I don't think moving to balancing from tier 2 to tier 3 would change a whole lot about this set, is all I'll say. Other than probably, like, make the game feel a little bit better for the Wraith, which is probably a good thing, right? Like, I think the only thing that it would change is probably making the game feel a little better for the killer, which I think is good, right? Because, again, I feel like things like going for tags would feel a lot more valuable knowing, knowing, knowing that there's, like, less reset perks and stuff. So, Interesting. Interesting. Interesting thus far. Uh. And finds one of the few pallets that are left. Trying to buy time for Aqua to die. Aqua did go struggle. And Nia's out of juice, bro. She's out of juice. She's juiced all that she can juice. And that's going to be it. 4K1 for Flawless. So there you go. That's going to take us into the second set, which is the Legion set. And we're going to be coming right back to Dead Dog Saloon. And pretty good showing here for Rats, though. Pretty good showing here for Rats. This first set was pretty dominantly in their favor. And we'll see if they can keep that up. Frosty Eyes are going to have to find a way to make something happen, I think, in this next set. Because they, they, they need something good here to stay alive. Yo, look out, Purdy. Look out, Purdy. Look out, Purdy, that guy. Look out, Purdy. Well played Rats, though. Well played Rats. Very, very good start for them. GG's. GG's. All right, we're gonna we're gonna hop in the lock it, or, or sorry, hop in hop in the lobby with Bucket Man. Uh, let me get some ads out of the way, and I'll also give you guys a new prediction real quick too. Give me a second. Um, ba -dum -ba -ba -ba, da -da 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 -da, there we go. Prediction. Let me give you guys a new one. Bam, ba bam, bam, bam. Legion set. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Is it okay if we hop in the locker too? Hop in the locker? Hop in the lobby? Whatever. Fuck you guys. Look, that last guy hopped in the locker, and I'm talking about hopping in lobbies. Whatever. It's all. It's it's almost the same thing. Okay. Please. Cut me some slack. Come on. Come on. Yeah, the Legion set is Rats pick. Yeah. So Rats pick this set again. Bucket. They uh they have a they have a a, a, a player on their team named Bucket Man, who fucking loves Legion for whatever reason. For whatever strange reason, he loves Legion. He's been begging for Legion to be included into the sets for, like, months now. And we finally gave it to him. So, you know, uh, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Look at their prestige. Okay, will do. Will do, will do. 
Comp Legion's kind of goaded. Is it? Is it kind of goaded, though? I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know if I would agree that Comp Legion's goaded. But I guess we'll see. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, we've only seen Legion sets like a couple times. What's 4D1L? That's four Dwight's one locker. They're a team that has a decent bit of experience. That should be a good matchup, I think. That, sh that last matchup should be a good one, I believe. How do you feel about the statements? The statement, people can only care about up to three things at most. Huh? That seems really stupid. What? That's a really stupid statement. Who, who, who says that statement and why? That seems really dumb. Only one blight? Yeah, only one blight set. Only one blight set of the whole night. Yep, 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 yep. All right, there he is. There he is, the man of the bucket. There he is. Wow, okay, you're one to call something stupid, Tofu. I am. I am one to call something stupid. Like I just did. I just did call it stupid. I'm sorry. That's a that's a stupid that's a stupid thing to say. Weird Al Yankovic said it. That's well, no no wonder. No wonder it's stupid then. I don't mend watching Legion. <laughs> Get it? Because he makes you mend. <laughs> Good one, man. Worth mentioning, Legion is tier four. Oh yeah, true. Okay, that this is a good point. So Legion, Legion, this actually is our first set we're ever gonna see of tier four balancing. So okay, our, our new balancing, we have we have four tiers, right? So like we kind of made our balancing a little bit more in depth compared to how it used to be. So like before it was like pretty blanket balancing on everybody, and then we only like made restrictions for like S tiers basically, right? But now we have four different tiers of balancing. But even though we have four tiers of balancing, the vast majority of killers are in tier two and tier three. Like there's pretty much only two tiers of balancing. And then tier one and tier four are like going to be seen once in a blue moon, right? Like tier one balancing is only Blight Nurse Spirit. That's it, right? And then tier four balancing is only Hag, Legion, Freddy, and Trapper. It's only like the four weakest killers that we could come up with essentially. Um, but Legion is one of those killers. So this is going to be one of those rare tier four games that we probably will not see very often. Like, for instance, we we had Trapper in the rotation last week. We didn't see him at all. So this is going to be one of those rare occasions where we actually do have, um, yeah, tier four, tier four balancing, which means they're not going to be able to run any, any, any exhaustions. I think, like, on top of tier three balancing, it's like also exhaustions as well so they're going to be kind of like bare bones in terms of builds like their builds are going to be really fucky it's going to be a lot of just like weird shit right like perks that you're not going to be used to seeing because they're because they're basically like essentially the builds for the survivors now become like let's just put on anything that we can that we think we can squeeze value out of that's like essentially what the idea is for for this balancing it's it's not going to be a whole lot um again i still think there might be slightly more things allowed than like typical comp balancing right like if you compare this to like dbd league outrun the fog fucking you know whatever like champions of the fog whatever like if you compare this to most like big leagues balancing i still think that there's going to be a little bit more allowed but not a whole lot this is like pretty much this is our lowest balancing possible so yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see and again so the survivors are so like what that means is that the survivors are gonna have to play much more like cautious and careful and 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 they're going to get punished much, much more if they fuck up. So realistically, actually, we could see Legion get big results here. Like realistically, like this, like these, like these kind of restrictions means that means that there's way less bailouts. It's way more punishing in terms of like what, what in terms of like the tools you have to work with. And it comes way more down to like your actual ability to play a very, very solid, tight game with very little mistakes. So... Yeah, man, this will be interesting. This will be interesting. Head-on is the only exhaustion allowed. And yeah, there's still quite a few perks almost uh, uh, allowed compared to other comp leagues. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th I still think it is slightly like more. I'm kind of, I'm really curious to see what the builds are. I'm very, very curious. Uh, yo, Mott, thanks for the 33 months. I said, this is it, Tofi. I'm in, the, I'm, I'm in the way to get married with you. 33 months. Wait, what does that mean? To get married? Are you asking to marry me? Or do you want to like get married during christmas time i don't know thank you for 33 man contra thanks for 31 months earlier toast thank you for 30 months earlier these, these resubs all happened like an hour ago but thank you guys i appreciate you guys man thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i appreciate the support you guys oce juicers will return please maya please we've had a few gamers like from the oce juicers that have been asking about like like they like want to play, but they're like, we just don't have a matchup with them. Like we need like two teams, you know. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure we, I'm pretty sure we even had gamers in here that were talking about the idea of making a team of 
of Oceana survivors and then just picking up killer players from NA and just playing with a ping a, a like ping disadvantage. Like they were talking about playing like like having like NA killers play play killer for them and then having them play survivor on like 300 ping against like bro like just crazy shit like crazy shit which like bro i mean honestly like that's hypothetically allowed right like hypothetically that like 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 you know it is allowed but obviously like your opponents would be playing on like on like 30 ping and you'd be playing on like 300 so that would be a massive disadvantage but it would hypothetically be allowed you know as long as you had killers from na to play can you start the game please can you shut the fuck up please how about you shut the fuck up please Anyway, I think that'd be great because I would love to see the OC, the OC scene back. I think those guys, I think those gamers are fucking great. They're always super wholesome. They're always good to see, and I would love to see them back, man. I would love to see them back. Like I, I know before we had uh, Degenerators and I think Cat Jam, although Cat Jam was using a different name, right? But I know we, I know we had those gamers in here like way, way, like way in the early days of scrims, and they were always like super wholesome, super chill, super kind. And um, yeah, man, I would, I would, I would love to see him back. We, we just need, we like, we need like basically either two OCE teams or we need, uh, we need either two OCE teams or we need like an OCE team to be to, I guess, be okay with the insane ping disadvantage. I don't know, but either one. Oh yeah, yeah, you guys were actually gang. That's right. Uh, actually, um, actually, we're not called Cat Jam here. Actually, uh, actually, that's right. I remember. I remember. I remember. Yeah, those are the good old days. Sorry, I'm not very patient. Okay, I'm sorry too. Yusuf, I'm sorry too. I'm also not very patient, you know? Like, I'm also kind of impatient because I feel like when I get random people that come in and yell at me to start the game, even though I'm not the one holding it up, I also get kind of impatient and then I just want to yell at people. So, you know what? I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry too, brother. I'm sorry too. I'm sorry we had that fight just now. Maybe we can move past it and maybe we could just be friends now, okay? All right, I apologize, man. I apologize. Let's just let's just watch the game, all right? All right, here we go. Bucket Man on Legion. He's been waiting for this set forever. He's Prestige 100 Legion. That's embarrassing. That's fucking embarrassing, dude. Wow. I wouldn't... That's, that's horrible. I'd be using an auto account if I was him. What is this add-on? Wait, I actually don't even know what this add-on is. He's got Eerie Button, which means that pallets will break when he vaults them. What is this? What is this common? Actually. I actually don't... Increase... Oh, increase lunge range? Really? Oh. Interesting. That's not what I was expecting to see in terms of add-ons. That's very interesting. Huh. Well, all right. All right, all right, all right. He's got uh, Agi, Noed, uh, and Pain Res. And yeah, here's the builds. I mean, Desperate Measures, Babysitter, Parental Guidance, Fixated. We got For the People, Solidarity. Actually, still some okay perks here, right? They're still squeezing out some okay perks. Windows Vigil with the head-on build. And this is like, like, what is this? Flip-flop, Tenacity, Iron Will, Empathetic Connections. So we're, you know, we're, we're like, we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel. But honestly, again, there is still some okay perks here, right? Like, Desperate Measure is still allowed. Um, like, honestly, there's some perks there that are still kind of not bad. Solidarity can definitely get some good value in, like, a Legion set. I feel like there's still some stuff there that's honestly not that bad. Um, so we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, still hasn't found anything yet, Bucket Man. He's still just kind of looking around. He broke out some walls. Still has yet to find anything. The survivors are playing. Oh my God! He walked right by that Nia. That was a bush. Survivors are playing very patient though, just kind of chilling, waiting. Again, like I said, the survivor. Any any mistakes from the survivors here are going to be massively punished. Or are are, are going to be mass, massively punishable. I should say. I shouldn't say that they will be punished. I mean, them being punished depends on how well Bucket Man plays it, right? Like, if Bucket Man doesn't play it well, then maybe they won't get punished. But, like, they will be punishable. Like, it's, like, with like with this kind of rule set, if you make, like, even one big mistake, that could just get you, like, kind of just killed right then and there, right? Like, it's, and, like, there's a lot kind of rolling on it. There was a pallet. It's going to get hit anyway. Kind of gave up that pallet and still ate a hit from Frenzy. Don't know if I love that. Looks like he has a hit here on Nia, who is actually... Actually, doesn't have a hit. Never mind. The increase, the, the increase, or sorry, it's not even Nia, it's Claudette. The Claudette doing a really good job of just getting the fuck out of there and denying the hit. And this has got to be a normal basic attack. So, not terrible here. Only one frenzy hit. The, the follow up doesn't come through. And that's why I'm kind of surprised about this gray add on. Like, I, I mean, again, I mean, Buck, I'm assuming Bucket Man knows Legion better than I do, but I feel like it seems like there's better options, right? Even just like Mischief List or something that gives you two more seconds. Would have gotten that hit, I think, right there. So, like, a little strange to me, but hey, like, what do I know? Uh, a little unsure what they're doing here. Nia comes in to take the hit. I don't think... I don't know if this is the play. Like, coming in to, like, take hits like that, especially when... 
cut it was kind of fine. Like, she wasn't really, like, in that much danger. She had a pallet. Like, if she was trying to leave that pallet and get somewhere really safe, then maybe. But also, she didn't even really go anywhere that safe. She went here. Like, maybe if you want to get her to shack or something. But, yeah, no. Claudette runs down to this to, the, to, to this pallet into the street. And... Yeah, the down comes in. And this might be pain res. Agitation, too, means he can carry this hook wherever he wants, right? So he's going to carry it into the center of the map. And this is probably going to be a pain res. There we go. Pain res. It hits main gen. But that means this gen at the bottom of the street is progressing quite a bit. But it looks like they split three gens. Like they were on they were on main, middle of the street, and then bottom of the street is where they were. And they didn't finish any of them. Main gets hit by pain res. The middle of the street gets hit by uh just a just a default kick. And yeah, at the bottom of the street's gonna get done. Nancy will finish that. So that will be decent gen progress for them at least. Because I think I think I think Mange is also gonna pop here. Bucket Man seems pretty content with just camping this out at this point. The only way they can get this save safely is if they send Michaela to one for one, which honestly she might do after this. We'll see. Like she does have flip flop tenacity, so if you're gonna have somebody one for one, this is maybe the best person for it, since she can like let herself get slugged and then just kind of like crawl away while recovering. But I don't think they're gonna do it. I think they're just gonna let him go struggle. And they're, they're, they're going to heal? See, even this, I don't really know how I feel about. Because I feel like, especially if, if, you're, if this guy's going struggle, you can just, like, do gens. You know? And then maybe, like, heal. Like, if Bucket Man, like, commits the full camping him to death, then maybe you heal up to, like, actually get the save. But I don't think he's going to commit to that. Because, yeah, he's just kind of frenzy now. He's going to head right back to the hook. And the pool is going to come in, but Le Bucket Man should be able to reset his frenzy. He should be able to get multiple tags. The big thing here is, like, does Claudette get away, though? He actually finds Michaela instead. So Claudette did at least temporarily get away. And I'm actually a little surprised to see Bucket Man not more heavily prioritizing that. I think if he could have stayed on the, on, on the Claudette there and just killed her, that could have been huge. But she is, yeah, she's like on the top right. She's like, she's like top right now. And now he's chasing a fresh hook. This is a little sloppy from Bucket Man, I think. I think it, it might, it might have not. Like, I, I don't think going for the, for the Nancy there was like that crazy, right? Because you're in frenzy. But I also don't think it would have been that crazy to just stick on the Claudette and just like let Nancy go. Because I think if you just kill that Claudette at like this amount of gens left, that's pretty fucking brutal, man. That's pretty brutal. Like, that's pretty insane. But this is still okay, though. I mean, Claudette still is death hook. She still needs to be careful. Another pain res hook coming in. They actually dodged the pain res on that back on that on that back gen at least. Uh, the heal coming in. Solidarity actually getting some good value on Claudette's build. But okay, two frenzies coming in, and Bucket Man really should. Yeah, I was gonna say he really should. Well. I was gonna say he should stick to Claudette, but also if they unhook, he might he might even be able to get a quad hit. Oh, doesn't get it. I'm telling you, man, mischief list would have like I just don't understand this add-on. Because I feel like mischief list does the same thing but better. Like two more seconds in frenzy would be getting him all these hits, wouldn't they? Am I crazy? Like, look, I'm not a Legion player, so maybe I don't know. But I feel like mischief list would have done like I don't see how this add-on does anything that mischief list doesn't do better. Uh, that was a good hit over the fence from, from Bucket Man after the pallet throw. So Nia just kind of getting slashed from a mile away. And this will be her first hook. But again, a lot of fresh hooks. And I actually don't even... I don't really know how I feel. Like, I'm curious. Like, how do you... How, is this right? It's wrong? I don't, I don't think I like them resetting here. Like, I definitely don't... Okay, I know that I don't like them triple resetting here. I think them triple resetting here is definitely bad. But I think, like, even in general, resetting here just seems weird. Because, like, what? Is the Legion going to camp this hook? If he camps the hook, just do the gens far away from it, right? And, like, pressure the gens. And then if he doesn't camp the hook, then you can just sneak in and grab it even while injured, right? I don't think you need to take the time to heal. I, I, de I feel like that's... I think I think healing at all feels weird, but definitely, like, triple healing all together in the same spot is, like, extra wrong. So I'm not really sure what they're going for here. They did heal up Pierre, though, who was the death hook. They, like, maybe they just want to make sure that he's... Somewhat safe. Bucket Man looks like he wants to go for his last fresh hook right now, which is Nancy. And he will get that down, that down on her. So that will be his, his, his final fresh hook. He will get he will get his last pain res and his last fresh hook. 
And there's not that much gen progress right now. And by not that much, I mean basically none. As a matter of fact, actually, he's not going for it. He's going to slugger. Huh. He's on Nia. He seems like he can't decide what he wants to do. He was on Nia. He saw Claudette here. Claudette is the death hook. And maybe he's like, oh, death hook survivor. And now he's just going to go after this instead. First hit comes in. And she's running to Shaq. Are they not picking up? Okay, they picked up they picked up Nancy now. And they're full healing again. Which again, like I don't know. Like you're about to like your your death hook survivor's getting tunneled out right now, man. I think you should just be slamming gens. I don't think you should be doing this. I think you should just be slamming gens. Your death hook survivor's getting tunneled out. I think you should just try to get as much gen progress as you can. Because if you don't get a bunch of gen progress and this guy dies, then you're gonna be in a really bad spot. So I don't think healing right there is necessarily Okay, they're all, they they didn't full heal both both at least. They got Nancy back to full and now they're back on gens. Maybe, you know, that actually might be good because if Nancy goes in and take a hit for for Pierre, this actually could be good, right? But like when Pierre needs it. Like if Pierre's like, okay, hey, I'm running out of resources. Like he still has this pallet, right? But like say like Legion kicks that pallet and he has nothing else and he calls for a hit, that could be good to have Nancy full health. But Buckingham looks like he actually got super lost here. He kind of got super lost, and I don't know how, I actually don't know how this happened, because I was watching Claudette instead of Killers, so you know what? That's kind of on me, sorry. But somehow, Claudette just got like a mile of distance on him. And Buckingham taking a long time to get this down. They're doing Water Tower. And Water Tower should be done before this kill comes in, no matter what. Resilience helping with that vault. So has this pallet, too. All the gen, bro, the gens are flying. Bucket Man might be in trouble here. That pallet breaks. Is this tunnel even worth anymore? He forces Locker, too. That's really, really good. Will, will this gen get done? I don't think it will. It's not going to get done. He's going to get the hook, and he's going to be able to interrupt it. Very, very close, though. Still not a terrible spot to be in for the survivors, right? I mean, the kill happened. And even right now, he, he didn't even stop to kick the gen. So these other two just hop on that gen. It's going to be in danger. And they do. They immediately hop on it. And Bucket Man is not even concerned about it at all. He doesn't care. He's still just taking the chase of main. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit, dude. And then they pop it. Okay. Not bad for Frosty Eyes. Not bad at all. That, that last chase with Pierre was... Very costly. No Ed coming through on Nancy. I think she's the fresh hook, right? So yeah, she'll be worth three stages. If he wants to just take this kill, that'll be eight stages for fresh as the final result, which is still like, right? That's not a terrible result. Although I will say, I think, I still think with this rule set, it would not surprise me to see Legions pop off pretty hard. Nia's going to get this gate open and she will be able to. And, the other, and yeah, this survivor's doing the gate way on the other side. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they're just going to take the routes. I think, I think they're going to take the routes. I mean, no, I, they, they also see that no edge right here, too. So, yeah, these guys are out. These guys are out for sure. That's going to be eight stages. Eight stages, four fresh is going to be the final result here for, for uh, Bucket Man. So, honestly, like, not bad for the survivors, I think. Realistically. Like, I feel like, I feel like this definitely could have been much worse based on how the game was going. Like, I think had that, I think had Pierre not had like a really long chase at the end there, like I think had Pierre just gone down behind Gallows, like all those, all those pallets behind Gallows are like super sketch and kind of dangerous. And I think had Pierre just gone down behind Gallows instead of like getting all that distance, running way up to like, you know, right side and then using like those, like, I don't know, I guess they're kind of like maze tiles. It's like dead dogs version of maze tiles. If he didn't do all that and they don't get those gens done for that, this, that, that ends up being a rough game, right? Cause he dies with like still two gens left to do. He can interrupt the gens, maybe get like another pain res and still get a lot more progress out of it. So I don't, I don't know. That definitely could have gone much worse. Um, So well brought back by Frosty Eyes, honestly. Very, very well brought back. Uh, Bucket Man did, a, he like he still did solidly. I feel like, I feel like for Bucket Man, I think if he would have just stuck to, uh, I think if he would have stuck to Claudette after, after her unhook, I think that could have been a like a I don't want to say an easy 4K, but definitely a much higher chance of a 4K. I think he I think if he sex to Claudette there after after that unhook and just like and, and like secures the kill at her. Or sorry, secures the kill the kill on her. There was still like three gens left at that point, I think. I think he was in a spot where he could have been like really he, he could have been in a really, really dominant position. Because he got that hook at like five gens. And then they basically got two gens done to punish him camping it. And then I think at that point you just commit to the kill. And then play from there, right? Like that kind of feels like the right play. I feel like him camping that to struggle, like he didn't really get anything for camping that to struggle, right? Like 
like Claudette didn't end up dying until like the very, very last second. So I feel like he kind of like lost two gens early to camp out the struggle and then didn't really actually benefit from it in any way later. So I feel like had he benefited from that more early on, it could have been a lot more valuable. But yeah, unfortunately it doesn't go that way. And I don't know, this could really go either way. Honestly, I don't know. Like rats did look really, really, really strong on their survivor game against uh, Wraith, right? Like they had a, an extremely solid result against Wraith. To the point where, like, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if we see something similar here. And they do, like, really, really good. But, again, with this rule set being as punishing as it is, right? Like, no exhaustions, like, very few healing perks. Like, basically nothing. So, like, they're going to have to make sure that they're playing extremely well, right? Like, any little slip, any, any little slip ups are going to cost them. So, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Yo, small meat. Thanks for the raid, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Hey, that was my nickname in college. Hey, yo, yo, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it, dude. Hope the stream went well. Thank you, thank you, my guy. Welcome in, failures. Also, yeah, is there apparently a bunch of new, uh, uh, or sorry, there's like a bunch of first-time chatters coming in and being psychos today or something? Is that is that apparently a thing? Because I I've, I saw a bunch of people were like getting banned or something. I don't know what's going on. Slobby's also adding a million emotes. Also, I saw people trying to tell me to ban Slobby, and it's never gonna happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. Slobby's not getting banned. Slobby, Slobby's the homie. I don't care if he makes bad jokes all the time, okay? I know his jokes are terrible, okay? But Slobby's the homie. He's not getting banned. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. It's just not happening, man. Miss Booty Cake, what up? Hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. I still, I still do feel like Mischief List. Like, I feel like I keep imagining how different that game could have gone also if he just ran Mischief List. You know? Like, that second, like, even that very first frenzy, he could have got that follow-up hit on the Claudette as she was running behind main. Um, that, like, one quad hit he could have got on the unhook would have been massive. I think anytime you get a quad hit as Legion, it's huge, right? Having three survivors in deep wounds and then one survivor down, like, that's got to be, like, one of, the be one of the, be the best positions you could ever be in as killer. So, I feel like Mischief List would have just made such a big difference there in so many ways. Very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. Guys, rate my fit. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to tell it to him. I don't. I don't know how to break the news to him, man. Is Tevin going to TwitchCon? No, I'll probably never go to a TwitchCon ever. Hi, Kit Kathy. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bucket Man Legion Wizard Mastermind needs to use Brown Add-on to give survivors a chance. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, honestly. No, I think I think that adds up. No, I think you're right about that. Yeah. What's the map for Nemesis? I think we maybe have a... Um, didn't, didn't we have Nemesis on Father Campbell's, maybe? I think we had him on Father Campbell's, maybe. I think we might have put him back there, but I don't know. He's on Wreckers. Okay, never mind. He's on Wreckers. He's on Wreckers Yard. Never mind. He's on Wreckers. I lied. But I think I have seen Nemesis on Father Campbell's as well, a few times here and there. I don't know. He he, he He's around a lot of different maps. It's hard to say. The, the, the map for Nemesis in comp is that Nemesis isn't played in comp. That's, I love that. That's great. That's, that's fantastic. I mean, Nemi is a, he's a killer. Like, he's certainly a killer that exists, you know? I, I, he's definitely not one of my favorites. I'm sorry to all the Nemi mains out there, but he's definitely not one of my favorites. That's for sure. Wrecker slash Shaffle are his two most common maps. He's never picked though. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mr. Fubo, back with important math. The extra duration gives you an extra 10 meters of distance, while the lunge duration gives you an extra 3 meters of lunge distance that gets longer by 0.24 meters per survivor hit in frenzy. So even if you're like, even if you hit like three people and you're going for your fourth hit, you're still only getting like, yeah, not very much. You're like, you're getting, you're still getting like three, like, 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 you're, you're still getting like less than four meters. So basically what you're saying is, is that I was right. And I, I'm i I'm the new Legion main now. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. Nemi mains? You mean Indy and only Indy? Yeah, Indy's the only, the only real Nemi main I know, I think. Well, does Contra mean? Contra might be a Nemi main. I know Contra likes Nemi, but I don't know if Contra's a Nemi main. Maybe? I don't know. Hard to say. But Indy, yeah, Indy's pretty much the only one I know. <laughs> That's, that, that, that is true. That is true.
Good answer, Tofu. That was up there. Thank you, Swing Blade. Thank you, Swing Blade. I don't know if you saw, but there's a there, there's a there's a new meme about one v ones. Dude, yesterday was such a good day in one v ones. It was so good, and we and we and we have a new meme where like literally everybody that ever submits a time in the thread is always submitting a time that's like I don't know, round about five seconds in their favor, like no matter what. So now like if I end up with like a with like a two minute chase. We're like, oh, hey, time to, uh, time to one minute, 10 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> hey, one minute, 10 seconds. Good. Yo, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, good try. Or like if the opponent has like a fucking 45 second run, we're like, hey, uh, clock that one in at 2.30. Two, two, two minutes and 30 seconds that run. <laughs> two minutes and 30 seconds. Sorry. Hey, so, sorry about your luck. Hey, he's, he's received 102. Bro, what is going on? What is going on here? A Legion matchup where we have two people that are prestige 100 Legions. This is some bullshit, dude. This was some bullshit. Okay, he's got the lunge add-on too. What? What is it about this add-on that I don't know? What is it about this that I don't understand? He has enduring, but he doesn't have. I'm guessing this is the add-on where. What is happening? Is this even the add-on where you? What? What is happening on this build? He has enduring with uh. uh huh. No way out. Pop and corrupt. He doesn't have pain res. Uh, 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 the lunge add-on is very good. It's usually banned in comp. Really? I'm not really, I, maybe I'm just failing to understand why it's good. Which, 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 which pin add-on is this? Legion add-ons, DVD. He gets a frenzy hit onto Maria. He's going to be heading over yonder. I don't think he'll be able to get a follow-up with this. It seems like they're too far away. So yeah, not going to be able to get the follow-up. This green pin is, chat, chat probably already said it, but I'm still, I have the page open. I don't care. Broken when they mend. If they mend themselves, they get broken. So Contra will likely end up being broken after he mends himself. So that, that actually does end up being, that might, that might be important. It's interesting to see Enduring without, there's like one of the, uh, there's like an add-on where like when you get stunned or something, you like get your power back, I think. Like, or like when you get stunned in Frenzy, you get your power back. And I know we've seen, ooh, good body block from CEO, the CEO there, taking both those hits. But I know we've seen Enduring used with that add-on as long as well as uh, Eerie Button. So you can basically just face tank pallets and then just break them and keep going, you know? But that seems to be a combo. That's, that's a combo we've seen before. But uh, no bamboozle here also means that main building might end up being a bit of a struggle. And CEO, again, doing a good job of playing this window, making it a bit of a pain in the ass. Looping around the outside. We'll be using this filler out front. One, oh, they get they get they get gallows gen done already. Okay. This filler not the greatest, but we'll see what he can do with it. Zion Wolf building up bloodlust. I don't think you need to build up bloodlust as much for this pallet though. I think you could just force the kick and then down it, and and then get the down. Oh, then he breaks the wall anyway, so bloodlust is gonna go away. Oh no, the chase is not going well for Zion Wolf. Kicks this pallet too, gets blinded. CEO just taking him on a fucking pallet adventure out here, dude. He's going to throw that pallet and run the whole way around, and he gets a ton of distance. And yeah, Zion Wolf actually bails from that chase. Good start for Rats. And they're on three gens right now, too. They're split on three gens. Amazing start for these guys. Fantastic start. This gen will get interrupted. Frenzy popped. On the injured survivor. Sorry, it's not an injured survivor. Never mind. I'm wrong. Sorry. Sorry. I'm the dumbass here. That, that survivor was full health. I thought that that was the uh, Cheryl. Like, I could have sworn. I saw that hair, and I was like, that's Cheryl's hair, right? That was not Cheryl's hair. That's Alan Wake's hair. My bad. My bad. My bad. I actually gets a pretty quick down on the Smokey, though. That's a pretty decently fast down. But three gens pop. Three gens pop. We're down to two gens left already on the first hook. And all the gens are all... Dude, all, almost every gen except for one of them is also miles away from this hook. So this is a really good spot for rats. Zion Wolf really can't justify protecting that hook at all because all, like, there's so many gens far away from it. He'll just lose his gens if he tries to, if he tries to protect that hook. So he has to basically venture out into the map. So that, so that unhook should be relatively free, right? I mean, obviously you got to make your way over there without getting spotted or whatever, right? But like the killer is not going to be hard camping it. That's for sure. And they're already splitting on two gens. I don't know if they know where the third gen is. Because they're, cause they're splitting on Water Tower and then the one that's like middle. But there's one further down. There's one like further down top side that they could be working. I'm pretty sure, right? I'm pretty sure this one's like three, right? And there's one at like one. So I don't know if actually is going to come back and camp out and camp us out to struggle. I mean, I guess to be fair, like the unhook is taking a while. 
So he said, fuck it. And he's gonna, oh, he's actually not gonna stick to it. He's gonna leave early and they're gonna be on great before struggle. That's so huge. Oh, he kind of, he, so Zion Wolf took so much time to go back to the hook and then leaves a little bit early before struggle stage comes in and lets struggle and, and uh, lets the unhook come in for free without even a hit for it. Oh, that's massive. That's massive for rats. Contra might agree to this a little too hard. Yep, he's gonna go down. And they're currently doubling. Wow, they have a lot of progress. So three has a ton of progress and they're currently doubling the gen. I'm pretty sure they're doubling this gen way back by Gallows, right? He has pop, so we'll see where he goes with this pop. Oh, the answer is nowhere. He went he went to none of the gens that matter. Also, I'm I'm wrong. That gen that they're doing is the one that split. I lied. I was I dude, I'm so I'm wrong. I was wrong about like five things this game. I apologize. I thought that that was Cheryl and that gen earlier and it was Alan. I thought that he was working the gen like middle right side, but he was actually working one. And that's the final gen popping and no way out started already too. Only two stacks. So that's gonna be 36 seconds. And the killer needs like an insane amount of kills right now. Like the killer needs them all to like drop dead basically. He needs like he needs like their 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 computers to die. I don't know, maybe for them to like suddenly lose power. Like he's gonna need something crazy to happen right now. Cause he only has two stages. He needs nine stages to win. Nine stages is what's needed here. And he has two currently. He doesn't have Noah. He doesn't have anything really other than No Way Out buying him a little bit more time. I don't think there's any way he does this. It's pretty much looking like this is gonna be rats taking the 2-0 here. I'm not really sure. I'm still unsure about the idea of like, I guess that is the point of enduring in the build, right? But even like that pallet throw from Smokey didn't really make sense, right? Like that worked right there, but only because Smokey was just kind of kind of doofing it, right? Like why, why, why did Smokey even throw that pallet? I don't know. But I feel like I just don't understand the point of enduring in the build, right? Like I don't really think enduring does a whole lot here. I'm a little, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a little confused about the build from Legion. That's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna end up being four stages. So actually rats of RPD Consistently look at that consistently four actually no the first game was three stages my bad my bad my bad It was gonna be four stages and then they made it three But they end up getting a three stage game and then a four stage game on the survivor side So very very dominant from rats like they looked really really good in these sets That's gonna be it that's gonna be the 2-0 Rats of RPD taking a pretty fast 2 0 well over uh, Frosty Eyes. Frosty Eyes just not quite able to keep up. And Rats looking really, really clean, man. Looking really clean. Well, well played. Very, very well played. Um, That'll take us into our second set, which is McGowers versus Mirage. Uh... Uh, no, I mean, we're not doing third set as long as the next teams are ready as long as the, as long as the uh, next teams are ready Then no, we're just gonna go next game. We are going to go next game But the next set is gonna be McGowers versus Mirage. Uh, this is gonna be McGowers debut up against Mirage and um, Really really high octane fast-paced sets lined up here, right? It's gonna be Billy blight and then, well, I mean, Nemesis is the tiebreaker, but let's not talk about Nemesis. But Billy and Blight, bro, like, I feel like, I feel like Billy right now is almost, like, you can kind of compare him to Blight right now. He's very, like, they're both very mobile, very deadly, and as a matter of fact, I think we probably have them both on Blood Lodge, too. So, like, it's going to be two very similar sets, just, like, two different killers, right? But it's going to be very, very close, I think. So, I'm really excited to see. I am very, very excited to see how this goes. This should be a good one. Again, Mirage, we've seen one time. And they looked really, really good. Like they, like they, we, we had them up against quarter gen gods and they were both basically solo queue teams and quarter gen gods. Uh, like th I think, I feel like quarter gen gods looked a little bit more like what we'd expect a solo queue team to look like, right? Like a bit sloppy, right? But like an expected level of sloppy, right? Not like, it's not like they like underperformed. They performed the way that we thought a solo queue team would perform basically, right? Where they're kind of still like getting the hang of things, but Mirage, looked a lot more clean that set like they looked like they had been practicing they, they like they looked like they definitely had a lot more experience like i don't know if they had just been grinding scrims beforehand or what but they looked really good in that one set we saw them but i also know that mcgowers is also a, is also a team that has been playing scrims a lot off uh like outside of like our scrim nights or whatever right like i know that they've been practicing a ton before this too so i think both these teams should have a bit of experience uh, although they are still both like pretty new teams, right? So they are they are both still pretty new, but I think they have been playing enough scrims that I would expect them to be both like moderately solid. And it's just interesting to see 
which team is going to be more solid, if that makes sense. So, I guess we'll see. I guess we will see. Do you have a favorite? Uh, honestly, again, it's so hard to say because I don't know the skill level, right? I will say that McGowers had me like review a scrim they did against Nyx at one point, like a while back. And they actually looked pretty good in that set. Like they looked pretty solid. And I know that they've been practicing a lot and stuff. So maybe I would say McGowers is a slight favorite for me. But again, I really don't know because I don't it's hard to really judge the skill of Mirage either because we only saw them once and it was against and it was against quarter gen gods. And again, just to be perfectly blunt, there was a lot of sloppiness, right? Like the play was a bit sloppy. So like I feel like when play is a bit sloppy, it's really hard to tell just how good people are, right? So like uh, Mirage seemed really solid, right? They seemed really, really solid. Um it's just, I just don't know, right? I think like I think like McGowers can come in here in 2-0, and I wouldn't be that surprised. But also, I feel like if Mirage comes in here in 2-0s, I also wouldn't be that surprised. Like I don't I don't really like I don't think that either one of these are like a definite favorite. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We the McGowers are on the prowl. Meow, meow, hear our growl. Rude against us, don't be so sure. We bring morale with our purr. Oh my fucking God. I can't even read the rest of this. I, nope, nope, I'm not even reading the rest of that. Holy shit. I got to that line and I just had to stop. Holy fuck. Um, let me, here, let me give you guys, uh, yeah, I'll give you guys the payout here. Uh, there you go. There's the payout for the gambit. I'll give you guys a new gambit whenever, whenever it's up. yeah, yeah. yeah. Finish it? I don't want to finish it. I don't want. I don't want to finish it. Nope. I don't want to finish it. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Okay. Mirage is also ready. So gamers are getting in. We're gonna be. We're, we are gonna be getting ready to go soon. And I believe it's going to be the killer from McGowers. I believe will be up first, playing Billy up against Mirage. Um. Let me make sure that I'm, they're not like waiting on me to accept friend requests or something, because that definitely could be a thing, right? Oh, yeah, see, I had one from Zion Wolf. Yeah, see, yep, nope. I got a whole bunch of friend requests in here. Nope, nope, yep, nope, I'm the problem. Yep, no, I'm the issue. Nope, it's me, it's it's me. Yep, 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 look, I'm the issue. Yep, look, it's me, I'm the problem. I'm pretty sure that this was the, uh, or sorry, I'm pretty sure that this was the Nia from last game, right here. So, like, you know, I'm definitely the issue here. Oopsie, whoops, whoops. My bad, my bad, my bad. What's worse, this or the e-girls chant? I'll, dude, this one might actually be worse, which is like surprising to say. Like, they, I'm, I'm surprising myself with this opinion, but this one might actually be worse than the e-girls one. I don't know, man. There's, I gotta be honest with you, the whole like cat girl, cat boy thing that the internet seems to be obsessed with has gotta be one of my least favorite things in the entire universe. Like, I just gotta be real with you, man. I gotta be real with you. Like, that's got to be, like, one of the worst things to ever exist, ever. You know? Skibbity, though? Yeah, but, like, Skibbity is, like, stupid, right? It's, like, so stupid that I'm, like, okay, it's just fucking dumb, but, like, whatever, right? But I feel like the cat girl cat boy thing is, like, like, that shit's, like, I don't know, dude. Like, that, like, it, it's, like, another level of painful for me. I just got to be honest with you. You know? On top of that, they're Megs, bro. Like, they're a mix of Megs and cats. Like, that's... Oh, God. It's like... Like, they really went for, like, the worst-case scenario here. You know what I mean? Except we'll still a friend request. Oh. Okay, there we go. Got it. Got it. Gamba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Uh, this will be... Billy set. Um... Hold on. Let me just see if I can get in lobby. Because they might be waiting on me. Where's the bottom of the list? Um do 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 let me see if I can invite some gamers in here. Okay, they're already in. Good, 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 good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me go back let me go back to spectator. And here, let me give you guys uh McGowers versus Mirage, and I'll give you guys I'll give you guys five minutes to game, but go nuts. Go nuts, man, go nuts. Go nuts. So this will be uh, uh, this will be a Billy set. This is probably going to be on Blood Lodge, right? If I'm not mistaken. Um, 
if, if I say something that's wrong, feel free to just correct me. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Blood Lodge though, right? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with what Dino said earlier and just say and just whatever I'm thinking makes the most sense, I'm just gonna assume is correct. So I'm gonna assume that this is Blood Lodge. And hopefully I'm not wrong. So I think it'll be Blood Lodge Blight. I'm sorry, not Blight. Blood Lodge Billy. If it makes sense, they're probably there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Blood Lodge Billy and then Blood Lodge Blight afterwards. So I think both of these first two matchups are gonna be Blood Lodge. Um Low pro is banned. Yeah, low pro is banned, which is good because fuck low pro. Low pro change is fucking awful, so fuck that shit. Um, and yeah. We'll see how this goes. Mirage going to steamroll. Yeah, you love to see it, dude. We, see, yo, honestly, we have we, like we have so many people fucking cheering for McGowers. It's nice to see some some Mirage fans out here too. I mean, we'll see, man. I'm really I'm really curious how this goes, dude. Like, honestly, I think the survivors from Raj here are, these guys are very good, man. Like, I don't, I think my lobby's bugged, because I don't see the fourth survivor, even though I think they're here. I think this is going to be a really interesting game, man. Like, honestly, I don't, I really don't know. Again, I feel like, I feel like this could end up being, like, a 2-0 stomp type of a game from either side. And again, I wouldn't be that surprised. Because I feel like these are both, these, like, both these teams feel very solid, but they're both, like, kind of unproven. So, we'll see, man. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Found out today that my work is letting everyone go and gave us no heads up. Man, hey, that sounds like, uh, yeah, that sounds like pretty much how the world's working these days, isn't it? I'm sorry to hear, dude. I hope, I hope, I hope everything's okay with you. Hopefully you could at least, like, get your financial situation under control and not be, like, in a horrible spot. But that sucks, man. Sorry to hear. I expect very strong killer, uh, 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 killer results from both sides. To be fair, we have two really strong killers, right? Like, Billy and Blight are extremely strong. So... Yeah, like Billy in particular is in a weird spot where like I've heard people say that he's like up there with like spirit. I've heard people say that like Billy with low pro is like even better than Blight even, which is like crazy to even imagine. But like, honestly, I don't think it's that crazy of a take. Honestly, like Billy is really, really powerful right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Billy's a strong killer, man. Like the survivors are going to have to make sure that they're playing very, very well. It is it, it is going to be tier two balancing, so they're not going to have Delhi or anything. Um, and also they're going to have some of their like reset perks taken away. But yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. I think both of these matchups feel f feel like they're going to be very heavy skill matchups, right? I mean, obviously, I think everything is a skill matchup. Obviously, skill matters all the time. But like, I feel like in particular, I think if the killers. If the killers in particular, I think, are, are going to be able to pop off really hard, then I think, yeah, kind of like Dino said, I think we can end up seeing some really good, some really big killer results here. Like, I think, for instance, if this killer gets a big result, I wouldn't even necessarily, like, say that, like, it's looking over, because I feel like it could be big killer results on both sides. We'll see. We will see. Yo, Hundar, thanks for the resub. Five months. Welcome back, gamer. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The overlay, please. Wait, what? What happened? Oh, oh, it wasn't updated. There we go. It's updated now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sadly, we removed the skill aspect of Billy. Curving is no longer dependent on skill. Do you, do you actually believe that? Because I feel like you can do more now to the point where like it feels a little overtuned. But I wouldn't say it's not based on skill anymore. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'd really be agreeing with that opinion. I, mean, I do feel like he's capable of like more than it feels like he should. Maybe he, maybe he should, but I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Gosillo with the bamboozle, ooh, pop pain res. So very aggressive build, but again, I think kind of expected. I think like the I think the old days of Billy running like pain res, noed, bam are probably Gonzo, right? Because I think realistically like 4Ks are decently doable now. The add-ons are also what I would consider to be probably my, like, okay, definitely my favorite add-ons on Billy. Engravings are so strong. They make you go faster and mix with overdrive. They allow you to do absurd shit. Like, you can get some of the most absurd curves ever with overdrive uh, engravings. And boots are also really good for just helping you get around the map, helping you navigate, as well as, like, as well as extending your curves a little bit more just, just with the extra turning. So, good build. I mean, I, I like to build. I think as long as you just do well and pop off, this build can do a lot of things. Currently, right now, they have one survivor on Shaq Gen, and is that the... Actually, it's not a survivor with a very aggressive build. I thought they would maybe have the... 
the DS survivor doing that, but the DS survivor actually is taking chase. So this kind of works out okay. Firecrackers are a bit late. She takes the window with live. Not able to get that chainsaw as ghoul. He's gonna break this pallet too. Maybe could have zoned a little bit there. Spots a survivor at main though. Overcharge up. Balance landing from this survivor. Oh, the rock. The Dwayne Dorock Johnson. Shaq, Shaq Jen is being progressed a lot too. Shaq Jen's getting close to being done. This is dangerous territory here. Oh, oh. And good curve from Gulzilla. Down goes the Vittorio. Will this painter be in time to interrupt Shaq Jen? It actually might. Depending on the hook spawns, it actually might interrupt Shaq Jen. Good curve. Carrying him further in. Oh, it's going to be close. I do think it'll interrupt it, actually. Yep, it will interrupt Shaq Jen, so Shaq Jen won't pop. And Gulzilla we'll makes her way over there, too, with pop, too. This actually could be a ton of regression here. Yeah, because actually the regression stops. M1 comes through on the risk factor. And I believe Pop will get put down on this gen too. So there you go. Tons of regression coming in. That gen's going to get dropped by like like 50% just immediately. The other comes in very quickly too. I was a little, oh, a little surprised to see that the, 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 the chainsaw being stopped there. I think, I think they could have just kept going with the chainsaw. But does show up. Has overdrive now. Vittorio's inside, upstairs, has balance landing, as we already know, so he's going to try to use his balance and get a little bit of distance away. But where does he really go, right? Ooh, almost ate that one. But he's not going to go anywhere. He's just going to go right back down. Again, Billy in overdrive, that cooldown's insane, man. Like, you have to make sure you find a, you, like, you have to make sure you find a resource, like, immediately. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a lot like Blight. Like, we've been saying this a lot. It's a lot like Blight, man. Like, you got to make sure that you find a pallet, like, immediately. Because otherwise, he's, he's just going to chainsaw near you, and then his cooldown's going to be so fast that he's just going to have on you. And Pop goes the weasel coming right down on the Shack Gen again. Tons of value out of Pop here. And we'll still not even hang back to the hook yet. So wants, wants, to see if, wants to see if she can get it down here. The other hook does come in, though. Another Gen pops. And I think she'll be making her way back now, yeah. Where is Vittorio? He's currently hiding. He's way on the top left. He's at the maze tile. At like basically like 10, 11. But he's going to get chased out. He is going to get found. At least has a pallet here. He's going to throw it immediately. Has crane here too. But he'll also throw. He has bounce landing he could use here too. But after the bounce landing here, I don't really know if he makes it that far. So I bet he gets hit through the bounce landing. Oh no, wasn't patient enough with the vault and gets hit really quickly. They're going to be able to finish the third gen here. But that's it. Three gens are going to be done. There's going to be two left going into this 3v1. So honestly, again, still kind of decent from both sides. There is still kind of a loose three gen top side, right? It's not the best, but there's kind of a loose three gen here with like main 12 and then top left. It's not like a super good setup or anything, right? So it's not like the survivors are fucked. But it's good enough that I think Ghoul can maybe play around it, depending on how this goes. Does find some scratch marks here, but can't quite pinpoint where the survivor is. Finds him now. Ooh, needs to be careful with those curves, but doesn't quite get that one. Overdrive's going to be gone. That's going to give Kate a little bit more freedom to not be so scared, at least. Billy heading back to main. Finds Quentin. And I believe, yeah, Risk Factor's just doing the gen off to the right, I believe. Or, or sorry, off to the left. Gets his pilot throw too. Oh, actually just walks away from it. Good job. Good job kind of kind of utilizing the random junker on the map to not be in the way of a chainsaw. Overdrive coming soon though. Reads his pilot. Needs to be careful. And chainsaw from Glosilla on point. Down goes Quentin. Very, very good chainsaws from Glosilla right now. But these curves are very, very good. And this will be possibly a pain resin. Again, this is where this is where it can start to get kind of blighty, right? Like I know that's a weird adjective to use. I know it might be weird to call something blighty, but I feel like that's the that's probably the best way I can describe it. Like, I feel like with blight, when you get down into the 3v1, sometimes you get in these positions where it's just so hard to get any gen progress because the killer's super mobile. He just gets around the map super fast. He gets downs really quickly, and he's constantly getting, like, you know, like, pop goes the weasels off and everything, right? 
And we might find ourselves in one of those types of situations here if Ghoul can keep piecing together chainsaws. Slides off that car and then hits the wall, unfortunately. They also do get the unhook on the Quinton, who looks like he has second wind. So he'll be able to heal up passively, I think. Wait, he's not broken anymore. Wait, what the fuck? What was making him? That was weird. What? What the hell just happened? I don't know what that was. I don't know. I, I, I might just be dumb. I don't know. But that was weird. Ooh, good bait by Kate there. And this is what they need. That actually wasn't even the window. That was actually... I, I kind of thought it was the window, too, and I think so did Ghoul. Ghoul's actually going to head back now. Again, the yellow add on boots makes this so nice, right? You can just get around the map so easily. Survivor's bringing it back okay right now, honestly. Like, I think, I think if they can keep making that happen, like basically what Kate just did right there, if they can keep making that happen. Using Shack Pallet, Overdrive almost gone, so they're doing a really good job right now, right? And they're currently progressing two gens. If Risk Factor can do a good job of staying alive here for a bit longer still, not bamming the window. Sprint burst coming through. And he doesn't go around the back. He's actually going to leave. Okay, and Ghoul's got to leave. Uh oh, okay, okay, okay. This is exactly what the survivors need, man. This is putting a lot of pressure on Ghoul now. Because two gens are being worked. Both the final two gens are being worked. And if a down doesn't come in soon, then this is going to be trouble. Heading towards 12. Does find Kate, but I think that means main gen's going to pop. As a matter of fact, Risk Factor's right back on a gen too. Risk Factor's right back on a separate gen that's at like 60. So this down actually needs to happen like soon. Good job using those tires. Very, very well played. It's going to be dying here. But how much time will they buy? The down comes in. Is that enough? Oh, I don't know. It depends on the hook. It depends on the on the hook spawns. I don't think it'll be enough because I think even if it's not pain res, I think. It, well, I guess it depends on where Ghoul goes because Ghoul might go to Shack, or not Shack, but 12. Pain res does does it. They have so much progress at 12 too, though. 12 has so much. Dude, Mirage is pressuring the map so well because even this is not great, right? Like 12 has like 80 percent. Ooh, heading back to hook though, and does find the scratch marks of the gamer at 12. Gonna throw pop goes the weasel down on the gen, so decent bit of regression coming in from both. And I, if Gold can get it down here, this game stays alive for a little bit longer, right? Because hypothetically, you can get another hook, you can get more. I don't think this would be pain res though, right? I think it would only be pop, because I think risk factor is the last fresh hook, right? But it would be a pop, and you can maybe keep this game going a little bit longer. This is relatively dead here. I think at this stage you need to not I think at this stage you need to not go for like curves. Especially if this guy's in a dead zone, right? With him being in more of a dead zone, I think you just gotta run him down and then back rev him. You know? Like bam the window and then just run him down and pretty much back rev him. I think going for curves there is just kinda like stalling out the 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 uh, chase even more. But the survivor's doing so well. Oh the M1 coming through. That's actually pretty important too, right? Might be able to get this hook beside this gen with pop, but again, 12 has so much progress. So Ghoul likely gonna get a hook near this gen, might pop it, actually gonna hook it kind of more mid-map. Lots of progress on 12 though. Lots of progress on 12. And she's actually gonna go 12. The unhook comes in immediately. And again, you gotta be kind of worried about that yeah, that that mid gen being doubled or not or uh, not the mid gen, but like the far gen on the uh, on the on, on on the left side over here. Like you gotta worry about about it being doubled, right? Since they both just unhooked. So yeah, Ghoul gonna head back. But again, like you you're you have like a what like thirty ish seconds of time. Like you got about like thirty seconds before that gen pops, right? Like maybe thirty five, ish, maybe more like forty, but probably at this point like thirty because I've I've spent ten seconds talking about it. So. You're kind of on a timer, right? Like, you gotta make something happen before that gen pops. And again, the survivors have done such a good job of just of just pressuring the whole map, right? Making it so hard. Even right here, like, this stealth play from them is phenomenal. So good. Like, it puts the killer in such a tough spot where they're like, fuck, what do I do? Oh, I guess that's what you do! You just get a fucking cross-map chainsaw into Quentin. Holy shit! Beautifully done. Trying to bait this vault. But that's gonna be live from the Kate. Oh, and the chainsaw there too! Do either of these guys have adrenaline? I don't think they do. No adrenaline in play for either one of them. They will pop the final gen, but I think this is going to be a 4K. 
This might end up being 4K zero. Yeah, because the, the last driver gets found. Wow. Wow, those chainsaws. Woo. And yeah, I mean, Risk Factor going to do, do what he can here, but the only way that he can that he can do this is if he like loops his way over to the slugs and then picks them up without going down, which is going to be incredibly hard. It's going to be incredible. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's going to be incredibly difficult. M1 coming through. Uh, Ghoul not even trying to take any risks here. And he is heading towards Kate slowly. Uh, but I mean, is he going to make it? No. Billy shows up. Cooldown's insane. This is the Sin car. Where you can do fun shit like that. So there you go. Beautiful, beautiful use of the Sin car from Golzilla. And there you go. Down goes, down goes Risk Factor. And very interesting. I mean, like, so, okay. I think Golzilla really did a good job of like pulling this together at the end, right? Like turn this into a 4K zero, I think it was really, really good considering it was looking like they were actually gonna be able to get some outs. That being said, I actually think the survivors even just getting all five gens done here is actually very good. Like they played this extremely well. I'm very, dude, I'm continuing to be extremely impressed with Mirage, man. This team looks really fucking good. Like they really made this so hard on Glacilla to get anything going. And my Lord, that was well played. Like had Quentin not, not eaten that cross map chainsaw, that was going to be definitely some people out for sure, right? But that being said, like, like you can, like, I'm not trying to blame the Quinton because at the same time, like, you could also say that if there's, if that Quinton and the rest of the survivors didn't play so well up until this point, it could have been a 4K3, right? So, like, you know, like, not to take anything away from that Quinton. I still think that they all played phenomenally. Um, but yeah, I mean, very interesting matchup, though. Very interesting matchup. Like, I feel like, I feel like Golcilla did a really good job of, like, actually having, like, good Billy mechanics hit some really really good chainsaws but the survivors it's just did such a good job of pressuring the map and making it hard and that was a that's an exciting first matchup man wow 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 that's interesting this is going to be a really interesting best of three so that's going to take us over to the killer from mirage and they're going to be going up against the survivors of mcgower so mcgower's now on their survivor side they're going to have to get all the gens done and get at least one hook stage out right like that's what they need they need one hook stage out at least like they they can't just finish five gens and be happy with it they have to finish five gens and get somebody out in some way in some fashion um whereas the killer from mirage a 4k one is the win if you get a 4k at all you, you can at least tie right like, like, like a 4k zero is a tie but it, but if you can 4k with one gen remaining then that's going to be a win so we'll see how this goes um i will say though i will say i will say i will say Billy is one of those interesting killers. Again, like Mirage has has impressed me a lot. So I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling good about their chances here. But at the same time, Billy is like a he's a tough killer, right? I mean, people a lot of people have told me that they consider Billy like one of the hardest killers to like learn. Which again, I don't really know. I've been playing this killer for like 10 gazillion years, so like it's hard for me to judge it considering I've been playing this killer for like seven years straight. But this killer is like he's a, he's a difficult killer, right? And because this was McGower's pick. I don't know exactly how comfortable, like, we have risk factor on Billy here. I, I don't know how much experience or, you know, time he has on Billy, right? This might not be a super comfortable pick. And if it's not, that might show, right? Like, Billy is one of those characters where I feel like if you're not super comfortable on him, it can show and it can get kind of tough. So, but, but then again, again, I don't know. Maybe, maybe risk factor is a fucking god tier, Billy. I just, I really have no idea. I really don't know. But I do think there is at least a minor risk of that, right? Because we don't know. That, like, if Billy ends up being kind of a pain pick here, that might end up kind of showing. So, we'll see. Megas Reloader game is going to be a minute. That's actually okay. Let me, let me let me get some ads out of the way anyway. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We are all Meg. Yeah, they actually are all Meg. That's horrible. I hate that. I fucking hate that. I'm assuming the only person that's actually gonna be Meg is Meg, right? I'm assuming, right? Cause like you can't all be Megs, cause that's that's not allowed. Like you like you gotta pick one Meg. Rate my fit though. Uh, zero out of ten. It's a Meg. It's a Meg. I mean, Meg fits are never gonna be anything more than a zero. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, "Fuck you." <laughs> oh shit. Look, man, like if it was on a different character, then I don't know, but like, it's on a bag, dude. It's 0 out of 10. I'm sorry. I don't tell you. I don't tell you, man. It's just how, it's how it has to be. I'm sorry. 
So you can say there's a little bit of a risk factor here. Ha! Ah, yeah, that's exactly what you can say. Good one. Get it? Because that's his name. <laughs> Get it? Good one. Tofi, why are you being so nasty to my loves? Because, what do you mean? They're Megs. Hello? Fuck you isn't censored in DVD chat? I think actually things aren't censored in, like, Kill Your Friends. I think. Like, I think if you said this in, like, post-game chat in, like, a public lobby, I think it'd be censored. But I think, like, I think in a Kill Your Friends, it might not censor maybe anything? I don't know. Hard to say. Can we let Megs run for Megs? No. No, we can't. No. Absolutely not. Bro, like, if you think if you think we're going to bend rules for anybody, especially a team of Megs, like, what the fuck? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm debating on banning you for even suggesting that as a possibility. Like, you should know better. Like, what the fuck? Hello? Like, holy shit. When's the zero Meg rule going to come into effect? Yeah, if anything, I think that's what we do. We ban all Megs. We ban the character Meg from ever being played. Like, my lord. Tofu, do you like our chant? Uh, no, I hated it. I tried to read it and I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't get through it. I literally just couldn't do it. I couldn't even finish it. I'm sorry. Are legendary skins considered separate characters? Uh, I think so, yeah. Because I think, I, I, I think the main thing we're worried about is the portrait on the side, right? Like, if you're a killer, there's like the four survivor portraits on the side. As long as they're showing different things, right? Like, again, if you're like a Claire and like a Jill, like, they will have separate faces. So, yeah, so yeah, 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 because a confirmation from Dino, yeah, 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 like they're actually fully different characters. Like again, like four Megs that are all dressed very differently will still be four Megs on the left side, right? But like, if it's a whole different character, a whole different portrait, then it's really easy as a killer to be like, okay, this is like James Sunderland and that's Cheryl Mason, right? Like you, you can tell like who is who based on the portraits as opposed to having to look at like the clothes they're wearing or whatever the fuck, you know? So yes. Mm, 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 mm. Yo, gamers that are chanting for Mirage, yo, 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 look, I'm down for people to chant, all right? Like, look, I like people supporting their teams. But do, can you please make your chanting a little less like shitting on the other team and a little more rooting for your team? Like, look, I look, I know that there's a lot of Meg fans in here, so I know that like the Meg chanting is like overpowering. And I know that like, if you're a Mirage fan, you're like, Jesus Christ, like, let's get some fucking chants from Mirage in here, right? Like, I get it. But at the same time, like, yeah, yeah, be a little, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, try, 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 like, 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 I try to be a little more fuck yeah Mirage and a little more like, or sorry, and like, and like a little less like, fuck you, Megs, you know? Like, look, I hate Megs just as much as the next person, okay? I hate Megs just as much as everyone else, right? As much as I would love to shit on every Meg, you know what I mean? Try to keep it positive, all right? As, as, as much as you can. Fucking Megs. Goddamn Megs. <laughs> oh, shit. Not our overlord saying that. Look, you 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 know that I'm ashamed to be the Meg Overlord, okay? Like, look, I've acknowledged it, okay? I've acknowledged it. I am the Meg Overlord, okay? I have Megacy. I'm the Meg Overlord, okay? I'm finally coming to terms with it. But all because I can admit it doesn't mean I'm not ashamed of it, okay? I'm still ashamed of it. All right? All right, all right, all right. Please. Our friends were getting hyped. No, 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 yeah, it's all good. Yeah, look, I know you guys are just like, you know... It's like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming anyway that it's like friendly trash talk, right? Which like I get, right? And again, I know that everyone's like hyping up Megs because like they're very active in the community and they, they have like a lot of, you know, people that are friends with them in chat hyping them up. So like, don't get me wrong. I mean, I want hype from Mirage too because you guys are fucking playing phenomenal. Like you guys are a fantastic team. So I'm all for it, man. Like I want you guys to hype. I just don't, I just don't want it to be coming off the wrong way is all, you know? Can we shit talk the commentator and said, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, if you want to shit talk me, yeah, man, go nuts. Also, what happened to what happened to Bodyguard Meg? What's like, what's happening here? Hello, Meg, Megan, Meg, get in here. 
She crashed. Yeah, but wasn't that like three minutes ago? <laughs> was that a while ago? Hmm. No one's gonna believe me, but I have a friend whose brother's co-worker briefly dated Luce. She said that on their first date, they went to a restaurant and Luce ordered two different bowls of soup and mixed them together one spoonful at a time before eating both bowls mixed together as one soup. Oh, that's not how I thought that copy pasta was gonna end. Like, I didn't really know where that one was going, but like, I didn't think that that's where it was going. That's not at all where I thought that was going. Like, I thought that was gonna like go to like, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Not everyone is blessed with an SSD. True. That's a good point. I kind of forgot what it's like to not have an SSD because I am blessed with an SSD right now. And I feel like if I didn't have it, I would probably be miserable. I kind of I kind of like forget what it's like in the long, long ago, the pre-SSD days. Hey, it happens. Hey, man, it happens. Happens, man, happens. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We should be ready to go soon, I believe. And we're going to see what uh, Risk Factor can do here. Again, I mean, Billy, incredibly strong right now. Um, like, we saw Golzilla hit some pretty nasty chainsaws. But again, the, the macro from Mirage last game, man. Like, I can't, I still can't, like, it, am I am I wrong about Mirage being a solo queue team? Like, can we get, like, some confirmation? Is Shay here? Was Mirage a solo queue team? Like, is that a thing? I'm I'm still like because there's no way right like that like that's a team that was made from the solo queue form is that is that what you're telling me because dude they're playing really well like their macro last game were was fucking nasty bro it was nasty it was so good so like yeah man um very very interesting to see dude Mirage is looking really really good and again uh McGowers now are gonna have to basically match and or beat that now while also maybe hoping that they can uh, get some one-ups on Risk Factor or on the micro department, right? And, because uh, again, I think, like, like even though the, it still was a 4K, right? I think I think making that a 4K zero does make it relatively beatable. Like, Billy's, Billy's strong right now, and I feel like it's not crazy to see, like, a 4K2, 4K1 on Billy. Like, even, like, a 4K2 doesn't seem that crazy on Billy, honestly. Um, I think, I think like, 4K3 is probably where, 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 where you get to the point where you're like, okay, that's a little, like, extreme. But... Even like a 4K2 doesn't seem like that crazy of a result for to see a Billy get if they really pop off. Um, so yeah, I mean, realistically, like, again, I do think Gosilla pulled pulled back that last result and managed to get like a pretty good one, all things considered. But very, very impressive play from Mirage. Got them a lot of gens. And now they're kind of in an interesting spot. And again, I don't know. This could go either way. A lot of it's going to boil down to Risk Factor's Billy play. A lot, of, a lot of it's going to boil down to how disciplined McGowers are in terms of their of their macro and how many one ups they can get on, on the micro department. And I don't know, man. No, I I I I, I want to like I want to make a prediction on how I think this is going to go, but I literally just have no clue, man. Like I have no clue. I feel like this can go one of like fifty different ways. Anarchy Banda, thanks for the eight months, by the way. Appreciate it, gamer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They said Pandy wrote that, that, that said that, that, that uh, said Panda reporting for duty. Thank you. You're one of our like five pandas. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No basement offering? Wait, was there an offering missing? I didn't see. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the first penalty of the night? Uh oh. Riggedy rut row. To be honest with you, the penalty doesn't. Well, actually, it, do, it kind of does matter. Like this penalty actually isn't super impactful, but it kind of is because what that means is that a, is that the win con now is just a 4K zero, I believe. Like it would be a 4K zero win con as opposed to a 4K one win con. So normally a 4K zero would have been a tie, but now a 4K zero will be. Wait. No, it's all there. Wait a minute. No, it's all there. Huh? No, it's all there. What? what? Who even? Huh? Gamers are lying. Never mind. There is no penalty. There is no penalty. Never mind. Never mind. Gamers are lying, bro. Gamers are out here. Yo, this build, though. The Ruin Undying. I actually kind of love this build. I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of love this. I think Blood Lodge is maybe the type of map that you can maybe get away with no bamboozle, right? And I know I just said maybe like five times. And a really fast down on the Lucy, too. 
Okay, Ruin is the type of perk where if you kind of get off to a fast start, Ruin can get overwhelming as fuck. They are going to break one totem, so they got half of Ruin Undying gone now. But if they don't actually find and break Ruin, and Ruin stays up, that shit can get out of control very quickly, right? Like, if you... Like, I've seen games where, like, Billy's will even get a kill with, like, Ruin still up, and then Ruin just decimates the game, and it's so hard to do anything. They end up coming in very quickly, too. Follow-up Chainsaw into Lucy puts her into Deep Wounds. Chainsaw throw coming through. The add-ons, by the way, are uh, engravings, and I think that's, like, longer in Overdrive, I believe. Is that what it is? I think that makes you stay overdrive and longer, or maybe it gets you into overdrive faster. I think it's one of those overdrive add-ons. The M1 comes through. This is a really fast second stage. They're currently split on three gens, but, like, progress is not looking good right now. It is not looking good. They're currently doubling Shaq, and then main is currently being soloed. But that's going to be... Wait. Oh, there was a DS. Oh, my God. I completely missed it. I'm going to be honest. I thought he was just carrying him to the hook. I completely missed this. I'm sorry. Holy fuck. I'm the worst caster. I'm the worst cameraman in the whole world. There was a DS, but then the rehook is still coming in pretty quickly anyway. So risk factor is getting his downs very, very quickly. Like, even with even with this being the DS target, the redowns still happen. Like, DS did, did, like, it did seem like it maybe bought like an extra 10 or 15 seconds there, which is enough for Shaq Gen to pop. But still, Lucy's on struggle with the killer being here. And the only other gem of progress is currently being stood right in front of with Ruin regressing it. And there's still four gens up. Like, this is looking really bad for McGowers here. This is looking really, really bad. They're going to have to try to find their way out of this one somehow. Risk factor. I think this is the correct play. I think he's doing great here. I think he, like, he seems pretty content with just getting this kill. Because he gets his kill, I think maybe you can justify checking on your Ruin. But they're not even going for the Ruin. They're actually just doing gens. This this is going to be so rough. This is this this is going to be a big result. Because, like, Ruin's still up now. So, kind of like I said, like, Ruin, especially on a build... Or, sorry, especially on a killer that gets off to a good start like this. This is going to get so overwhelming now. Because Risk Factor is just going to have free pressure now, right? Like, he's going to chase people off gens. And, like, even right now, right? right like, that gen's going to start regressing a little bit. Oh, that was a nasty curve. Didn't land it. Good stun from uh, Yun. Who, who, who is Yun Jin? Baby Bears? Is that Undar? Oh, nasty curve there, too. All right. So when I was talking about, you know, maybe there being a risk factor. We, we, we made the whole pun about his name, right? Ha, there's a risk factor here, which is that maybe risk factor doesn't isn't comfortable on Billy. But, bro, I was I was wrong. This motherfucker was clearly comfortable on Billy. That was a nasty curve. He might even get a pain res on the toaster's gen. And that's like way up on the top right. It's going to get hit by pain res and regressed. Bro. Oh, no. Comes back to ruin. Can't find anything here. But does find the gen with all of its progress. He's going to just look around. Toaster actually is going to head. Toaster's actually going to head back to the gen that got left earlier. And try to pick up that progress. But again, look at all the work Ruin's doing right now, dude. Like, Ruin is regressing gens by so much, dude. Going for a wide curve here. Doesn't get it. Good job from Bodyguard Meg getting away from that. It has Sprint Burst, so she's going to Sprint Burst away, too. The risk Factor at least gets the information on where she is. Doesn't get that pallet break for some reason. Toaster seemed like he wanted to go for the save, but then changed his mind on it. And no one's really in position for the save right now. This gen's still regressing. Like, look at the gen progress, dude! And now he's gonna secure struggle here. And the gen progress is just not there. It's just not there, man. Baby Bear's gonna go struggle. Oh, Baby Bear's is Sophia. Okay, 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 okay. That's Sophia. I see, I see, I see. And body, uh, gonna head back to, to Bodyguard Meg, knowing where she is. This is gonna this is gonna open up Toaster for the save. But again, even Toaster, oh, good try for that curve too. Even Toaster going for the save is gonna start to regress that Jenny left, right? Because of Ruin. Baiting the Vault tries to crouch tech it, but Risk Factor doesn't miss. Gets the chainsaw. So the unhook comes into Baby Bears, but this is gonna be another Scourge hook possibly. This will be a fast heal thanks to Desperate. But dude, where do you get Gen progress now? Where do you get Gen progress? Like getting gen progress at any point. Like they honestly like, like yeah, yeah, I think I think they're too far behind at this point. I just don't think there's I don't, I don't think there's any way they do it, man. You basically need to find and break ruin 
and then also get a bunch of gen progress while also looping the killer for like a gazillion years. Another nasty chainsaw there on the toaster. Is immediately just gonna turn around and try to deny the sun hook now too. Has engraving, so we'll get there in like a second. This is looking like a 4K4, dude. I'm gonna send this unhook, but Baby Bears is also death hook, and also I'm pretty sure they're just gonna go after this anyway. Cause yeah, I mean there's no unbreakable in play right now, so like Yep. I'm just gonna slug here and just get the kill, I think. 4K4. We'll see. I mean, hold on, I won't call it just yet. We'll see what bodyguard men can do. Oh my lord, brother. My lord, those curves. All right, so again, if we were worried about this being like a uh, an uncomfortable pick for Mirage, we were wrong. Because risk factor definitely looks like he's played Billy, a, you know, a, a couple times, you know? I feel like this guy maybe has played Billy a handful of times or so, you know? I don't... <laughs> call me crazy, but maybe there's been a handful of Billy games played with this guy, you know? Really, really good job, though. I mean, I feel like this build mixed with, like, that, with that start was just so oppressive for McGowers, man. Like, how do you ever come back from that? Like, ruin on dying, and then also having a down happen, like, immediately. Like, that first down came in, and they had, like, basically no gen progress, right? Like, they were just essentially finding their gens as that down came in. So they had to, like... And then they also fast unhooked, which I think was maybe not smart, right? I think especially... I think especially whenever you see that the killer has is undying. Because I think typically a fast unhook is usually, like... Like, typically, I think you... Oh, adrenaline. <laughs> Toja's like, he's like fucking taking a sip from his coffee or something. He's like, wait, huh? I'm back on my feet? Uh huh? Wait, huh? <laughs> wait, what's going on? <laughs> but anyway, I think, I, I, I do think that like, okay, I think a fast unhook is typically done when a killer is like going to like pop a gen or something, right? Like he's leaving and he's going to pop a gen or maybe you're like making him decide, right? You're like, okay, you either are going to go pop that gen and then potentially lose your tunnel out or you're going to not pop the gen and you got to go back right away, right? But like, I think when, when when you see that Ruins in play, I think going for a fast unhook like that does not feel like a good play to me. I think that they could have let Lucy like sit on that hook for a while and maybe like pressure some gens and only really commit to the unhook if Billy was like really, really committed far away, you know? Uh, Cause again, that early start was just nuts. Like he got that down at five gens, they, they found Undying and broke it, but that was basically it. They found on dying and broke it. They got the unhook immediately. And like, yeah, Lucy had DS, which bought a little bit more time, but not a whole lot. Like even like the second stage came in still at five gens. And again, it just like that start was just so overwhelming, especially with ruin in play too. Like it's just so difficult to get anything done. And risk factor just never let off the gas at any point. And um, very well played, man. Very, very well played. Risk factor. My Lord, man. Nasty ass Billy player. God damn. Well played. Very, very well played. And let's go put Mirage up 1-0 going, uh, going into the second set of the game. And that also was McGower's pick. So if you're Mirage, you're probably feeling really good right now, right? That was McGower's pick of Killer. Now you're going into the Blight set up 1-0 going into the set that you chose. So we're going to be playing Blight. Let me ask if it's the uh, same lobby. And um, we'll see how this one goes. Because Blight will also be played on Blood Lodge. Um, here, let me give the, let me, let me choose the outcome real quick. Bam, spam, bam. Okay, yeah, so same, same lobby, it will be risk factor. I feel like Blight and Billy are so similar that it wouldn't surprise me if the killer, like, the killer players are the same very, very often here. Like, I feel like killers that play Blight are probably the same type of killers that play Billy. And vice versa, you know? Um, anyway, here's, here's, here's the Blight set prediction. There you go, go nuts. It'll be the same map, so Blood Lodge, Blight. Uh, same teams, but the role set will be a little bit different now, right? Because it's Blight, and Blight is such a strong killer, um, we will be allowing things like Deliverance, right? Like Delhi, Unbreakable will be in play. Here, let me just give you a quick... Uh, do, 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 do. Let me give you a quick rundown of the perks that normally would be banned, but aren't. Uh, Autodidact, Botany Knowledge, Champion of Light, Dead Hard, Deliverance, Inner Strength, Overcome... Uh, resurgence unbreakable so all those perks that weren't allowed before are now allowed so so we'll see things like deadly unbreakable back again um chain of light unironically is actually pretty fucking valuable here and i i would see that being used we also allow med kits and toolboxes to be used in this set too so they have those items to help them with self-resetting and also getting a little, a little bit more gen progress botany makes resets so much faster there's so much more things the survivors have at their disposal now so 
unironically, like realistically, actually, like unironically, with like the rule sets being like harsher on Blight versus Billy, I actually don't even know which set is harder. Like I've heard a lot of people say that that Billy is like close to like Blight even in terms of strength. Again, I don't know. It's really hard to say like how good Blight is because or sorry or sorry how good Billy is because of all the crazy buffs they gave him and everyone's still kind of figuring it out. But like, I almost feel like this could be even easier on the survivors here just because of what they have you know what i mean just because of all the shit that they have to use i mean i say that but it's still blight like it's still blight i don't know like maybe i'm maybe i'm uh maybe i'm like over exaggerating this a little bit because it still is blight right blight's still fucking insane but billy like i just i feel like billy definitely has the potential to pop off just insanely hard now like insanely hard whereas blight you at least have more tools at your disposal you at least have things like deadly unbreakable to help bail you out uh, you have a lot more fast resets. You have a lot more, um, um, just in general things to help you out in like a lot of different ways. Again, I think even like things like Champion of Light, we could see Ram because I feel like that actually is pretty solid in, in in a chase versus Blight. Like that slowdown you get from that perk is fucking ridiculous. So, yeah, man, we'll see. We'll see what they can piece together here. We also supposed to have a big update. Wait, really? I kind I think I just uninstalled that game. I'll be honest with you guys. I like completely uninstalled it and like forgot about it. I feel like that game was like it kind of ran its course. Like I feel like I I don't even like even with an update I don't know like could I even go back? Maybe I feel like if they add a bunch of stuff I could maybe like fuck around on it like once or twice. But I don't know man that game is kind of just run its course. Like I don't know if there's much more for me to do in that game. Rip lethal yeah I mean dude, I mean. That's just like the kind of game it is, right? Like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, we yeah we played with a bunch of mods. Yeah, like as like so we so we basically played base game for like a long time, and then we just started downloading mods like crazy. And like every day that we play, we we, we like we would add like three new mods or whatever. And yeah, yeah, we had I don't know we 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 I feel like we basically milked it for everything we could. Like we milked that game for every possible thing we could. And yeah, I just don't think it's I just don't think there's anything more to it. You know? Yeah, like it's yeah it's a really fun game. Like I don't want to like. I don't want to shit on the game or like or or, or 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 anything. I think for what it is, right? Like it is just kind of like a silly, a silly party game, right? It's like a silly fun party game that I don't think it's I don't think it's the type of game that's meant to be played for like a year straight, right? I think it's the type of game that you're meant to play for like a few weeks or a month and then quit. And for what it is, I mean, it's fun, right? It was a really 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 fun couple weeks to a month, but I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm just kind of done with it, you know. New update sounds like it might be cool. I mean, are they adding like enough significant things that it's going to be different or because I feel like unless they add like a lot of significant things to the point where like the gameplay is like, you know, a lot different that I don't I don't know if it'll be enough for me. I don't know. But I guess we'll see. I don't know. Prions, don't you even fucking start, man. Don't you even start with us, motherfucker. Don't you even try it. I'm just got club games are on the up right now. Same, 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 same. Supposedly they're adding a lot uh, to add lots of new enemies and maybe maps. To be honest with you, like maybe this is just showing how I am with video games. But the main thing that kept that game fun for me was like figuring out how to fight shit. You know, like once like the initialness of it went away, like the initial fun, I just like started taking shovels every game and just tried to kill shit. I was like, yeah, let's kill spiders and let's kill fucking. Nutcrackers. Anyway, we'll, we'll come back to this topic later. Here we are. Thrilling Tremors. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. Blight also is, like, very heavily restricted on what he can run, too. Right? Like, Pop Eruption as a combo is banned. Pain Res is banned. There's, like, a lot of really strong perks that are banned here. Right? So, again, even on the Blight players, you'll see a lot of, like, weird shit. Right? Like, Thrilling Tremors is, like, is like one of the perks on this build that you're probably not going to see on very many other killers ever. And you, you see things like Spy from the Shadows a lot, too. Like, you see a lot of choices like that because everything else is just not allowed. Ooh, head-on coming through. Very interesting to see that head-on is actually being ran by these survivors, given the fact that we allow, like, everything. I mean, I guess I don't hate it. Right? Because even, like, right there, right? Like, I mean, a head-on like, head play in, in, a, in, a, in a certain spot, especially with main building on this map having so many lockers, a head-on in, like, a good place actually could save a lot. To be fair, it got Toaster away from this chase when he was injured, so I guess it was actually pretty good. Want to get Meg going for a cheeky corner up there, but Risk Factor sniffing it out and getting hit with the double fatigue because fuck you, DBD is a great game. Sees a couple different scratch marks here, but so far not a bad start for Meg Hours. 
Chris Factor gonna kick this with Brutal and have his rushes back up immediately. Will he be able to get here before the next? No, and Bodyguard Mag not even throwing the pallet either. Well played. Very well played. We'll have to throw it now. Again, another Brutal Strength pick into rushes being used. So this is gonna be very tough now. I don't think you make it anywhere from here. Risk Factor actually going for like a risky flick. I don't like that play from him. He still, he's had all of his rushes there. I think you can go for a much safer play and not really go for something risky there. Oh, does manage to piece out. That was actually looking scary for a minute there. Good try from Bodyguard Meg. But they do pop a gen before the first down. They might actually get another one done too. This is actually a really good start. Typically speaking, like, Normally, like with like with 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 sets like blight, it's not that uncommon for a blight to get a down before the first gen even pops, and then like find the gen with the most progress, and then kick it with pop, and then just have it be have, and have just like a terrible opening for the survivors. They get two gens done in exchange for the first down. The down is in basement. The down is in basement, and I think the gens they got done were also far from here, right? There, like there, like there is at least two gen. There is still there is still two gens. Like there's kind of a three, there's sort of a three gen here. But there's still two gens deep topside that they can work on right now. Like, if the Blight wants to protect this basement, they can work on those topside gens basically for free. Ooh. Oh, doesn't manage to hit the collision the way he wants. One more rush after this. One more rush. He's going to head back to basement. Okay. Doesn't fight quite, doesn't quite find that hit. Uh, looks like Delhi Unbreakable is going to be on Angel, who is kind of hovering nearby. Did she leave scratch marks here? I don't know. It looks like Risk Factor seemed to know about her, so he's going to... He's going to find that, which is massive. Because she really wanted to get in there and get that save and get Deli up. But he's actually going to be able to find this down. That's huge. That's a massive find. That's us. That's That actually keeps us alive really, really well for us factor, actually. And they are slowly progressing those gens. But, oh, I bugged him out. I'm a dumb bitch. I'm a real dumb bitch. I'm sorry. I can't I can't help myself but fucking change cameras all the time. Um, He's currently rushing around somewhere. Tosha's gonna grab the unhook on the angel. He's, he's probably back at Shaq. Realistically, he's probably back at Shaq. He probably wanted to make sure the unhook wasn't coming in. But like the second he checks a locker or kicks a pallet or vaults anything, he'll get unbugged. Okay, I'm sorry. He'll get unbugged. Sorry, DVD is a fucking buggy mess with spectators. I'm sorry. Actually, Toaster gets the unhook from the guy and gonna for the people. Okay, for the people coming in on bodyguard. Okay, there he is. Now he's back. So Toaster actually gonna get the for the people on to Meg. But she does get tagged on the way out, and Risk Factor wants to try to get this kill. She did run to a dead zone, though. There's nothing really here. So, not going to have much to work with. Tries to juke away from that, but isn't going to work. She will go back down. And as a matter of fact, Risk Factor wants more. He's going to go after Toaster. Toaster is still, still sticking around. This is actually a really good heads up. That's a really good heads up call from, from uh, Risk Factor there. Again, really impressed with his play, dude. He's gonna he's gonna hook toaster real quick too. This is like a little aggressive. I mean, I know that you don't have to worry about for the people because you know that toaster had it. But there's still I feel like there's still a minor. I mean, I don't know if the survivors run up on this, you're probably still fine. So even this is still good. So he's gonna get a fresh hook on the toaster and get this kill on the bodyguard Meg. They do pop the fourth gen, but now you're going in. But now you're going into a three v one with somebody already on hook. Oh, that failed skill check is actually. A huge deal. He knows where they are now. He, he knows they're resetting and he knows where they're resetting. That's actually a really, really bad failed skill check. And he's going to come right over. This is borderline game ending. Ooh. Unless Lucy just gives the juice. But still, this is still really bad. He, he knows where they are. Trying to get this unhook is going to be a nightmare. He, can, he literally sees them both right now. He's going to get an attack on the Lucy. And he's probably just going to head towards the hook. I mean, he has kind of a, three, a, a loose three gen here too. So this is looking like probably 4k1 territory unless the survivors can make something crazy happen here. Okay, using a few rushes but not fully committing to it, but will still head after Angel now. And maybe Lucy goes to this unhook, but if she does, she, she, she has to make sure she makes, okay, she will make it in time. You can say, like, you gotta be careful with your timing because if you don't make it in time, this could end up being disastrous, but she will make it. All five rushes used here too. Everybody's at least back on their feet. But again, how do you find time to progress to, to progress these gens now, right? Especially because it looks like Risk Factor is going to keep getting hooks kind of in this bottom side, right? As long as he keeps getting downs and hooks in this three gen setup, this is going to be so difficult. Right now, Tozer's already kind of pre-stealthing for the unhook while Angel is progressing a gen uh, way on bottom side. This is basically at like 6 o'clock, essentially. Maybe like 5. 
And he's going to head right over to that gen. As a matter of fact, I think he's... Did he see? He didn't see Angel. No, he's, he's just going to go kick the gen. Toaster will get the unhook. This at least maybe gets them out of bottom side. Which is actually kind of good. They're going to both head up yonder way. Good stun from Lucy. Toaster's off to the left too, which we heard. I think he also heard it too. And he's going to go after him. Oh, show up. The weird bumps, weird bumps, but does get it down. Still still does get it. Again, that gen at six being worked, but like barely still. Toaster's also death hook too, so this is actually disastrous. He's going to be dead. And then after this, like what really can you do, right? Like he's death hook and now... I don't think you get any gen progress done now. Like it's over, basically. That's basically it. Cause yeah, I mean, like maybe, maybe if they had that gen, like if they had like two gens both with a lot of progress, then maybe I'd be like, yeah, maybe they can pull out something. But they have one gen with like 30% and that's it. So yeah, this is gonna be 4K1 for a factor. Very solidly played from both sides though. Like honestly, I do think McGowers handled things pretty well. Like the early game from McGowers was really, really good. I think the main turning point here was Delhi being found. Like, I think if Delhi doesn't get found and downed on that first hook, this is like literally outs for the survivors. Like this is outs. So that was a huge find for risk factor. Um, Unbreakable and Angel is going to get her back on her feet, but again, like still not really going to do anything with this, right? Like unless Lucy takes this for like an 80 second chase or something, which is probably not going to happen with a blight, especially when all these resources have been used. Like it's still not really anything, right? Like. I, I, as much as I want to get excited and be like, whoa, unbreakable, it's going to be a 4K one. Like, let's just be real, right? But yeah, I mean, very interestingly played, right? Again, I feel like the survivors actually did do a really good job early game. Like, 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 like the first, like, two minutes of this game, I was like, wow, McGowers are nuts, and they might actually be able to get some outs here, and this is going to be an insane game. But, that, but that's why these sets are so scary, man. All it takes is one little thing going wrong. Like Angel, I don't know. I could, I didn't see exactly what happened. I should have, I should have stuck to the. Really, I should be sticking to the killer point of view more. I think. <laughs> I like to jump around too much. I think, because I'm curious to see what happened. Like, I don't know if Angel maybe left scratch marks, or if it was just like a really good like game sense call on, on risk factors. End. I'm not sure, because he kind of just like went to the side right where Angel was and 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 uh, found her while she was hovering with Ellie, and then he got that like quick two tap on her. And that just kind of turned the game around because that 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 sent bodyguard meg to struggle stage in basement and it got delhi out of play and it got a second hook stage and that also kind of just paused all gen progress because they had to kind of just like send in the boys to kind of get them out of it right like that was a huge turnaround when when he found delhi so yeah yep yep, yep. pretty insane even with Delhi being found, Meg, uh, Meg had a long enough chase to make up for it two gens popping yeah exactly because yeah like like actually unironically like if you don't get the early game that they got here, like if you don't pop two gens for the first down the way that they did, and then everything else happens the exact same way it did, right? Like like uh, Delhi being found and yada yada yada. This ends up being like a 4K3. Like this ends up being like a 4K3 or 4K2, you know? So yeah, I mean, again, that early that early game did give them enough leeway where even with things going risk factors way, they still end up with like a pretty solid result, right? 4K1 is like like borderline expected, I guess, from good blight play. Um. Like, beatable on both sides still, right? I think, like, Mirage survivors can still potentially beat this. But the killer from McGowers can still potentially beat this too, right? It's, like, a pretty, like, middle middle ground. Like, early game, very in favor of McGowers. Mid-late game, very in favor of Risk Factor. And now we'll see. This is a good matchup, though, man. Risk Factor, nasty on these killers, dude. Playing so well. Like, playing so, so well. Alright. Um, we'll get the lobby going now for the second matchup. So... 4K2 is win con. 4K1 is tie condition. All five gens popping is going to be the win con. So if you're the survivors from Mirage, that's going to be how you win now. It's just popping five gens. Um, but like just popping five gens. Like I always, I always word it that way. And I, I think, I think wording it that way is like the silliest thing ever. Cause like just popping five gens against the blight, you know, that's all you just, just pop five gens. That's all. Just do that. It's easy peasy. Like obviously it's a lot harder to do than it sounds, but, um, does Risk, does, uh, Risk Factor play Survivor, or do I need to get somebody else in here? Um, so yeah, 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 we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, he was on Survivor last time, so I'm assuming he will be.
Anyway, Lethal Company. Uh, like I said before that game started, I don't know, dude. I feel like unless they add some good combat to that game, I don't know, man. You know what I mean? I don't know. Because I feel like... I feel like the only thing that kept me interested in it once I like I think once I got past the initial bit right like once I got past the initial bit of learning the game the other thing that kept me interested in it was just like fighting shit you know like I just wanted to fight shit I just took shovels every game and I was like let's kill fucking spiders and uh thumpers or whatever the fuck so I feel like unless they add like more like fun combat I don't know if it's gonna be enough man I'm probably not gonna be entertained enough to go back because I feel like I I don't know like there's only so much like trolling and dumb shit you can do and then there's also only so much like try hard you can do for like quota too like i don't know it's just not enough it's not enough man i feel like i need more than that yeah yeah, yeah. the payout is for both games like we don't even know the winner yet like we can't choose a winner because we don't know the winner there's no win con like the win con now is going to be basically how this game goes and which side does better compared to last game yeah 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 Not the comp Tuberal. I don't even know how to say his name. Can I just call him Tubbs? Wait, that kind of sounds like I'm insulting him. Um, like, what do I call him? How do, how do I say his name? Tuberal? Tuberal. Tuberal? I don't know how to say it. Is he is he really like bad in terms of like like sounds and stuff? I know that there's some legendary characters that are apparently like really OP. Like apparently like Rose Marigold or something is like nuts, and she's like all quiet or some shit. Is, it, is is this guy like super loud? I feel like he would probably be loud. Like, I think there's something. I think I think there's something about looking at him that makes me feel like his grunts of pain would be loud as shit. He's quiet, really. Oh, is he actually good for sounds? Yeah, Rose is like super quiet. Yeah, you said it right before. Tuberal or Tuberal? No, Tuberal. 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 I see. I see. I see. I see. Tubby. Yeah, I don't think you can call him Tubby. That's no, that's not that's not call him Tubby. I don't like that. <laughs> that feels not correct. On top of that, he's not even Tubby at all. You know? Like, please. Tupperware. I don't think I like Tupperware either. I think tuba is probably better. We can just call him tuba. You know, like the fucking brass instrument. Tuba. Tuba. I wouldn't be fine with me. Tuba. Good old tuba. Roll the R. Tuberal. Tuberal. Is this like... What, what is this? Is this like... Portuguese? Or something? Is he like Brazilian or some shit? Like what... Like what is... Like what's the name? I feel like that's what I get. I get like... I get like Brazilian vibes or something. Is that right? It's like... Is it like Portuguese? But like from Brazil? It's Portuguese for shark. Ah. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Oh, that's kind of cool that I knew that. Well, I guess I didn't know that. That's kind of cool that I guessed that. I think he's just Brazilian. Yeah, that makes sense. Slobby, what are you saying? What the f... Bro, what the... It's Portugal Portuguese. Okay, okay. So this is not, so this is not Brazilian Portuguese. I see, I see. Like, he's like straight out of Portugal Portuguese. That's so weird, because, like, Portugal, like, Brazil has, like, a lot more people than Portugal now, right? So, I, it, it's, it is kind of weird that, like, those are, like, the two main places that speak Portuguese. I mean, I know there's, I know, I know, I know, I know Portuguese is still spoken in other places, too. But it's really interesting how, like, I mean, Portugal is not, like, a super small country or anything, but it's, like, decently small, especially compared to, like, Brazil. I, I find that whole thing to be very interesting. Like, I, I almost feel like I hear Portuguese, and I immediately am just like, I assume Brazil before I assume Portugal, which is, like, very odd, I feel like. Like, I don't know. That's strange. You're decently small. Hey, bro, that's kind of fucked up. But maybe that's the same thing for English, right? I mean, maybe people hear English, and they think of, like, America? Is that true, though? I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know, bro. I don't know what it's like to be anywhere in the world other than America, so I don't know. I don't know, man. Brazil has a, larger, uh, has a larger population than Portugal? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Brazil's like top 10 populations in the world, right? Brazil has a fuck ton of people, dude. Like, that place is a... They, they, like, they got a fuck ton of people. Anyway, um, I think they're top 10. Actually, actually, I think I might be wrong about that. They might, they actually might not be top 10. Come to think of it. 200 plus million? Okay, never mind. They're, okay, they're, they're, they're definitely top 10. They might actually be top 5. Anyway... 
Cool silly here has Dying Light, Pop, uh, Spies from the Shadows. So a little bit different this time around. No Brutal Strength being ran. Um, also no Throwing Tremors. But still double speed, same add-ons that we expect to see. And we'll see how the survivors are able to handle this. Hit comes in on to Quentin. Pretty good and early hit. Making the pallet break there. Oh, the bumps aren't... Fucking Blood Lodge. I think I remember who was it? Momo, I think. That, like, I think hated Blood Lodge's Blight. I think it was Momo. I remember talking with somebody. I had a co-caster on that was talking about Blood Lodge Blight and how much they hated it, and I think it was Momo. And he talked about how, like, the collisions on this map are sometimes, like, just a fucking nightmare. Like, how sometimes you'll just, like, slide off shit and, like, you just won't collide with things. So, kind of happening there. But the first down still does come in decently quickly. They are currently doubling main. Busting out the toolbox, too. Really trying to get it done before the or before, uh, before the blight shows up. I'm a little surprised to see the other survivor leaving. But it looks like old Tuba will be able to get this done. Toolbox coming through clutch. That's massive, too. Like, if they don't pop that gen... Like, if they... Like, I, I, like I think, like, like, for instance, hypothetically, if the blight doesn't slide off the things at, at bus and gets that down, like, maybe, like, 10 seconds quicker, they make it to that gen in time with pop, and then this is, like, a whole different video game, right? Them, them popping that gen is actually huge. The unhook comes in very quickly. No pop used. But we're just gonna kick this pallet and then try to follow up. Ooh... Trying to find the bumps. This rock's actually not bad, though. Just gonna fatigue. Quentin making his way to this kind of dookie Ormond tile, which is not really the best, but he is doing a pretty good job of buying some time here, right? Like, this chase is definitely not instant. So they'll be able to get some gen progress for this. Ooh, unfortunately doesn't play that pallet too well, though, and will go down. But still, honestly, still decent. Still decent. Matter of fact, we're still heading back into the map. Maybe a little worried about some of these intergens? Interesting to see this, because you think maybe you just hook and then head back into the map with Pop. But heads back into the map a little bit early. Maybe a little bit worried about DS too, which is kind of fair because DS is, is in play. So maybe, maybe like, may, like, uh, like I may be trying to avoid DS, which is actually kind of correct. And finds Tuba. And gets a tag on the Tuba. But also, they're going to they're, they're, they're be able to pick up the uh, Death X Survivor now. Man, that's tough. Two gens done. Deathhook survivor, or sorry, not, not Deathhook survivor. The survivor that's been hooked once. The survivor that was off hook got unhooked. And now there's going to be another fresh hook now onto, onto Tuba. But this hook will be kind of mid-map. Dying light. Getting some, uh, some stacks too. Ooh, goes for a big flick, but doesn't quite land it. But also just kind of ending ending the dash and, you know, getting popped down on this gen too. Only two rushes used, so we'll be able to rush again immediately. Going to head back to the hook. There is like a row of gens here, right? Near where this hook is. Ooh, I don't even know what happened there with the bump. That was weird. Like maybe like back bumped or something. All five rushes used though, so that kind of gives the unhook for free, which is actually pretty big. Like, not even getting tagged on the other on, on, on the other hook there is actually kind of massive. So, again, really well played by Mirage. Vittorio will take a hit there, but look at how far Tuba gets. Look at how far he gets. Whole way, whole, the whole way down at Shaq now. No collision here. Cooldown, and Tuba still has Shaq to play, but going to be in some danger. Oh, we'll go back down. But they're currently doubling a gen on the left side. And that one will be getting done. And that, uh, ooh, this one's actually pretty close to this hook. So yeah, this uh, this uh, left side gen will get done. Actually, is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this uh, left side gen will get done. And then that gen on the on the bottom will get, will, will get kicked by pop. But there still is kind of this three gen lineup on the right side. I'm a little surprised to see they weren't prioritizing this. Because like risk factor, like... He he took his he took his hook away from these gens, right? Like he was hooked on top of these gens, and he, and then he took his hook away from it. And I thought that they would prioritize breaking up this three gen over here, but they didn't. So that's a little sloppy from them, I think. Like I mean, again, it's still not bad because they still have good gen progress, and they still do, I think, have time to break this up. But there's kind of four gen, like all four of these last gens are kind of in a row here, right? And like and like specifically, these three are not too far away on this on this on this right side. Spots Vittorio.
And Vittorio wants to come in and get this. I think he's just going to one for one. At least forcing the one for one here is good too, though. That keeps that keeps Vittorio off gens for a little while. That also makes him burn as unbreakable. But yeah, this is really important, right? I mean, even this is weird because I feel like they, they that they that they could be doing the middle one. Like, okay, like it's good that they're getting that one done, but they're still gonna be in a, in a in like a three gen scenario when this when this kill comes in, right? So Shaq Pilot used risk factor goes back down. Uh, Ghoul maybe deciding to try to greed for more, but doesn't. Yeah, like they're like they're gonna finish this gen way on the top, like on the on the on the top right. But now there's like again, like it was like a straight line of four gens, and it did the outermost gen. So now there's still a three gen. Like yeah, I think I think had they prioritized one of those middle gens, it, this would have been a much much better scenario. That being said, still not a bad spot to be in, right? One gen left as the kill comes in. They do have a little bit of progress at least on this mid one. I think the I think the one on the bottom had a little bit of progress too. Uh, Unbreakable has been burned, I believe. I think he used it, actually. I don't know. Was he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, I yeah, know. He definitely did. So Unbreakable has been burned, but they're all back to full now. Three sacks of Dying Light. And still Pop goes the Weasel up. Good job from Kate getting away from that one. Not, not getting tagged there. Spies giving some info. That'll be a tag coming in. Vittorio spotted. But looks like Ghoul wants to commit to this. Just breaks the pallet. Two rushes used. How far do you want to? How long do you want to commit away from this, though? It's a little scary, right? This chase is happening way on the opposite side. I feel like I don't know how I feel about committing to this. I mean, I, I think it's going to end up being OK, but like this hook is even really going to happen in like a very good position, right? Like, you're going to have this hook way far away from your gen, so you can't even really protect it or anything. You're basically just getting yourself another stack of pop and then another... Or I should say another stack of dying light and, like, one more use of pop. But I feel like you could maybe just head back into the three gen and try to find the people that were that were, that were were pressuring them, right? Instead of going for that hook? Or, or uh, that chase? And just find multiple tags? Pop does come in, though. Vittoria will be going for the unhook. He has will make it, so he'll be able to reset her very quickly. And does Quentin successfully stealth this? Well, actually, I don't even know if that was stealth or if that was the killer just choosing to leave. Kind of looks like stealth because heading back now. Can't find the last collision. And Quentin making his way towards Shaq. Very well played. Very well played for these survivors, man. He still has this pallet that he can use. That was a weird little play there. Good. Very good pathing from Quentin. And yeah, Ghoul, Ghoul seems a bit confused by it. Can't quite keep track of him. Very, very good pathing, man. That Quentin is slippery. And now they're doing a gen. And this is, this is where it gets scary, man. You got to be really careful about committing, right? Like, this is a long time away from the gen topside, right? Like, I know that you really want your tag, right? Like, you don't want to just leave this gen unchecked. But how long are you going to leave the other gen unchecked? Goes for a hit on the window without power and doesn't get it. And this is going to... Uh, yeah, I think this is going to cost it. This is going to cost it. I think, I think the game's over here. Heading back. But even heading back, I think they could just commit. They're actually not going to commit. And, and uh, see, this is also fine. Because I think even them not committing is fine. This gen has so much progress now. And Quentin's going to start working that bottom side gen now, too. So even now, like, you need to get, like, a down, like, immediately. Like, you need a down, like, yesterday. Quentin's actually... Okay, Kate gets found. Quentin immediately runs back up and gets on the gen. Does get the down on the Kate. Oh, dude, if he can just commit to this and get it done, he gets it. Does he have time? Oh, my dying light's making it weird. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Pop comes in. All right. Doesn't get it yet. Game is still alive. Quinton actually has to rotate off of his gen to come get this unhook now, too. Wow, I'm very surprised. I mean, it's rough, right? Because you don't want to get grabbed off the hook. Like, it's a tough, that's a tough little, like, like, again, it might seem silly, but that's actually like a weird 50 50, right? Because as Survivor, you don't want to get grabbed off the gen, but at the same time as Killer, like, you don't, like, like, you definitely don't want to just, like, go for a hit. So, like, the Killer's just seeing if you'll let go for, for, for the kick, but also, like, I don't know, it's like a weird, risky 50 50 that you can go for, but yeah, I mean, he unfortunately does let go and lets the pop come through. But again, the survivors are still in a pretty good spot, even with this, though, right? Like, Ghoul still needs to literally keep, like, you need to keep popping off. 
Because again, Quentin probably actually they're they're actually doubling this. Yeah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be it. This 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 hook is this chase is way too far away. They're 100 percent gonna get this. Ghoul gonna try to make it back in time, but yeah, their their chases are just like again they're they're buying little bits of time here and there, and it's like just enough, you know, like. For instance, like the downs just aren't coming in with like the first set of rushes. Like they'll like they'll basically use up some rushes, then like force the cooldown, and then force force gold have to like run them down, and then that's just that's just enough. It's just buying a little bit of time like that. So Mirage is uh, gonna get the fifth gen done, which is gonna be the win con. At this point, it doesn't really matter what happens, right? Even 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 if they all die from here, it's still gonna be the win for them. But I'm sure that they would like to get some people out if possible. Unbreakable has been used, so hypothetically, hypothetically. Ghoul could still slug this out and get a 4k. If she could find Quentin. Delhi's still in play too though. Delhi has not been used. Gonna gonna get this pickup. Is this gonna make Quentin get on a get on a gate? No, he's actually gonna go pick up the Vittori. Okay, yeah, and now they can basically do whatever they want. See, I mean, like these guys could just split gates even. Like if they just split gates, then they guarantee at least get somebody out. But they might even... Honestly, you can probably send Vittorio to a gate. Because if he gets hooked, he has Delhi, right? So it's not really the end of the world. Quentin, though. Very, very good pathing. Knows he doesn't have to throw the pallet. Plays that very, very well. And Vittorio is still, still making his way to a gate. Still trying to find his way to a gate. But he'll get there. Oh, he'll get there. Don't worry. He's, he's well on his way. Yeah, this Quentin is nasty against Blade, dude. He plays so well. Like, his pathing has been phenomenal, dude. Like, he seems like such a pain in the ass to try to catch. And he also has the chase build, too. So, yeah, I think you can see that for a reason, right? Like, he also has Dead Heart still up even right now. Double vaults into Shaq. Oh, last rush. Not going to be able to make anything happen there. And he can maybe leave, and Quentin can maybe try to get Hatch here, too, even, right? Like, Hatch will spawn right, right behind Shaq. But Ghoul knows that, which is why she's just kind of sitting there. And now we're kind of going to have this little bit of an awkward standoff, I think. We're going to have a little bit of an awkward... Like, at some point, does Quentin just leave? <laughs> like, are you just like, all right, I'm not getting Hatch. Do you just leave? Or, like, what do you... How do you how do you handle this as a survivor? I don't know. <laughs> like, what do you do here? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I guess we're stuck here forever. Uh, guys, we thought Hatch standoffs were gone, but they're actually not gone. Oh, we just hit a dead hard. And then they leave, and then you get Hatch. All right. I mean, dead hard's still in play, so he just baits it out, gets the dead hard, and then that's enough. So there you go. Very, very well played. Very, very well played. And they end up getting two out. I think that was a seven-stage game, I believe, is what it's going to end up being in the end. So very, very well played by Mirage, man. Dude, this team looks so good. My lord, dude. My lord. But well played, man. This was a really good... This, is, this actually ended up being a really good set. So, yeah, uh, McGowers couldn't quite keep up with Mirage. But, again, it was a very close set. Like, they, it was a very, very close setup. Like, like, bo like both these sets were extremely close. And I felt like this was a really a really well-matched uh, best of three. But Mirage was a little bit further ahead, and they are able to take the 2-0 well on both those sets. But well played by McGowers. That was their first showing, and they played really, really well. Mirage is very impressive, though, man. Like, I still can't believe that this is a solo queue team. So fucking crazy, dude. So crazy. Like, they're looking so strong. But McGowers also looked really good too, man, to be fair. Like, this is the, uh, that, that was also McGowers' first ever showing in scrims. Like, that was our first time seeing them, and they looked really, really good too, man. Again, it's like, it's hard. It's like, it's a little weird because I feel like even though McGowers looked really good, it almost feels like it just like maybe gets overshadowed because they lost a set to Mirage, who also looked so good. But both these teams, I feel like, played much, much better than I feel like. I was like expecting them to if that makes sense like I thought I think both these teams are playing at a much higher level than I thought they would so very very well played man very very well played um yeah I don't think they I don't think I don't think McGowers are wanting to play third set so I don't think third set's happening are the are the next teams not ready yet probably not right we are a little bit ahead of schedule look if the next teams are ready I mean we can just keep full sending it uh, uh, like ahead of schedule but if they're not ready they're not ready so we can see I think uh yeah it's currently what eight it's like not even nine yet, and the the, and the next teams aren't scheduled until what ten. So, yeah, if they're not ready to go, then we can maybe try to fill some time. But if they're ready to go, we can just keep it moving. It don't matter to me. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. 
Let's get our picks for this week. Here you go. Uh, these are the picks. So we already had the first two games over. Uh, Rats of RPD beat Frosty Eyes 2-0. Uh, that was a, like, they played that very dominantly. They were just, like, they were just playing so, so well. Um, that was a, that was our only Legion set we're going to have, by the way. So if you missed the Legion set, then you just missed it. Sorry. Um, we had Billy Blight for McGowers versus Mirage. That one's done so. And then Despair versus Dinkatron's is next. It's going to be Billy and then Nemi with possibly a demo tiebreaker. And then we have Wraith Executioner with possibly a, a with possibly a demo tiebreaker for the last set. So, uh, decent bit of variety, you know? Decent bit of variety today. Like, we're going to see almost every killer. Hard Hat Ones versus Dino? Bro, not the fucking Hard Hat Ones again, dude. Not like this. Not like this, dude. No, man. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think even, even with hard hat, bro, I fucking Chucky is, he's still Chucky, dude. You know, like he's still Chucky. He's a lot more fun with hard hat, but nah, 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 nah. Also, Zubat, thanks for the raid, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Yo, uh, want to be skeleton. Thanks for the 16 months. Welcome back. Appreciate you, gamer. Thank you, buddy. Hello, hello, hello. Despair is not able to fill early, so we got to fill time. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, they said one of our members isn't off work yet. Okay. So what are we doing to fill time? Hmm. Hmm. That is the question. Mirage is on the play again? Yeah, I think McGowers were not, though. Ray asked for show match? Ah, Ray, do you want to play against Mirage? One, some gamers asking to pug. I mean, yeah, we can put like Ray against Mirage. We can we can run ones if you want Dino. It don't matter to me. I'm pretty sure McGower said that they weren't wanting to do the third set. So if we did have Mirage play again, I think they would just be playing Survivor as like a show match type thing. You know? You should do ones. I'm also down for ones too. I'm down for that as well. It doesn't matter to me. It does not matter to me. Dino, you want to run some ones or something? Like, what are we doing to fill time here? I don't know. What are we doing? I don't know. No, no Chucky hard hat ones, though, bro. I don't know about all that. I don't know about the Chucky hard hat ones. That feels... Dude, that's Chucky, man. I don't know. Like, fuck Chucky. Ugh. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Not... Not the Chuckster. Not the Chuckster, man. All right, I guess we and Dino will fuck around on ones in the meantime. Fuck it. Fuck it, dude. Fuck it. Dude, my friends list is so the friends list in here is so big. I might I might just need to get you to join. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Tofu ones versus every available scrim team? What I just like run through the gauntlet of people? I don't think we have that much time, man. I don't think we have that much time. How about, yo, how about me and Diner run ones and you guys can gamble on who wins? How about that? Oh, wait, shit. We can only do like these five characters, though. I forgot. I'm on my scrims account. Wait, we couldn't do Chucky ones even if I wanted to. I forgot. Uh, shit. That's awkward. Nurse ones? Bro, nurse is like, I, I don't play nurse, man. I'm sorry. I, I gave up nurse. I just completely gave up that killer. I don't know. Uh, trap wraith? Trap wraith? Question marks? Trap wraith? Question marks? <laughs> trap wraith? Trap wraith? Uh, any any trap wraithers in chat? Any 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 trap wraithers? All right, here. Uh, this will be this will be a trapper one v one. You guys can gamble on it. Okay, here. Let me let me give you guys. A oh wait, I never chose the outcome. Uh, there we go. Wait, hold on. You guys gotta get paid still. Bam. There you go. Uh, let me give you guys a gamba for this. Uh, uh, who wins 1v1? Tofu, Dino. All right, um, here you go. You got, you got like two minutes to gamba. Go nuts. Go nuts. Do, 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 do. Remember to trap everything. True. True, dude. You're right. I need to trap everything because I am trapper after all. And that's what we do is we trap everything. True. I need to like, dude, I need to ditch some of this like, let me just like get rid of that shit for now, I guess. Or I can, actually, I guess I can keep this up and then that way if the people that are doing the overlay want to like 
I don't know, do some dumb trolley shit they can, right? I like keeping that up, so that way, like, like whoever's doing overlay for the day, if they want to just be a fucking troll, they can be a troll if they want to, you know? That's fine with me. Hiya, 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 hiya. Hiya. Bum, 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 na, na, na. You should run Shadowborn one set to see how it is. And then stare at the firecracker? Man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. See, the problem is, is that there's no way, like, especially on a killer like Trapper, there's no way that it's better than, like, Bamboozle or Brutal. Like, I feel like that's something you would do on a killer like Demo, you know? Where, like, you might not really need either one of those perks. Even there, I think, I think Bamboozle is probably better. But, like, to me, Shadowborn feels like a perk you'd run on, like, someone that, like, isn't, like, you know... I don't know. Someone that, like, doesn't really need those perks as much. I know he's going to hold that window, but yeah, I, was, I was hoping I can get him to maybe second guess his life a little bit, but no. No luck. Maybe he ran by the window and didn't think about it, but nope. He's too smart. He's too smart. He's not going to fuck up his check spots. Fucking dino, bro. I kind of want to... I think I want to zone him back towards bottom. I think even forcing his live here is good, right? He could live towards bottom. He'll probably take water tower, but I think that's fine. Actually, there's no water tower. It's logs. Never mind. Because what? Because what's he have down here? He has like a filler here, and then he has like... That's basically it, right? I want to make him loop the whole way around back shack. I think. He'll still have this filler, though. So I think that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I think we can play this. I think we can play this. There's not really much around here. Oh, good vault. You cheeky fucker. You cheeky fucker. I thought I could bloodlust hit him. He was playing it kind of close. I think even if he goes around this, it's fine. Or is it fine? I think it's fine. Oh, I gotta, I got, dude, I gotta try to fucking bloodlust through this pilot. See, I think he can watch cross here, which is not great. No, no, that son of a bitch. No, that son of a bitch. He's too good. Dino's just too fucking good. He's too goddamn talented. He's so goddamn handsome and talented. I still want to keep him bottom side if I can. See, I thought he would run there and not vault. It's interesting. What? Oh, he walked to it. I see. I got real confused. Bro, he's a juicer! He's juicing! Oh my god, we're almost at three minutes and I haven't hit him yet? Holy fuck. Dino, chill, brother. Oh. Dino, chill, man. If I can keep him bottom side, he should die quick. Interesting. I actually got stuck. I was trying to double that one back, but I got stuck. Yeah, he wants to get out of bottom side. Bro, I kind of failed that Ormond pilot. Holy. -na 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 -na. I could have swung at that. I could have swung. I could have been a swinger. Bro, no. You stop this right now. How am I letting him get away with all this? How am I doing this? How, how is he getting away with it all? No, no, no. Ah! Fine. It's fine. Four minutes, dude. We can beat that. It's fine. We can beat that. Four minutes. Easy peasy. We can beat that shit. We're not going to beat that shit. We're not going to beat that shit. We can beat that shit. Easy peasy, dude. It's fine. It's fine, dude. It's fine. Are you allowed to use your abilities? Not on Trapper. No, not on Trapper. 
Yeah, him, him, him breaking blood loss on the on the uh, jungle gym was fucking nasty. That was very, very good. Uh, bro, I don't even have good characters to pick. What is this? Am I like default skins too? Oh no, this is so gross. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ba -na 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 Wait, do I have like the other default skins I can pick? I can I can have a flannel. I can have a flannel. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Yeah, we clocked that one in 10 hours. Yeah, yeah, we clocked that one in 10 hours. Easy peasy. Bro, Dino's a juicer, dude. Dino, yo, fucking Dino's nuts. Like, why is Dino so so goddamn nuts at the game? He's just super cracked. You pick Neo over Dwight? Yeah, Dwight's dude, like the male characters are just too bulky. They're just way too bulky. Like, they kind of drive me nuts, I don't know. Like, they feel, like, awkward and uncomfortable, you know? Doot, 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 doot. Doot, 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 doot. Doot, doot. Oh, my bottom side is pretty fucking dead. Ba -ba -da -da -ba 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 -ba. There's no filler there, is there? Wow, that sucks. Oh, that's actually really bad. I don't have a pallet gym. You're doing ones? We're doing ones with Dino while we're just waiting for the next teams to be ready, basically. That filler has to be there, right? With, with how dead this bottom side is, that, that filler has to be there. The question is, is do I go to that filler in the corner? Or do I not? Because I think if I go to that filler in the corner, I just get zoned, right? Like, I surely get zoned. Right? Like, look at that shit. Well, actually, is this pallet? This is pallet. This is not pallet. Yeah, I get zoned if I go there. Fuck. Alright, whatever. Fuck it. Let's do it. Yeah, I think I just have to use Shaq and then try to make it top side because our bottom side's fucking dead. It's like super dead. <laughs> he tried to get the greedy hit. If he doesn't break that, that's actually okay with me too. Because we can keep that up for later. Is there any way I can vault this without... No, yeah, I can, I, I can keep my lab up. I, I can just not vault this. Now we solve our live, they make it up to top side. I think we just gotta go like really far top, cause like we have nothing down here. We don't got shit down here. We got to go. This filler's here. Is that filler over there too? It is. Interesting. Do I make that? I don't think I do make that. I think I gotta try to win a 50 50 here. Nice. Oh, that was really good. I think he swings at it though. I'm gonna go back to main. He bams it again. We have a filler over here too. I think we could use this filler, then maybe try to bail back to. There's another. Well, there's another filler over there too. Holy hell! The problem here is that we're sorta zoned. Sorta. Oh. Boop, 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 boop. Don't zone me, don't- stop it, stop it, don't zone me, fucker. Dude, dude, what's the time to be? Like four minutes or some shit? I think I'm zoned here, though. Unless...
<laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, his time was just too good, dude. His time was way too good. I think, like, I think me letting him break the blood vessel on me at the jungle gym, though, like, I... It, <sighs> I think I think had I gotten the hit on the jungle gym, maybe we would have had it. But his time was just way too good. All right, all right. The fucking Dino Believers are getting paid. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. Dino Believers getting paid, baby. Um. What now? <laughs> what now? Do we do a different killer? I don't know. I I can only do default killers though. I can't do any DLC at all. Wraith, brother. Oh god, I'm so bad at Wraith. But let's do it. I'm really fucking bad on this set. Guys, definitely, like, I feel like I, I feel like I, if we sat here and ran ones over and over again, I feel like I can probably beat Dino on Trapper ones, maybe sometimes. I don't know. I probably won't do well on the Wraith ones. I'm so bad at Wraith ones. I don't know why. I just can't do it. Like, I'm incapable. I'm so fucking incapable, dude. So, like, don't, don't, don't bet on me this time around, okay? Unless, I don't know, unless you're risking it for a big payout. I don't know. I mean, in, in which case, go nuts. Are you allowed to use your exhaustion twice if you manage to get it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What have you done to Dino? Why is it always beating up on you? <laughs> Yo, look, it's consensual beating up on me, though, okay? All right? Look, like, I'm asking for it. I'm asking to get beat up by him, all right? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Play a survivor game on on the uh, scrim account. I'm actually, I'm actually, I actually don't want to do that because I kind of want to keep this account like actually purely fresh, on the off chance that like maybe, uh, someday I want to do one of those like, I don't know, like unranked to fucking I don't know, or like hardcore challenges or whatever the fuck you know. I did do the tutorials. Yeah, but I think that's fine. It doesn't actually change like your elo or anything, right? Like, I don't want to, like, fuck with, like, the MMR or anything. Wait, what am I doing? I kind of forgot what we were doing. I don't want to fuck with, like, the MMR or anything, you know? Hardcore? Yeah. Also, yeah, Tyro, I, I agree, man. It, it is cool. It is cool to see. Yeah, like, the game feels so different now, you know? Uh. Eh. Eh. Okay. Um. Uh, sure. Yeah, you know what? Sure. Do 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 Damn I almost biffed that too dude. I almost figured he fucked it. That was pretty risky, but we got away with it, which is good. Problem here is that these tiles are ass. <laughs> ah, that's a wall. No, no, no. I thought this filler was here, but it wasn't. Oh no. Oh no, I thought the filler was here, but it wasn't. Hiya! Hey Tina, thanks for the resub 11 months. Welcome back. Uh anonymous gifter, thanks for the lady here. Uh uh Lady Amrish with the sub. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good to be back in gamer. I should have saw the double vault coming and stayed on the outside of the uh long wall. That's what I should have did. That's what I that's what I done should have did. Yep, 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 yep. I should have stayed on the outside of the long wall. That's what I should have did. Yep, 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 yep. I also had a bunch of strong tiles bottom side that I just ran away from. I think I, I kind of just played that dumb in like every way. I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. I feel like when I play against Wraith, my brain just like falls apart. I don't know why. My brain just like ceases existing every time I play against Wraith. I don't know what it is. It's just like something about this killer. You know? It just happens. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are we doing 1v1? Uh, for a particular reason? Because we're ahead of schedule. 
basically the next team the next teams that are up are not ready yet like our schedule right now is dude look it gives me the tutorial that's interesting the uh, next teams that are up is despair versus dingatrons and they are not ready yet uh i think i think dingatrons was ready maybe but i think despair was not ready like they're scheduled for 10 p.m but it's like 9 p.m so we're kind of just buying time and waiting for them to be ready essentially so yeah we're i'm just fucking around doing ones with dino Beats. Beats. Wraith feats. I miss I miss my 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 fucking smiley face on my toe. Oh wait, where is he? He's outside. Wait, which side are you taking? Wait, wait, what's time to be? 129 basically? This is where you scream Ghostface versus the team that's already ready. True, dude. That's what I should be doing. That's what I should. I've never played Ghostface in a scrim before. It sounds like it'd be kind of fun, to be honest with you. That sounds like it just left. Ow. Ow, man. You better not go main with all that distance. Hey! hey, hey! Dude, I don't know why I always fall for that. Like the like the fucking fake respect always gets me. I've seen I've had like a million people do it to me and I just still always fall for it. I think this is fine because that it's bamboozled. So you won't be able to go back into it. This will force him to a filler. Problem is, is this will probably get unbamboozled. Yeah. This was dumb, right? This was dumb. Yeah, this was dumb. I thought I was cooking something, but I'm burning down the entire fucking kitchen is what I'm doing. Like, I thought I was cooking something up, but there's like, there, 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 there's really nothing being cooked here. That's his live. Oh, I fucking misclicked. It didn't actually vault that right away. It took me like an extra second. This should be a hit, though. Oh my. Tell me why that almost juked me and worked. <laughs> Bro, I, I did not expect the fucking rhinoceros tech. You know what I mean? Good block. Good block. Oh, I actually almost managed to slip by him there, but not quite. Yo, I kicked that shit. What are you talking about? Uh. Hi -ya. Ah. What do you make that noise? Uh, that's just the sound of me playing killer in DBD. What do you mean? That's just that's just my DBD killer sounds. I just go ah, sometimes, you know? Honestly, maybe we should just do Wraith sets. Because I feel like I could, I could probably use the Wraith set practice, you know? Like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty dog at the Wraith set. Like, I feel like I could probably, I could probably, I could probably use the practice here. If we play, uh, play Ghostface, it's such a fun set. Like, you, I, well, actually, I can't because I'm, I'd have to switch accounts. I'd have to, like, go back on my main for it. Which I guess I, like, hypothetically I could, but, like, I don't know, man. That's so much work, you know? That's so much work. Getting on my main, getting everything ready, going back on this account afterwards. Like, oh, uh, you know. Why are you on an alt? I'm on an alt so that way we could actually, like, fill up the friends list with people from Scrim Nights without flooding my main account's friend list. Like, this friends list is just stuffed full of Scrim gamers. Like, I, I don't know if I have room for all these people in my normal friends list. So being lazy it's not even really being lazy i feel like by the time we like got it set up and did one game we'd probably i'd probably already have to go back to my other account you know it's like not even necessarily laziness as much as it's like i just don't think it's worth the time investment like we might be able to start this next match before 10 right like as soon as they're ready i think we're ready to start so like we're kind of just doing ones and waiting for them to like tell us that they're ready i mean fuck it let's run it back dino fuck it let's go Run it back. Let's go. We'll just do more Wraith. Fuck it. Fuck it. It's kind of like I said, I, I need practice on Wraith anyway. 
Bum, 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 na, 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 na. Yeah, here, I'll give you guys a, 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 another prediction, too. Here you go. Go nuts. Hey, Dilbert, can you win this time? <laughs> I'll get him one of these times. Don't you worry. I'll get him one of these times. One of these times, trust me. He'll, he'll, he'll get it. Smack Dino for me, please. I got you, Ray. I got you. Give him the WS. <laughs> oh, shit. Will do, dude. Will do. Oh, it's like all he has is this one god. This god. Wow, his his map's actually kind of shit. Oh, wait, there's a Paladin here. That's not bad. Still, honestly, not the greatest map for him. Does he want Palette side or do you want. Oh, I think he's, I think he's exploring. He's exploring. Bump, banana, bump, 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 bump. Pal's on? Oh, he just went through. Okay. Touche. Yeah, he just bailed. I'm over there mind gaming myself. This motherfucker is in Narnia. He hasn't been there for fucking three years. That's live. What? He just the W the W key is insane. The W key is insane. I didn't even hear him running. I thought I would hear him sprinting. I didn't even hear him. Bro, he fucking he just he, he fucking ran on his tiptoes out of there. Holy shit! I wasn't sure if that was claimed or not. I was too afraid that that wasn't actually claimed. It just like he's going around. So I feel like I can kind of zone him with that. Uh, I guess not. Not not enough. He's still decently zoned, right? No, not zoned enough. He's so fucking good. God damn it, Dino. Did this filler spawn? It did. Like, I think I shouldn't cloak here, right? So I think this is where I just, like, utilize having bloodlust. See, like, I want to try to punish this, this this greed, but it's fucking Monka. He's going to want to transition this, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think with us having bloodlust, I think we just stay in it until we get a hit, yeah? He broke it? What? Dino's so insane. What the fuck? It shouldn't be a playable tile. Bro, he's just fucking insane. He's actually so good. This goddamn dinosaur, bro. He's fucking next level. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm playing these tiles. I'm not not playing these tiles, dude. I know these tiles are playable and I'm not going to, I'm not just kicking them. I refuse. No, 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 no. I will learn to fucking play these tiles. I don't give a shit. Nice. I think I, I could have literally swung at that, but I just like didn't even believe myself. I just didn't even believe myself that it was actually possible. I was like, nah, I know I can't. Ba -na 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 Only three to only three thirty, dude. It's fine. It's fine, dude. Only three thirty. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Bro, Dino is fucking cracked. Why is he so cracked? This motherfucker is so good. What the hell, Dino? What the fuck are they feeding you, man? Holy shit, that's just crazy. All right, we just gotta beat three thirty. That's fine. That's totally fine, dude. That's totally fine. We can do that. We're not gonna do that. That's totally fine, though. We can totally do that. It's fine.
He does this to everyone, to be fair. Yeah, he's fucking nuts, dude. That is really... He, he's, he's just so fucking good. I don't get it. I don't get it, dude. This man's just, like, gifted with, like, the fucking looping powers of gods. It's, it's, it's absurd. Ah, wings and melons. <laughs> is that all he eats? Wings and melons? Hey, that sounds, like a, that sounds like a winner's diet right there, dude. I like it. I, I respect it. I still get mixed up because, like, I remember people telling me that, like, with Wraith... A lot of times you should be not cloaking, especially if they're like at playable tiles. You know what I mean? But I feel like I'm like, I feel like now I'm doing the opposite where now I feel like I'm not cloaking enough, you know? I feel like I can't find the balance. Bow, 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 bow. Wait, is that a pallet gym into a jungle gym? No, that's into an Ormond tile, I see. Like a shitty Ormond tile. Wait, does that mean there's a jungle gym over yonder? No, there just is or no. No, there just is no jungle gym. Sad. Sad, 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 sad. Sad, 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 sad. Oh. Oh. Fucking sad. Okay. Uh alright, sure. I see, I see, I see. Bum 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 ba na 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 na. You last longer if you played Dwight or Claude, you think? Bum 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 I appreciate that he's testing my check spots at least, you know what I mean? Like I like I, like, I like that, I appreciate that. The pallet kinda sucks against Wraith over here. He doesn't know where I went. What am I doing, dude? I kinda fumbled. I kinda fumbled there. I don't know what the fuck I was doing, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was gonna go to that LT wall, then I was like, wait, LT wall is not good though. LT wall equals bad. Didn't even blind him. Life sucks. Hmm. We ain't got much to work with here, do we? Ah! Ah! Damn. Unfortunate. I think I should have ran to the middle filler. Probably is what I should have did. That's probably what I done. Should have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably went to the middle filler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably what I should have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Why doesn't Dova just open the exegate? Is he throwing? True. What's wrong with him? Why is he not, why, why is he not just jumping in the hatch? Like, is he dumb? Does he not know that he can just jump in the hatch? Wait, they said we're ready, whatever. That was Dingatrons. Uh, I think we're waiting on the other team, right? Yeah, we're still waiting on Despair. Okay. So Dingatrons are ready. So one out of two teams are ready. We're just waiting on the other. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You paid the four lane well? Thank you, Ben. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't think I played the God Rock well. I don't really know. I'm still not really sure what to do with God Rock against Wraith. Like, I like he started uncloaking at it, and I just like threw it, and then he kicked it, and then we moved on. And I feel like I can get more than that, right? But I also don't like. I can't run to the outside of it, right? Like, if I run to the outside of it, then he uncloaks from the inside and I get hit basically right like I gotta win a really hard 50 50 don't I or is that actually doable I should just try I should just try knowing it's a bad idea I'm just curious to see what happens because like who knows like maybe maybe it will work in some way I don't know like for instance here like I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean like this tile like if I'm running up on this tile with him cloaked like I probably can't run out here and hold this, right? Like, maybe I could. Like, maybe I could and just, like, use, like, the top of his head to kind of see which way he's going and react. I feel like I'd have to react to that really fast, though. And I feel like I'm too old, dude. I'm too boomer. 
I think I'm too boomer to react to that fast enough. I think if I was like 10 years younger, I can probably do that. <laughs> I didn't get a jungle gym again, dude. Yo, these fucking the spawns are rigged. Where, where the fuck's my jungle gyms? I don't even think I got a pallet gym. I think all my maze tiles are dookie. Rigged. Rigged. It's rigged. Do, 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 do. No, I did, I did get value out of uh, Windstorm. In fact, that's literally how I killed him was Windstorm. Like, if I didn't have Windstorm, I wouldn't have been able to catch him in that jungle gym. See, like, I don't react fast enough to that. I want to try again. I don't even care. I'll just die here. I don't even give a fuck. I've seen someone do this, and I feel like it should work, maybe? Oh my god, what am I doing? I still make that side, but like... I kinda just wanna get the fuck away from here. I wanna get the fuck away from here. There's no path. Oh, I do have a jungle gym. Yo, I do have a jungle gym. Let's go. <clears throat> guys, I lagged. Uh, guys, I lagged. Uh, uh, man. Uh, um, <clears throat> I lagged, guys. Uh, Dino, did you feel that packet loss or what? Like, you felt that, right? Like, that, the server was dying, right? The server died. We all felt it. Like, we all felt it. There was some server lag. Um, Look, man, I thought the last thing that motherfucker did was gonna, like, I thought the last thing he was gonna do was just swing at that jungle gym pallet like a psycho. You know what I mean? Like, bro, I was like, there's no way, right? Also, I still don't know. I still don't know. Like, is playing that God Rock the way that I was thinking about, is that actually viable? Like, is that actually doable? I don't know, man. I'm going against a lot of EU. I've just been swinging. That's fair. That's pretty fair. Cause like I still don't know, man. I feel like I, I feel like I can maybe go around the outside of it and use it. He got two of them in a row right here. Like I feel like you can go outside of it and use it, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. You were holding the wrong check spot, yeah. I'm curious, like where I should stand and hold it. Look, if he's uncloaking inside, where do I go? You know, I don't know. Maytag, thanks for the eight months, by the way. Uh, uh, uh skeptical. Thanks for the thirty-seven months, man. Appreciate you guys. Gonna do this preemptively, just not fucking deal with it, you know? No! I was I fuck, I'm throwing. I'm I'm fucking throwing so hard. Holy shit. How is it possible for one man to throw as hard as I throw? I was told you would reach with Swift Hunt. I was lied to. It's fine. Actually. Do, 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 do. No, 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 no. Not the resilience. Oh, if I swing there earlier, do I get it? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I was trying to play around that fucking check spot on the front of the car, but I don't think I did it correctly. I think he went to the filler, didn't he? I think this should be enough to zone, maybe? But maybe not. No, it's not. Pain. <laughs> Fuck, I think he makes it to main too, though, right? I, th I See, I think I could be playing this better in some way. I just don't really know how. Like, I feel like there's got to be something I could be doing here better, you'd think. Uh, 
Damn, how do you, I can't believe you vacuumed that. <laughs> I guess I could have did like a clone mind game here the first time too, right? The patience of this man. Holy. He's so patient. God, how, how, how does a dino get so patient? That's crazy. All, the, all that waiting for the asteroid, bro. He's fucking wait, 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 waiting for the wraith, too. He's crazy. Built into his blood. My lord. Yo, Cheeto, thanks for the reset. Welcome back. Uh, 16 months. Is that what that is? 16 months. Good to have you back in. Appreciate support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. All right. That's, 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 that's another win for dino. I think he's like 3-0 on the wraith set. Here, uh, let me give you another one. Here you go. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. There you go. Perfect. All right. One more. One more. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. But you still very, very lost. I know I very lost, okay? I fucking know I very lost. You don't gotta tell me, man. I'll get up one of these times. You wait. You wait, man. Just you wait. Just you wait. Like, the people that are that, uh, that are betting on me, like all the believers, uh, yo, yo, they're gonna get paid off big. Just you wait. Just you wait. They're gonna get paid off real big. It's all for the long con, you know? All for the long con. I'm so mad because like I should have had a hit on him in like 10 seconds that last game because he kind of doofed up early, but then I didn't even take advantage of his doof up because I doofed up back. Like he like I like I like he doofed and then I doofed his doof and then we both doofed and then and then he got away with it. I mean I still did get a hit pretty early, but you, you, you know you, you, you feel me. Do 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 do. Wait, why is music playing? That's weird. Stop that. See, like now, now he's making tofu style plays. Like that, yo, that right there was a tofu play. That, like, I, I, I feel like that's the kind of shit I do. Where I'm like, wait, do I leave? Do I not leave? I don't know. And then you end up doing nothing, and then you feel like a doof. I kind of just want to force him to vault here just to get his life. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Damn, actually, he was already leaving. I could have maybe just caught him on his way out, but no luck. Oh, he's actually waiting for the bamboozle, huh? I thought he'd pre-leave, but he was waiting for the bamboozle. the fucking the swing baby the swing all right see that's a beatable time if i just don't dupe up you know like if i just don't doof up and just don't be a dingus then that's a beatable time maybe maybe possibly i don't know we'll see we kind of got lucky that he doofed up a little bit but we'll take it Is Wraith only allowed one perk? Every killer is only allowed one perk. Other than like, like certain killers like like uh, like like, like uh, S tiers like Nurse and Blight are allowed no perks. I clicked the pallet drop and it got me killed. Yeah, I think if you greeted it, you'd, you you would have actually been fine, which is kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Pain, dude. Fucking pain. Getting better compared to your two, 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 two to three minutes average. I mean, to be fair. You say getting better, but I feel like that was just kind of dino fucking up a little bit. You know what I mean? But I do think like the more like I think getting better is more like finding. I think as long as I'm putting him in positions where he can fuck up more, that's really that's really the idea behind it. Like the whole the whole point behind playing playing killer in a set like this is just like finding places to give your opponents a chance to fuck up, as opposed to just like you know kicking every pallet and moving on. And I don't know. I mean, I feel like maybe I'm getting a little bit better at that. Maybe. Possibly. I didn't even explore top side. Whatever. I'll just figure it out later. I'll figure it out as we go. Fuck it. I'll probably, run, I'll probably end up running into a dead zone and dying and then getting mad about it, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out on the fly. Fuck it. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> he full sent that shit too, dude. Oh, we actually do have a rock up there. That's interesting. Does he have, oh, does he have Shadow Dance, actually? That's interesting. Huh. Dude, dude, dude. Yeah, he definitely does have Shadow Dance. <laughs> he just full sends it. I don't, I don't, I don't have the dino patience. I'm sorry. This is also pretty fucking stupid of me. I, I actively know it's stupid, and here I am doing it anyway. Dude, Dino's such a fucking psycho. I don't think we'll be able to play this without Windstorm, right? I don't think. I mean, it was fucking close, dude. Dude, 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 dude. Problem now is I don't, I don't know where the fillers are. Like, what do I have beyond this? I don't know. I have main. There's got to be something over here on this top left, right? You'd think. There is. There's a dog shit filler. Dog shit filler, I'm so happy to see you right now, buddy. Never been happier to see this dog shit filler before. I'm not breaking bloodlust though. Okay, never mind, I just did. Harder to play than I like think it is. I think. Like I always, I always imagined this palette was like very killer sided, but you know, maybe it's not. Cause I'm not even that good at Survivor, and I feel like I'm still able to hold it pretty well. Like he's bloodlusting now, so I think I'm dead. But like I always thought that this palette was like a more free hit for killer than I think it actually is. Cause I'm not, again, I'm not even like the best Survivor, and I feel like I'm, I was able to hold that for a while. So like, I don't know. That's interesting. So like, I feel like every time I make it to that killer as, or every time I make it to that killer, every time I make it to that pallet as killer, I'm always like, oh yeah, dude, let's go. I'm just going to sit here and play this until I get a hit. But maybe I shouldn't do it. Because like, yeah, because that wasn't like, I don't know. That wasn't like necessarily very free. So i close sooner at the, at the eye filler. Yeah, that one was dude. I think you could have probably had me at the eye filler. That was so close. Yeah, that was so, so close. Yep, 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 yep. It's not God filler, but it's not free either. Yeah, it honestly feels like it's pretty like it's not it's not a God palette, but it feels like it's like especially like with Resi up, it feels like the survivor has like like 90% control there or something, you know, like I feel like it's like, it does. It feels like low enough that I feel like you shouldn't play it for very long, you know? Which is interesting because I didn't know that. I usually played against that one. I usually played that every chance I could. Who's the next? The the next matchup is uh, Despair versus Dingatrons. It's going to be Billy Nemes or sorry, yeah, uh, Billy Nemi and then Demo as the tiebreaker. So that's going to be the 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 next and also final matchup of the night. Sorry, not final. Next to final. Sorry, I lied. Um, next one and then we'll have one more after. My bad. My bad. My bad. With Rezio on the same ping, it's relatively, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a relatively safe. Yeah, it did seem pretty safe. Like, it does feel like it's like, I don't know if you can like necessarily check spot it, but like, it feels like you can probably just play around it without check spots and do fine. Wow. My, my map feels actually crazy strong this time. Let's see. Let's see how I managed to fuck this one up. Because this map actually feels quite good. Melon's team? Yeah, dude. 
That's right, the Dingatrons. The Trons of the Dinga variety. I don't trust him, he's gonna swing or do some psycho shit. What's he up to, dude? He's freaking me out, man. That doesn't even get him, does it? Life sucks. <laughs> that was too greedy. Do 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 do. What am I doing? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> sometimes I do. Sometimes I swear. I'm just like, again, I, I said it earlier. Whenever Dino did it, I was like, oh, yeah, he did a tofu move. I'm telling you, sometimes I just do this thing where like, again, it's it's the same thing I do with Blight. It's, it's Blight and Wraith. Every time I get a little bit of distance on a killer, I'm always just like, hold W. But then I'll like, they, but then they'll catch up in like half a second. And I'm like, wait a minute, holding W is actually not good here. And then I'll panic. I'm telling you, Wraith and Blight are my kryptonites, dude. Like, they're my kryptonites. Because I feel like I I just, like, instinctually want to use distance, right? Like, if I know I have a little bit of distance, I'm just, like, instinctually just like, okay, use that distance and run. But, like, it just gets me killed against these killers. It happens to me all the time. All the time. It's wild. I don't get it. It's crazy. No scrims? No, we're waiting for the next team to be ready. We're, we're like, very far ahead of schedule. Maybe I should, uh... Maybe I should put that somewhere up on the screen, by the way. I don't know. Um... What's this normally say? Uh, waiting on next teams. There we go. And then we just, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. He's got a weird half ding swing thing going on. I don't know. I don't even know what you mean by that, but I kind of love half ding swing thing. Half ding swing thing? Like, that's fucking great. I feel like that should be like the name of my of, of a fucking band, dude. Half ding swing thing. The good old half swing ding thing. You know, the half swing ding thing. You know what I mean? The half swing ding thing. Do 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 do. Eh. Yeah. I guess I should. St I, at least, I at least I just want to stay unclogged long enough that he wanted to fast vault and use his live. I just want to get that used up at least. Fucking Dino is so good, dude. Holy shit, he's so good. <laughs> this motherfucker, dude. <laughs> He's so fucking good. I hate this motherfucker, dude. God, I hate him. Fuck him and all of his skill and his talent. Oh, he's actually doubling back to go to the... This feels a bit risky, but he actually gets away with it. Shit. I mean, does he? Oh, we won that one too, baby. We somehow won that one too, I think. <laughs> Dude, he's so fucking, he's so patient though. You win so many 50-50s on me. Like, holy fuck. Like, some of the 50-50s you win on me are just so nasty. They're so gross. Oh my lord. Um, alright. I think I technically won that one, right? Like, I think I won by like 10 seconds. Right? So, believers are getting paid. I kind of got lucky that Dino didn't really run to any, like, super safe tiles, you know? Um... Well, I don't know. Maybe he didn't have any, like any jungle gems or anything. I just accidentally unfollowed. I promise it was a mistake. How dare you? Wow. Hey, hello, brand new viewer. Following following from, from 42 seconds ago. Well, hey, you must be brand new to the stream. Hi, hello, welcome in. Ladama Boba. Hmm. Hey, welcome in. Good to have you. You must be brand new here.
Wait, did I give you guys another one? No, I didn't. Here. Here's 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 another one. My bad. Do 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 There's 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 a silicon form of some kind, dude. I should oh fuck. I should have sold I should have sold out the uh, silicon form more last game, cause dude Mirage played last game and they were a silicon form team and dude they're fucking nuts. They're like so good. That was like the perfect opportunity to sell it out. Hey, if you guys want to try scrim, I should probably I should, I should probably wait until we're actually doing scrims, cause like, if, if I'm like doing ones on stream and then it's, it seems like probably a bad time to sell it out. I shouldn't. I don't want to give them window. So let me do. He probably just vaults us with live, right? Yeah. Oh, jungle gym though. Shit. I think I actually will just zone him here. I know this is technically the wrong way, but I want to keep him away from the jungle gym and top side, I think. Because I think it's more dead down here. Do I even need to hook up here? I, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, no, I definitely do. I think this pallet's not safe, though. I'm pretty sure this pallet's actually hella dangerous against Wraith. Yeah. Unless that fucking happens. What the fuck? How did that happen? How did that blind me? I wasn't even looking at it. You're bullshitting me, dude. You are bullshitting me. Bruh. Bruh. I was not even looking at that thing, bro. You are lying. You are lying. I wasn't even near it. You're fucking lying to me. You're a liar, man. Damn, I thought I'd, I thought, I thought I'd catch him slipping. I can't believe I got blinded by that. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, I was too busy laughing and I wasn't paying attention to where you were. Ouchie. Ouchie. No, everyone's puntos. No, all of their puntos. Ba -da 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 -na 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 -na. I thought he would vault the window, but he didn't. And I gave him the filler. Just kidding, it didn't spawn. Da -da 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 Not the puntos. Oh, the puntos, they're all done. Say farewell to the puntos. <laughs> I can't even help but just fucking laugh, though. That firecracker. Holy, dude. Holy, that was so clutch. I, you know, I'm still going to go ahead and say that I disagree with it, you know? I don't agree. I don't agree that I was looking at it. I think I was looking some other direction. Oh, did you blind yourself, too? <laughs> you got it. Dude, you blinded everybody. You literally just, like, fucking EMP'd the whole map, apparently. We all just, like, lost fucking vision and hearing and everything for, 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 for like, three seconds. That was crazy. You somehow managed to still get the vault, though, even while blind, so that's kind of nice. Is there scrims tonight? Yes. As you can see by this text, hold on, maybe it's not big enough. As you can see by this text, we're currently waiting on the next teams. Um, I don't know if you saw it or not. But we're currently waiting on the next teams. So, um, yeah, there is scrims tonight. We're just filling time because we're waiting on the next teams, you see. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Tobu. I'm legally blind. God damn it! Now I feel like an asshole. God damn it! Fucking Christ! Why is everything gotta go terribly for me? God damn, nothing can just go right, you know? I can't just make a joke and have it be funny. I can't win in ones. Oh my god, I just can't do, everything's just going terrible. Oh wait, what's over here? There's no fillers over there, is there? Scary. Scary. Okay, cool. Uh, I think I see what I should do here. I understand. Alright, let's do it. I'm just gonna run to this filler. Maybe this is dumb, who knows, I don't know. Maybe it's not dumb, maybe it is dumb, who knows. Like, can I hold this? This feels way too brave, right? I think that's a 50-50. That's dumb, I shouldn't do that. Okay, you know, I wanted to try something, but I shouldn't have tried something. 
Again, every time I think I'm cooking, I'm actually just burning down the whole house. Ba -na -da -na 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 -na. Bum, 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 bum. I can't blind him, bro. He's unblindable. Don't hold me up here. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it, man. Stop it. Is there a pallet here? Fuck! Shit! Fuck! Fuck! Shit! Fuck! No! Why was there no pallet there? God damn it. Why was that filler not there? That's some bullshit. It's because this fucking four land spawned close to it. Pain. Life sucks. Life sucks, man. Is Array going up against anyone? No, Array's not playing today. Unfortunately. We will not have any Array gamer today. Um, Still peeking in Discord. So yeah, right now, Dingatron's just sitting in, in, uh, in call. They're ready to go. Uh, we're just waiting on the other team to show up. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. The team Despair is who we're waiting on. Yes, 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 yes. But Dingatrons is ready, so as soon as uh, as soon as the spare shows up, we're gonna be good to go. We're gonna be good to go. Quickly, be filling for a team. Yeah, you'll get you'll, you'll get in there. I think actually the only blight set we had today is already gone, so you missed it. You missed your chance, man. You missed out. What's up, Hop? Scrims are going good, man. Scrims are going good. We've had some good matchups today. I mean, both of our both of our first two sets were two O's, but they were like good two O's. You know, like they were good solid sets. So I think these last ones are gonna be nice too. We have a good variety of killers today too. It's actually kind of sick. It's been a good day. A good solid day. Uh. Uh. Ha. Oh. Uh. Ew. 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 Gross. Ew. Disgusting. I don't like it. All right, whatever. We'll see, we'll see what we can do. I don't know how I'm going to get out of bottom side without getting hit. I think I'm pretty much guaranteed to take a hit before leaving bottom side, right? Like, I don't think there's any way for me to avoid it at this point. He swung in the basement. He's a fucking psychopath. But maybe. Maybe we can find a way. Oh, maybe this is our way out. Aha, that's our way out. Huzzah. Eureka. Where the fuck even is he? Eureka, we've lost him. There he is. Huzzah, huzzah! I throw. I slow vault. Wait, he didn't even come this way. Is he going that way? Dude, he's crazy. Bro, he's crazy. That's actually a really good play, though, because I have nowhere to go now, right? That didn't blind him. I'm hit. Ow! I maybe should have pre-ran the other way, right? That probably would have been smart. That would have been a smart way to go about that, right? Ba -na 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 -na. I still have lithe. I think that means I can play this filler and then maybe use the lithe at the shitty LT walls or something. I don't know. Oh, he went for it. He wanted to send it. But like, where am I even going to go with this lithe? I don't know. I don't even know where any pals are, dude. Like, do I even have anything? Let's go somewhere. Hiya. But this might kill me, though. This might be a dead tofu. Is there a filler here? There is. Do, do, do. Is this too greedy? I, maybe not.
That broke Chase at least for a second. Ooh. No, that's been too much. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, God damn it. I'll dig it though. I'll dig it. Whatever. I guess I, I still did pretty good. I'd, I'd say. What's up, Grandpa? How's it going? Hello, hello. You hope you have a good night yourself. Bump, 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 bump. Dude, honestly, fuck ladder. I should just do rapid fire fucking ones with Dino on like every character, like every fucking killer. This motherfucker, like, I, he's just, he's actually just like nuts at everybody. Like, I should just fucking do rapid fire ones with Dino on like every killer possible. Despair and VC? Oh, they are. Okay, okay. We'll play this one out real quick. And then I think after this, I think we should be ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know we, yeah, I know we did blight ones before. Like, it's honestly. Yeah, it's it's very very nice. I feel like you're at that level where you're like Like you're basically just like better than me at like every <laughs> This sounds like I'm trying to be self-deprecating, but I'm just being honest. Okay, Dino Dino's a grinder So he's gotten really fucking good really fast But Dino's just like better at me at like every like set by like that like perfect level where I feel like I can learn right like, I feel like he's not demolishing me so much to the point where I'm like, Oh my god, I have no chance. I don't even know if anyone would really do that anymore. I feel like I've gotten somewhat okay lately. But I feel like you're, like you're definitely, like, better at me at every set to the point where I feel like I have a lot to learn from you. So I think it's gonna, I think it's like a perfect matchup. And also it's good ping, which is also nice. So, like, you know, I can argue about good ping. We're just gonna zone him out while while he's using his live. Damn, couldn't claim it. This pilot's like decently unsafe though. Nice. Nice check spot holding. Good shit. Oh, he left. I'm a dumb bitch. I saw a bloodlust though. Oh, he broke it. I can't, bro. I can't. I'm trying to keep him guessing with like bamboozle, but he's just holding it so well. See, I thought he would not vault there thinking I would fake. He's just too smart. I gotta get hit on him here, man. I can't let him play this tile without getting hit. There's no way. Like, there's no way. Okay. We. I'll take that. Like, we just gotta hit on his way out. Like, that's probably best case scenario for him, but as long as I get a hit, I'm still kind of happy with it. No, touche. Touche, man. Touche. Right after this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, just give me another five fucking minutes to catch Diner real quick, and then uh, we can totally go play. Ooh. Close. They should be dead now. Oh! <laughs> Wait, was that enough to get him the win? I don't know. How close were we? I don't even know who won that. <laughs> How do you crowd stick a wraith? <laughs> How do you crowd stick a fucking wraith, dude? <laughs> I don't know. Oh god. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. 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 We're totally fine. It's fine. Um. Oh, did I win? Did I actually win that one too? Let's go. I feel like towards the end I was starting to keep it even a little bit more. I, I, dude, I feel like I, like I actually help, feel like that helped me a lot. Like I feel like I like that helped me be a lot more comfortable in the race set. Like I feel like that did help me by quite a bit. So thank you, Dino. That was that was some very good practice. Dude, the crouch tech kind of did it kind of did work. I mean, I just I think I was I got far enough that I think I claimed the pallet, but like it kind of did work. That was kind of nasty. All right, all right, all right. Sorry, let me get back in. Uh, let, let's get back in scrim mode here. Uh, do 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 do. 
Let me pull up this this jazz. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so up next now is gonna be uh oh wait, let me get rid of the last split too. Sorry. Uh, up next is gonna be the uh, best of three versus uh, of uh, despair versus Dingatrons. It's gonna be Billy first. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the Billy from Team Despair up against the survivors of Dingatrons, and then we're gonna have Nemi on 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 the flip side. Uh, are these are these the same teams that we saw play recently? I remember seeing I remember seeing Despair recently. And did we have them against Dingatrons? Is this like a rematch of the same matchup they had before? Or do we have them against somebody else? I can't remember. But it should be a pretty good matchup. Uh, Dingatrons is basically like Watery Melon and Friends. Um, Despair is a team that we just saw for the first time, I think like the week before last, or maybe even the week before that. But we saw them for the first time semi-recently. And they were a pretty solid team. They were a very, very solid, good team. And this feels like a good matchup. This feels like it can go either way, honestly. I really, I really don't know what to expect here. It's going to be Billy on Blood Lodge. And Billy on Blood Lodge is one of those sets where I feel like it can get really big results. I'm going to get ads out of the way real quick while these guys are loading in. And I'm also going to give you guys a prediction. Oh, wait, you guys already got the prediction. Nice. Um, but yeah, I would expect like possibly big results here from Billy. Uh, on both sides, just because Billy is a very, very strong killer right now. But it really could go either way. I feel like the Billy set kind of feels a little bit like the blight set in a weird way where i feel like it could sometimes play out in very similar ways especially if he gets off to a really good start early although i do think billy might be a little bit more prone to the like weak early game as opposed to blight where blight's almost like i think good blight play is almost always gonna have a faster early game whereas like i think billy early game sometimes can struggle a little more right it, it kind of depends um while while these guys are getting ready to go i'm gonna quickly run to the bathroom real quick so just give me a quick second all right give me one sec i'll be back in just a moment brb one sec All right, all right, all right. Sorry, I'm back. All right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Let's, let's get ready to do it. Let me not be on Survivor, no? Okay, all right, perfect, sick. All right, so Billy set, Blood Lodge. Uh, Alexi's gonna be on Billy. This is also their choice. This is gonna be Despair's choice of killer. So like, if that means anything, um, that should hopefully tell us that they're pretty confident in the set. Their killer should feel pretty good about playing Billy. The Survivor should feel pretty good about playing against it. So, this will hopefully be their set to win, right? This is this is like I think I think when you start out like this, it's gonna be like if Dingatrons can take this set and kind of pull out like a, I guess what's like loosely would be considered an upset considering it's their set, right? Then you can go into your set being up 1-0. So I feel like if you're despair here, you probably would really want to make sure that you get a big result. I think to start to to start this out. Otherwise, you might be in some trouble. So we'll see what they can do. Billy is definitely a very explosive killer. This could be one of those things where you get, he gets a down early and then it snowballs into like big, big things. Or you can kind of struggle, right? I think the early game is going to tell a lot here. I think whoever takes the first chase and how they take it and like what they can do with it is going to play a big role in how this goes. And Blood Lodge is a map that's like pretty dense in pallets, man. Like there's a lot of pallets on this map. So I think there is actually a pretty good opportunity to get a pretty good chase, right? I think the main thing is that like once Billy hits overdrive, that's when it gets a little bit scary. Because I feel like a billion overdrive, even if you're like a god survivor, I feel like they, he just gets so many options, right? There's so many different like things he can go for. 
so that like if you just if you just kind of like don't predict right and he gets like a crazy curve you or something you're just dead so that mixed with you know the the whole like cooldown aspect as well like there's a lot of things like that that gives gives some opportunities to get like what is almost like free not free but give them hits slash downs no matter what the survivor does so we'll see but if they can chain together some good chases early and get some good gen progress done i think this could end up being uh okay for the survivors i'm curious i'm curious what we see for builds too like earlier we saw risk factor running ruin undying pain res and it felt like a really good combo actually like it felt very strong so i'm curious if we see something like that again uh no we're actually going with the more the more standard pop uh pop pain res and bamboozle so i don't hate this i still feel like this is one of those maps where you can maybe get away with no bamboozle right because like, the main building isn't terrible but i also feel like bamboozle is always just nice on billy no matter what right like oh goes for a real crazy curve there but doesn't get it again it's one of those scenarios though where like if you just guess wrong a survivor or something like this happens so there you go down comes through under nancy she didn't feel comfortable staying at that tile and she decided to try to leave with lithe but doesn't make it anywhere and that's a very fast down for alexi like look at this gen progress they're, they're split on three gens but like there's barely any dude there's barely any progress so pain res comes through in this gen and lexi's gonna head right over and find jake here and for some reason chase isn't starting is that is that the bug is there like some bug there with that i don't know why chase wasn't starting with that jake but goes for one quick chainsaw but decides to bail oh no chainsaw even alexi looks surprised alexi's like uh what <laughs> the fuck are you doing here ace hello <laughs> oh no dude that's so unfortunate so down goes ace he's gonna get put on hook that's another pain res nancy did get some distance away though she's she's at least like relatively safe now this car is sliding though you gotta be careful michaela does get away from that though and now what does lexi do go back to hook yes yes is it, oh, this is the Nancy that got the unhook, so this is actually fine too. A fine target. So I think he was going back probably to go after the ace, but like if the Nancy's there too, that's also a mighty fine target to take. Either one's kind of okay. Vault comes through, the bamboozle. Oh, goes for a bit of a late curve, but the cooldown is like non-existent, so you can just immediately down him. And that's so much pressure, that's two people downed. Ace is gonna get put, oh, Ace has DS. Okay, Ace might get away from this. Maybe. He's actually not even going after Nancy. He's actually just going to leave Nancy on the ground. I'm a little surprised. I feel like you maybe just hooked Nancy there. I'm actually surprised you even tried to hook Ace at all. I feel like I feel like after Ace goes down, you probably just hook Nancy. And then you have Ace down for pressure. I think picking up Ace there seemed a little strange, to, 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 like, to be perfectly honest with you. He's going to head back to Nancy now, but they get a gen done. Michaela's going to have a gen done soon, too. He's going after Ace again. This is so interesting. Ace is like actually kind of doing work right now. Like he, he seems like he's afraid to pick. He's afraid to pick up Nancy with Ace lingering, but at the same time, Ace isn't really dying either. They get two gens done. Oh, the chainsaw through the pallet. What is Jake doing here? Oh no! Oh no! no. Like he doesn't get down by the chainsaw. But he's gonna get the fuck out of here without going down. If he if he goes down in the next like two seconds before Watermelon can make it over here. Oh, doesn't quite land that curve. Watermelon is there. He's going to pick up Nancy. That was really close into snowballing into crazy levels. Like, if Jake goes down to that first chainsaw right on top of those two bodies, that's literally just game over right there. Like, that's literally GG right then and there. That was so close. That was, like, literally, like, 4K3 level shit right there. But they do manage to get out of it. Again, Dingatrons are scaring... They're, they're scaring the fuck out of me right now. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Like, there's so many situations right now where they're close to just, like, getting snowballed the whole way to death. But they're just narrowly getting away from it. Goes for a late curve on to Michaela, but she... Not path correctly for it. And I think Alexi wants to secure this kill on Ace now. Seems, seems to be the play. Nancy bails from the unhook. Doesn't actually want to go for it. Jake is doing a gen. And that's really, yeah, I think only Jake's doing a gen at the moment. And at this point, I mean, Alexi just chased Michaela a bit on top left. 
You also just saw Nancy coming in for the save and then bailing, so you probably have a pretty good idea that Jake was the only one doing gens. So I think that's why Alexi is just kind of protecting this hook now, right? I think you have a pretty good idea that there hasn't been that much gen progress. Because you were chasing one survivor, one other survivor was fucking around with the unhook. You could probably just secure this, and you're not going to lose too much for it. So I actually like this play from Lexi a lot. I think this is really smart. Very, very good call there based on what we saw from the survivors. And Ace is dead. And now Michaela's going to be in some trouble in this chase. We'll see, she, we'll see what she can do. Good use of rocks here. Does get M1s. Doesn't really have much to work with here, though, right? Like, I only has this window. Ooh, but making good use of what he has, though. Fakes it, vaults it. Bamboozle not coming through this window, and Watermelon really punishing that and getting at least some time out of it, right? Like, that, like, 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 uh, considering he was looping in what is basically a dead zone, that was a lot, honestly. Like, bought a good bit of time. Maybe enough for this, but probably not. Pain Res will probably interrupt this, unfortunately. If you manage to buy, like, another, like, five or ten seconds worth of time, then, 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 uh, this gen pops. Not even 10, actually, like five seconds more time. Like, like a five seconds more and that gen pops. And this is where it can sometimes get scary, right? Like if Alexi makes it to that gen with pop, which I think he's going to, yeah. This is where it can get a little, again, I said this, I said this earlier and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the same adjective. I think it can get a little bit blighty, <laughs> which is again, it's kind of a weird way to describe it, but it, it resembles the blight set a lot from here, right? Where like, if you're not careful, you can find yourself in this weird situation where the killer is just like, pressuring all over the map he's super mobile and also pretty fucking deadly and you can kind of find yourself just getting hit by pop over and over and over again and sometimes you can struggle to really like get any gen progress going right um we'll see jake gets found he's the only full health survivor oh tries to use the barrel but doesn't quite use it correctly and can't get away from the chainsaw he's gonna go down that's a pain res hook. That's pretty convenient. So another pain res coming through. And yeah, I mean, say goodbye to gen progress. This, that, that gen was at like 95% at one point. Probably even more than 95%. And it gets hit by pain res again. Pops up again. Let's see though. See, this is really smart. This is like... Again, this is what makes Billy so nuts right now too. Is that even even on top of like all the extra speed and curve and all that shit, the the cooldown's nuts. Like Alexi just very wisely there chainsawing to the general area that Nancy is, and even if you don't get the chainsaw, you just recover so quickly. You recover so fast that you can just follow up with M1. Like trying to actually get away from a Billy right now while they're in overdrive is such a nightmare, man. Because again, like you got to worry about all the crazy curves and all the crazy shit that they can do with their chainsaw. But even if they don't actually hit you with a chainsaw, you still got to worry about all the other shit too, right? You got to worry about the cooldown. Like even right here, right? This cooldown's gonna be so fast. Say goodbye, Michaela. Right? Dead. Like it's so difficult to do anything against them, man. Like it's so nuts. Like a like Billy in overdrive is just so so deadly. And Alexi now gonna be looking for Jake, trying to secure this 4K too. And I think they're going to be able to. I don't I don't know if Dingatrons can get out of this without a 4K2 at this point. Jake is looping around main. I think Alexi trying to just play safe and making sure they don't want to give make sure they don't give up this unhook now. Finds Michaela's body. Doesn't know where Jake is. He's probably upstairs, right? Yeah, he is. Fusion's dead though, and yeah, this this is it. That's 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 4K2. That's 4K2. Ooh. <laughs> Farming poor Michaela, dude. Michaela getting picked up right into a shotgun barrel to the face. Sorry, a shotgun. What would you call it? The, the butt of the shotgun? Is that what you call it? A shotgun butt to the face? Whatever. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. She, she immediately gets put right back down. And Jake might have to worry about a chainsaw here. Okay. Tries to curve around the back, but doesn't quite get it. This is still basically done there, right, though, right? Like, like there's, there's really no way to stop this. Even if he can somehow make his way back to Michaela and get the pickup, they basically lost all the progress they had on Jens. And it's going to take, like, a miracle to get them out of the spot. Ooh, good try on that curve. Just overcurves it a little bit. The stock. Yeah, the stock. That's probably the better term. Yeah, thank you. The stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Jake, though, he is doing his best. He's uh, doing a really good job of not dying in his chase, at the very least. Oh, but then I guess all I had to do was say something and then they and then he does so never mind So down he goes very very well played by Alexi. This was a really good Billy game, man This is a really really good Billy game like he played this phenomenally I feel like that first initial down and again, it's kind of like I said I feel like 
if a good billy player just like gets it down early sometimes it's so hard to come back from it um again I, it, this game was actually really wild because even in like the mid game there were so many situations where they like almost got like three man slugged and then they barely found their way out of it i actually feel like I mean, I don't even know. Like, would like would it have even been better? I feel like if Alexi would have not picked up Ace and went and picked up Nancy after after he downed Ace, and then maybe hooked Nancy near the Ace's down body, this maybe could have been an even better result. But I mean, what it like like could this have been a 4K3? I feel like it still might have ended up being a being a 4K2 regardless. I, I don't. know. Either way, Alexi got a crazy good result. 4K2 is very very solid. This feels like one of those results that's like probably probably tieable but probably not beatable right like getting a 4k3 is incredibly hard like a 4k3 i think requires the survivors to fuck up like pretty significantly i think like 4k2 i mean not unreasonable but also very hard 4k1 somewhat doable too like this feels like it's a pretty good spot to be in like it's gonna be very very hard for dingatrons to make anything happen from this so gg's well played by alexi and again that's kind of the start you need i think right like, your choice of killer, going into the best of three, and I think, uh, again, you definitely want to get a win on this Billy set, and I think that's that puts them in a really good spot to do so. We'll see. Uh, I do think, yeah, I mean, Ruin Undying, again, we saw it earlier. Like, Ruin Undying Pain Res is a build that we've been seeing, and it's a build that, again, it, it is allowed with all the perks. And I think that's the kind of build, like, again, I think if you're Dingatrons, I think that's the kind of build you probably want to run, to be honest with you. Because... I think your best hope right now is to probably just pop the fuck off early game, right? Like that's gotta be like pretty much your only hope. Like pop the fuck off early game, maybe get like the tunnel out going before they break Ruin Undying. And then maybe like, like if you can get the game into a 3v1 with Ruin up, that's just so devastating. Like it's so devastating to be in, to, to, to be in that kind of a spot. So that might be a good choice in terms of building everything, but I guess we'll see. Um, Oh, oh god, the giant friends list strikes back. Not like this. All right, I, I, I'm assuming Alexis is gonna be playing survivors, so, so let me just get them in. Yeah, unironically though, like Billy, like I, I honestly wonder how Billy would do with like S tier settings, because he feels like he does pretty fucking good in these settings, right? Like. But, like, is S tier settings too much for him? I don't know. Like, is that too much? I don't know, dude. I really don't know. Like, he honestly might be okay. He might be fine. He might be, like, that strong right now that he might be okay even on, like, S tier settings. I don't know, though. It's hard to say because it, it does feel like Billy's have, have been able to pop off pretty consistently. Yeah, I think he is on, like, the same level of spirit. I, I actually think that's kind of not too insane. And, again, I, I've been saying this all day, but I heard somebody say that they think that Billy with low pro is on like a similar level if not better than blight which i actually like that's a really bold statement but like maybe you know what i mean like if you have low pro and even like pre-throwing pallets doesn't help you then like what the fuck do you do you know like i feel like you have so little options at that point where like yeah he basically just becomes like blight jr like he becomes blight without the cooldown after using five rushes right like he's just uh, like blight that constantly has his power essentially it's kind of wild like i don't know Do you think banning low pro? Yeah, I mean, we have low pro ban too, but even still, like, I do think it makes it more interesting, but he's still really strong. Like, he's really, really strong. Yeah, yeah, he's got better mobility. Yeah, he has insta downs, and it's, again, it's kind of like I was saying that last game. Like, if you try to play around his insta downs, what ends up happening is, is, like, a lot of the times he'll just catch you with the cooldown and then M1 you, right? Like, we saw that happen multiple times last game, where, like, you're like, oh, fuck, he's gonna go for a wild curve, so let me, like you know, crouch tech to the side or something and try to avoid the chainsaw. But then if he doesn't hit you with the curve and just stops his chainsaw right beside you, then guess what? You're still getting hit anyway, you know? So it's like you're trying to dodge one shot downs just to then eat a single health state hit anyway. Like, it's so tough. It feels like it feels like Billy's can put you in positions where you're just kind of fucked a lot of the time, you know? Um, I don't know. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Like, he actually might be okay with S tier balancing right now. It might be something that we'd have to play around with. I don't know. If you make one mistake versus Billy, it's Jover? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it definitely does feel that way. Which, again, feels kind of the same as the S-tiers. I don't know, man. 
Yeah, he does have the rev up. You're not wrong. That does that. Yeah, like it definitely does make him a little bit weaker. I feel like it might also just take some time for people to adjust to everything, right? Like to be fair, they did add like the like the overdrive thing where he has like faster cooldowns and everything, and then they also added like the extra curve window, which allows him to do even more fucking weird shit. So like you gotta look for like the extra window curve shit, but then also you gotta look out for the extra cooldown. And like there's just so much to look for that maybe we just need to give people some more time to play around with it as well. You know, like maybe maybe it'll get more and more and more fair feeling as people get more experience. I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. We'll just have to keep an eye on it, I guess. Right, Flame and Red Dragon on Killer. Uh, he's gonna need a crazy result now, right? Like 4K2 is just a tie at this point. Like he has a 4K2 to tie. 4K1's a loss. So for the survivors, they just gotta get four gens out of five done, and then they win. And if he can somehow 4K3, he'll win. But again, 4K3 is. We did see a Billy 4K4 earlier, so it is it is possible. And again, that four that, that 4K4 game was the was the game where or no. Did we see? Yeah, we did see a 4K4, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Wait, am I just saying shit now? I don't know. Maybe that was Blight that we saw 4K4. Wait, now I can't remember. No, no, it was Billy. No, it was Billy. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting all mixed up. We did see a Billy 4K4 earlier, and that was the game where he had uh, Ruin Undying with Pain Res. Like, that felt like a crazy devastating build, um, especially with a strong early game, right? Like, you get a strong early game with that, and it's just so hard to come back from. So I would love to see that kind of a build coming out of Flamin' out, out of uh, out of uh, Flamin' Red here, if he wants to try to get a big result like this. Like I don't know if you can reliably get a result like this while rocking like the same build we saw last game, you know? And that's exactly what we see. So perfect. I kind of again, I love this. Oh my god, he's got that gigantic bulky ass hammer. Also, is this the is this the bump bat on? I think that's the bump bat on, isn't it? That's like low kickback chains or whatever, isn't it? That's an interesting add on choice. Already in overdrive. Uh, oh, is he a console Billy? Because that's interesting. He's going to check on his totem right away. Does see some scratch marks. So yeah, I think this early game is going to be really important. Like how these survivors handle these early game chases are going to be are, are going to play a big factor in how this goes. Because if they can survive a long time here, this is going to be really really tough. Especially if they can, like, break some totems or just get, like, a gen or two done. Ooh. I think Claudette crouching that. No bamboozle means that this doesn't get blocked. But he spots some other gamers. Overdrive again. Ooh, tries to bait him out, but he doesn't fall for it. Ends up just taking the pallet overdrive almost out too, which is going to make him a little less threatening. So yeah, he's a little less threatening now. Like for instance, that curve with overdrive maybe lands, but without not quite fast enough. So a bit less threatening now. And again, this is, this is a good early game. This is exactly what we're talking about. This buys them some time. They do have, they, 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 they do have a good bit of progress. To be honest though, I think Ruin is going to be doing a lot of work right now. And they do need they do need to be like kind of passively looking for those totems. Overdrive again, and there we go. Good chainsaw under the under the Claudette. So first down coming in. And will they pop a I don't think they get a gen done for this. They don't, I don't think. This will likely be interrupted by pain res, and if you could also push her off of this gen so it regresses with ruin too. Yeah, pain res comes through. It is very far from the hook, so it's going to be hard for him to keep up pressure on that for, like, an extended period of time, right? Like, I think the survivor might be able to just mostly sit on that. Actually, you know, I don't hate this based on the win con. Like, I feel like normally I don't think this would be a great play, but based on, like, the win con that's needed, good attempt on a curve there. Doesn't get it, though. Based on the win con that's needed, I actually don't hate this play. Because realistically, like, if you down this, if you down this Yui right here, and then put her on like a skirt hook beside this gen. That's such a good spot, right? And I feel like maybe just trying to secure the kill is not enough. Ooh, almost gets a nasty S curve there, but doesn't quite get it. Yui doing a whoa, 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 whoa. Was that me or was that them? I don't know. Yui doing a real, that chainsaw was really close too. Yui doing a really good job in this chase. Very gross. Interesting.
Ooh, goes for the wide curve on the ace, but he moves just in time. But he's going to be in some trouble now. Chainsaw comes through now on the ace. What's gen progress looking like? Again, Ruin's been doing work, dude. They have progress on a bunch of different gens, but if he hooks them, like, mid-map, like, kind of, like, two, two, two of these gens are kind of close to each other, and he can hook them very close. Like, the other gen is right over there. Oh, this actually could be massive. Yeah, they're going to have to get off those gens, and that means Ruin's going to start regressing them, and he has a hook near them, too. Shack gen will most likely get done. Yeah, they, they have to basically fast pull. They, they, they literally have to fast pull. They can't, they can't let these survivors sit on hook at all. They do fast pull, but he doesn't punish it all. He's just going to stay on Yui. And Yui, the Billy player from Team Despair, you can tell very comfortable against Billy, too. Typically, that's how that kind of thing goes. But eventually will go down, but they do pop me. Actually, was that main? No, that was Shaq. Is this Painterize going to interrupt main? Actually, they have another gen that's almost done, too. So Painterize might hit this one. And this one's at what? Like, one? Or is this at 11? I couldn't even tell, actually. I think that's it. I think that's at 11. I think it's at like 10, 11. Yeah, that's at like 10, 11. So that one gets hit by pain res. Main's going to get chased off again. So Ruin going to be doing some work. I'm a little, again, I'm a little surprised to see Flaming Red Dragon not trying to punish these unhooks a little more. Like they've been fast pulling every single time consistently. And right there, he even saw the scratch marks. Like he maybe could have just like gotten a chainsaw on that unhook and had a, and had like another, another hook immediately. But at the same time, this down comes in. They are going to finish main gen, though. Considering that only one more gen is needed now to, to, to secure the tie, it's looking pretty good for these guys. It's going to be Ace's second hook. He does check on the gens that are, that are being worked, though. But again, the unhooks just keep coming in instantly. Like, the second he leaves, the unhooks are coming in literally instantly, which is really smart for the survivors. Gets over, gets the overdrive, might go for a huge curve here. Well aimed, but unfortunately not fast enough. But the cooldown gets the M1, like I was saying, but it looks like they're going to pop this gen. So, so gen number three is popping. That means that the win con is no longer in question. Now it's a matter of getting the tie con. If you can, if you can match the 4K2, you can tie it up. And I think to do that, you need to. I think you need to get a kill at this point. Like, unfortunately, I think that's the big thing here, right? Like, it feels like Flaming Red Dragon's been trying to just like, like, the, like, I think the way he played this could could be possible. But you basically need to like, like he made it really hard on himself. He basically needs to pop the fuck off and land like every single chainsaw. Oh, actually, that's going to be a kill, though. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This could still be a tie. Because that's a kill. That's a kill with Ruin and Undying both up. So wait a minute, actually. This could still be a tie. But I feel like... I feel like there was maybe an opportunity like at, at, at some point in like the mid game when he got a hook. Like he, he got a hook in between main and this other gen that's like, I don't know, it's not like two, three, maybe. I think I, I, think I would call it two. Like, he, he got a hook that was, like, kind of near main and two, and they both had a ton of progress. I think he could have just, like, maybe played around that hook a bit, right? Because that's a lot of progress they were losing. And then maybe tried to get a kill. Again, it's hard, right? Because if you do that, then they just, like, slam gens across the map and then maybe reach the win con anyway. Like, it's so hard to, like, want to protect the hook whenever they can just bash gens and get win con. But at the same time, it feels like the way this was played felt like it... He basically just had to, like, nail every chainsaw perfectly and hope that the survivors don't have any good chases at all. And he honestly was really close. Even that was extremely close. We had the old pallet priority, but that was really close, too. And, dude, I think Tycon is actually... Uh, well, I mean, this is probably going to get chased off of, though, right? And only only this Nia is the, uh, the, final, the final pain res. So we'll see, but this is a good bit of progress coming in. She's going to pre-stealth off. And looks like Yui immediately going to be there for the pool. They've been set up for these fast pools pretty much every single time. Oh, but Nia gets found. That's so important. If the Nia doesn't get found here, then they're actually in a pretty good spot. Let's see what she can do in chase. It's just an isolated double window. I don't think there's anything else really around this. I think it's just the I think it's just these windows. But so far, Nia doing really good. Overdrive's gone. 
Oh, it doesn't quite get that medium vault either. And they're splitting different gens, which is actually interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe they weren't confident that Neo was going to survive in this chase very long. Because I feel like, yeah, they, they didn't bother trying with the gen at two, and they're just going to bail. This actually works really well. The killer has to leave. No, this actually works out super well. The killer has to leave. Nia can get back on that gen at two. Doesn't get that curve. Good job from that Claudette getting away from that one too. Has another filler. Good stun. Nia's back on this gen. Yui's on a different gen over... I think that was somewhere topside. And as Billy, dude, the Billy's just so split now. He's like, fuck, where do I go? He's going to go back to this gen at two again. Nia pre leaves it. She has these these windows that she can play around with. And I think this is where no bamboozle can kind of bite you, you know what I mean? Cause I think I think without bamboozle, you kind of do have to go for some like kind of more risky curve style shit here. I think you maybe could bait vaults and try to back rev. Well, I mean that's kind of what he's trying to do now, but it doesn't really work. Like it definitely feels like you're not in a spot where you can get like a guaranteed down here without bam. And yeah, Nia abusing that really well. Making it really hard. And yeah, I think, yep, they're definitely gonna be able to reach the win con. Yui's gonna pop it. Uh, yeah, there they go. Fourth gen done, win con reached. And they might even be able to get a fifth gen done at this point, but. Very well played from the survivors, man. God damn. Like, very, very well played. This Nia, this Nia in particular, dude, over over on, the, on, on this window, this window tile, disgusting, dude. So, so tough. Like, just being so slippery, making it so difficult. Even here, the pathing. Wow, that was close. I see a very good chainsaw attempt, but even the pathing here, just very, very solid. Bates locker, crouches away. Crouch texts that one too. Oh god, this Nia. Oh, the Nia. Oh, the Nia. She's unkillable, bro. She's literally unkillable. She's literally, she's literally immortal. Like she fucking drank the the goddamn elixir of life. Ooh. See? She wasn't even looking at that one. It doesn't even matter, bro. She's literally immortal. I'm telling you, man. I don't know what's going on with that Nia, but she cannot be killed. She literally cannot be killed, man. She's insane. And it looks like he's going to cut off. I think this is Claudette. But I think both Claudette and Nia are new here, both only worth one stage, right? So I think I think Nia's gonna be able to get out, and then I think maybe Yui too. And this will likely be what an eight stage game, I believe. That was a good chainsaw there on the on the on the Claudette. A little bit out of position, and she gets caught out. Did Nia? Oh yeah, Nia. Okay, yeah, Nia made it to the other gate. So yeah, yeah, those two. Yeah, those two are gonna go. It's gonna be eight stages. Eight stages, four fresh. This is gonna be the final result. There, very good showing from Despair. Like, my lord, dude, this set, it looks so good for them, man. Like, Alexi on Billy just looks so dominant. Flame and Red Dragon on Billy, really, again, like, it's not like he played terribly or anything. Like, he has, he has some really good chainsaws, too. That Nia was slippery, dude. She was slippery. And again, like, the lack of Bamboozle kind of being punished, right? Like, I did talk about how, like, Bamboozle may be less necessary on this map because of, like, the main building being, like, maybe not as abusable as some other maps. But again, a lot of those filler tiles become... Or those, or those maze towers become very, very difficult. And yeah, Nia just did so well. So well. Just did so good. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I said four fresh. Sorry. Oh, yeah. It was three fresh. Either way. Either way. I mean, still oh, still the win for Despair. So GG's. And that's going to take us into the, what, Nemesis set. We're going to have a Nemesis set now. So Dingatron's going to be playing Nemesis. They're going to need this win if they want to stay alive with this best of three. They're going to be going up against the Survivors of Despair. And again, these Survivors got to be feeling good after that one, right? They got to be feeling good after that one. So, momentum somewhat in their favor. We'll see what the killer is for Dingatrons. Who was playing Nemi here? Um, I don't know if Watery plays killer for these guys or not. I know I've seen him play killer a few times. So I'm not sure if he actually plays killer for this team or not. He might not. So, we'll see. But they're going to need this one for sure. And Nemi is going to be played on Wrecker's Yard. So a little bit more of a chill map. But realistically, what balance do we, do we, do we have Nemi in? Probably Tier 3, right? In my head, I feel like it would be Tier 3. But maybe it's Tier 2? 
Nope, it's tier three. Okay. Yeah. No, that yeah, no, that that, that definitely seems accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Nemi's gonna be on Records Yard with tier three balancing. It's gonna be like a decent bit of bands, but realistically realistically still, I think Nemi can still end up with some rough results here, right? I think tier three balancing does help him a bit because it does take away a lot more from the survivors that they would have in some of the other sets. So it will be at least a little scary for the survivors. Like they'll definitely have to make sure that they play really solidly. I think it's one of those like, I mean, I think any one of these sets has like that situation where like a really big fuck up and, you know, things can snowball really hard. Like DBD is just kind of a snowball -y game, you know, like, so I think that ha I think that can happen on literally any killer ever. But I think the the perk restrictions are definitely going to make that a little bit more so. Uh, but realistically here, I would expect the survivors to be able to get some good results. Like, I don't think the expected result here should be a 4K. So, like, if either one of these killers gets, like, a 4K, that's going to be, like, an above, like, 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 a very far above average result. Nemi should, Nemi should struggle a bit, I think, in these sets. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Whenever, like, like, honestly, you never know. Like, we've seen Nemi's pop off in the past. Like, I mean, survivors fuck up sometimes. I mean, that kind of stuff can happen. Um, yeah, tier three balancing. So, if you guys don't know, we have, like new balancing now we used to do like we used to do very flat balancing where we just kind of kept the same bands for everybody and then only changed up like a couple little things for each like set that were like really really important and that was it but recently like within the last like maybe a few weeks maybe like is this our like third week i think on new balancing maybe or second is this our second week maybe i don't even know this is maybe like our second week on new balancing um yeah, yeah, it's only our second week. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So we did new balancing two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're now basically there's four different tiers that killers can fall in. And depending on what tier they fall in, they get different balancing, right? So like tier one is like Blight, Nurse, Spirit. Those are the only killers in tier one. Realistically, there's actually only like like there is four tiers, but realistically, you're only gonna see two tiers like 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 most often. Like most killers are in tier two and three. Tier one is there just for the just for the best killers in the whole game, which is like Blight Nurse Spirit. And then tier four is only there for the absolute worst killers in the game, which is uh, Hag, Legion, Freddy, and Trapper. So like tier four and tier one are both going to be pretty uncommon. You, you'll only see them once in a blue moon. The vast majority of killers are going to be in tier two and tier three. Um, but yeah, basically like the lower the tier, the more restrictions there are on survivor. And for tier one, there's actually a bunch of killer restrictions too. Like on, on, on tier one killers, you can't run like pain res and a bunch of perk combos. So... Yeah, this is a tier three killer, which means on top of like the normal things that are always banned, like the things that are like wildly OP, like obviously like perks like off the record and shit are going to be banned just always across the board. Um, but but like outside of things like that that are wildly OP, the survivors are also losing a whole bunch of perks like like Deja Vu, Dead Hard, Decisive Strike, Inner Strength, Leader, Overcome, uh, Overzealous, Resurgence, Second Wind, Unbreakable, We'll Make It. Uh, like a whole bunch of perks like that are going are going uh, bye bye in this set. Like per a, a lot of those perks that are normally allowed in tier two sets, right? Like in tier two sets, you can run things like we'll make it and uh, decisive strike and leader and inner strength. Like those, like those kind of actually inner strength might be banned in tier two sets too, even actually. But anyway, like like there's like a lot of the perks that are banned here are allowed in tier two sets, but they're not allowed in this set. So yeah, they're gonna be a little bit stricter on the on the on the on the perks. They won't have quite as many strong things. They'll have to make sure they play a lot more tighter, like a lot less second chances, a lot harder to get back in it if you fall behind. Wraith in tier two. Yeah, I still can't believe I put Wraith in tier two. I don't know what I was thinking, man. I mean, I, I think I know what I was thinking, I guess. Like, I, I think I, I think I know my thought process. But yeah, I definitely looking back, I think I was a little over uh, overzealous. Maybe I was a little over en enthused about my my line of thinking, I think. Um, cause yeah, you were thinking teams got four k a lot of the time anyway, but he should definitely be tier three. Yeah. Okay. So like what we were saying about that very first set, right? Like frosty eyes versus, uh, 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 oh my God, I'm blanking frosty eyes versus rats. That's who it was. Sorry. Rats. Yeah. Like that, like that set on Wraith. I don't really feel like the results would have changed that much through balancing, but I do feel like the balancing does make the game more interesting right i think like because the games wouldn't be that much different based on balancing makes me feel like i want to change like that might sound dumb right i don't think the results would have been that different but i think because the results would have been that different makes me want to change the balancing because like i think changing the balancing all that does is it makes the game feel more interesting and more fair right like as a wraith you feel better about like spreading health states and getting like tags on on other survivors and shit right because you feel like it's actually doing more as opposed to like 
what it does now, where like you get a tag on somebody and you're like, oh, but they have like 50 reset perks, so they're probably just gonna heal really quickly anyway, right? So I think like, yeah, I think putting one in the lower tier feels like a good idea. Cause I, again, I still think that like if there's a big, if there's a big skill differential where like one side is just playing better than the other side, they're still gonna be able to put up good results, right? Like it's not like Wraith is just gonna dominate, right? Like there's still gonna be that skill factor involved. So yeah, I think it's fine. I think Wraith can probably go in tier three beyond this. I mean, we'll see. Maybe the final race set of the day will make me more unsure, but based on what I've seen, it seems pretty, yeah. Like, I think Wraith going into tier 3 seems more reasonable. Um, I don't know what's going on, man. I invited Lexi, but they didn't join. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna send another invite. Is there someone else I can invite? Do I even have anyone else on this team on my friends list? Uh. 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 Uh, there we go. Sick. Perfect. I might type up some balance changing suggestions for you to look over and balance discussion after scrims if you want to hang out around and review them. Yeah, 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 feel free. Um, well, I actually don't know if I'm gonna have time to hang around and have like an in-depth conversation after stream tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, like, I'm I'm not opposed to like scrim night going as fast as possible today. I kind of have some stuff tonight that I would like to do. Uh. But if you want to type something up, I can definitely, I'll definitely comment on it at least within the next 24 hours, at the very least. Because yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, I'd definitely be curious to hear what you have to say. Because you, because you did say that you had a bunch of like perks that you thought could have been like left out or put into like certain restrictions or whatever. So yeah, I'd be curious to see what you have to say about it. Because yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible we missed a lot of really important things. Allow unbreakable against Billy. That's all you need. No Delhi. See, but that, uh, but then we'd have to allow Unbreakable against all the people in Tier 2, or make like a whole separate tier. And like, if I'm looking at Tier 2 killers, I don't know if I want Unbreakable allowed against all these gamers, you know? Hmm. <laughs> I said, you know, let's just throw Billy and S-tier balancing, dude. Fuck him. Fuck him, bro. Fuck him. Give him the S-tier balancing. Fuck him, dude. Fuck him. Like, realistically, is Billy weaker than Spirit? That's my question. Like, we have Spirit and S-tier balancing. Is Billy weaker than Spirit? That's a, that's a genuine question right now. Is Billy weaker than Spirit? I don't actually think so. I don't know. I don't think he is. And I think if he is, I wouldn't say it's by very much. Like, for instance, I think if we put Spirit on Blood Lodge, I don't think she puts up the results that Billy that Billy does on Blood Lodge, you know? Like, we even have Billy on, like, a map that I feel like isn't the best for Killer, right? Like, obviously, there's obviously worse maps, and we can put him on fucking Larry's or something if we want to make his life miserable. But, like, you know, in terms of, like, maps that aren't unreasonable, it's actually, like, a pretty decent map, I feel like, for survivors, all things considered. And he still gets insane results. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like I, I really, I unironically think Billy can be put in S tier balancing and I think he would still do okay. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, honestly, honestly, if, if you guys, if you guys recite this, if you guys like clip this and show it back to me in like a month, I might be like, oh my God, I'm so fucking stupid. Why did I say that a month ago? I'm an idiot. Like maybe like, 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 like 100% that opinion might change entirely. But for right now, it does seem like he's like spirit level ish like i think if he is better or worse than spirit i think it's not by a whole lot like it's got he's got to be close yeah exactly dino i think like, i i think i think if he is weaker than spirit i think it's got to only be by like a very little bit because he's really fucking strong right now which is the higher learning curve you know what's funny is i think spirit does and I don't like, okay, that's probably my hottest take of all. I don't know. But I think being a, like a god, I think being a good enough spirit that you're better than Billy is way harder than being a good Billy to the point. Like, Billy just has so much tools at his disposal to the point where you can just keep throwing shit at the survivors. And if they happen to not guess right, you fucking one shot down them. You know what I mean? Spirit requires you to make like very accurate reads. And if you fuck up one of those reads, your power gets put on like a fucking like 10, 12 second cooldown where you literally are powerless for 10 to 12 seconds just for a, a simple health state. 
I don't, bro, I don't know. I think Billy's stronger. I think he's stronger, man. Billy puts you in situations where you have to look out for a one shot down, and even if you don't get one shot down, you get tagged by a, a, a basic attack anyway. I don't know, man. And I think, I think, I think Billy is just, like, I don't think he's as hard. I really don't. Like, I know that I've played a lot of Billy throughout the years, so, like, maybe it's, like, easier for me to, like, like, do shit on Billy than it might be for some people. I don't know. But, like, Spirit is, like, ungodly hard for me, and Billy is, like, the easiest shit ever for me. Not easy, but, like, not that hard. Spirit games could very well be a six stage against a good team, but a 4K one for Billy is not unheard of against good teams, and he's on and, and, and is even on a harder map. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what I was saying, right? Like, I feel like if you put Spirit on Blood Lodge, bro, she's getting shit on. Like, I feel like I feel like if you put Spirit on Blood Lodge, you're probably never getting more than like six, seven stages against good teams, right? Like, probably never. Like, I think six, seven stages, I think six, seven stages would be like a good result against a good team on Blood Lodge. Whereas like Billy gets put on Blood Lodge and then he still just goes ham, right? Anyway, sorry, we'll we'll come back to this discussion later. I definitely think it's like it's an interesting topic though, because I do feel like Billy is very, very strong right now. Uh the build is corrupt, pain res, pop, and no ed. So still keeping that no ed in the back pocket for late game. And he's got uh he's actually got faster zombies. And then that's Marvin's blood. So when he when he tags people with his tentacle, he'll go up in infection a little bit faster. Um sorry, I'm just briefly going through the builds to make sure there's no like banned perks or anything. I don't think there is, right? Let me just do it again real quick. Huh, 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 huh. No, I don't see anything that's sus. Everything looks fine. Yeah, everything looks fine. Yep, yep, yep. We're all good. We are all good. Smash it here for Nancy is very interesting. Respects that, but is going to get tentacled for it. Oh, gets the damage too. Well played by Watery. Okay, very, very fast. That's actually really fast damage for, for Nemi. Gets like the infection tag and the damage immediately afterwards. Not tier two though, so this this Shack Pal will get a lot of distance for Nancy. She'll get some some solid distance to kind of take the chase wherever she wants, and she will be taking it into this corner to die. Probably, well, actually, gonna try to play this LT walls as 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 uh, long as she can. Actually, heading back into the map. That's kind of interesting. So actually, isn't I thought she was kind of choosing a place to die, but actually wants to try to get some more value out of this filler. But this filler kind of feels like guaranteed death, right? Yeah, I was gonna say like. This feels like basically guaranteed death, and now you're giving the killer a better hook position? I don't know if I like this. I actually feel like, like, I mean, I, I guess it's a gamble, because, you know, who knows? Like, maybe you can juice the fuck out of the killer. But I feel like maybe the better play there is just to run around the back of the hill and go die on the edge. Because now the killer gets the hook wherever he wants, basically. He's going to carry her further into a scourge hook. Gets the pain res. I mean, the hook is not in an amazing position, though, right? Like, it's definitely a little better than it could have been, but... Still not bad. Pain res comes through. Pop comes through as well. I'm curious if Watermelon actually goes for a tunnel out here. Because this is actually, like, the, the pace here is actually fast enough that he could justify it. The idea of, like, getting a tunnel out with Nemi with high gens sounds kind of wild, but it could happen. And again, it, uh, doesn't actually take the pallet, though. Well played by Nancy. Just still has to worry about this window, though. She should be dead. She, there really shouldn't be much to work with here. Firecrackers, but doesn't save her either. The punch will come in. Down she goes. And yeah, that'll be her second hook. There's no DS or anything in place. So that'll be her second hook. And they have all the zombie being obnoxious. Is that all the gen progress they have? Okay, well, they have three different gens that are being worked. So they have two gens that are very high progress. So actually, pretty good gen progress. He's going to carry her back into the corner again. Finds the gen that Kate was doing. Doesn't have that much progress. He finds Ace's gen too. So Nia will be able to finish her gen. But Ace's gen will get hit by Pop. And he has two gens here that both have progress right near the hook. So this is a pretty okay spot to be in. He also he also sees Kate here too. So he should get a free infection. Oh, Ace gets right back with the gen. And Watermelon, I think, is going to want to protect this. He's going to either want to, like, punish this unhook. Maybe, actually. Okay, I kind of like that. He just kind of, like, forces him to go in and get the pool, you know? Rather than, like, buying any more time. Quickly just infects Nia, almost to tier 3. Now, if he, if he can get this kill onto this Nancy soon, this could end up being massive. Oh, that's awkward. That's a little bit awkward. Good, actually really good emoting from, uh, from, from Nancy, though. That might have seemed like not a big deal, but her emoting lets her crawl up under the pallet, which means that now Nia can threaten that pallet. And now Watermelon has to be worried about this, right? Oh, good damage, though. 
really good damage through the window. They actually didn't even pop that other gen. I think Ace got interrupted by a zombie or something. And Ace is actually here for the save too. They really want to keep Nancy alive. I think they will. He's really committing hard to this to to this Nia. They're actually going to pick up Nancy. And he's trying to decide. Yeah, he you can tell he kind of had a moment there where he was like, "Wait, what do I do? Do I do I hook this Nia now?" And he is going to hook this Nia. This is interesting. This is interesting. I can't tell who I feel like this favors. I think this favors the survivors a good bit, right? So yeah, you know, I can I can tell who this favors. Like they they allocate a lot of resources to this, but I feel like it ends up being worth it. Cuz yeah, Nia like Nia's going to get fresh hooked. But I think if I think if Nancy dies here with like four gens still up, that's fucking devastating. That's a, that's insane. So yeah, yeah, this is definitely a huge, huge bonus to survivors here. But they do still have to be careful with Nancy, right? She is still death hook and infected. And if she cleanses at any point, we'll get killer instinct. Yeah, they're gonna go healer. The zombie's putting his hands up. <gasps> the zombie narc, bro, he's a snitch. Oh no, dude, they got fucking snitched on. Oh no, and now he's both. Oh, no, 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 awkward. Oh, no, no, what are they doing? Oh, the storm. Oh, no. They did the Canadian thing where they were like, no, you go. No, really, you go. No, really, I'll step aside for you. No, really, I'll step aside for you. Oh, no, dude. What a horrible sequence of events. And now Nancy's dead, and then Nia's almost going to go struggle. Not quite, actually, just kidding. She got saved right before struggle, but still, still a really good position here. Three gens up. Uh. So has has one has 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 an extra survivor hook still has two stacks of pain res two survivors are injured all three of them are infected still honestly a really good spot for watermelon right now holy bro that oh no the kate overstepping there too and going down man this is so wild this feels like the exact opposite of what we saw from these survivors last game right like last game against billy it felt like they were so clean on point felt like they were just like so on top of it like 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 i feel like every chase was so like solidly played and it was so difficult for the killer to get anything going and then now on nemi it feels like they're slipping up a lot like, don't get me wrong watermelon is playing like really well too right like I'm not, i don't want to take anything away from watery but a lot of this has just been survivors like mispositioning a bit and like overstepping in loops and just kind of like being a bit out of position like not really check spotting correctly like there's been a lot of situations that have just come from them not really playing their loops well and uh this unhook comes in he does get pop value and well sorry not pain value, but just pop value but he's gonna come back to the unhook find some scratch marks that was huge from that zombie though to locate those 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 heal those healing survivors Good strafe tech there with the fucking thing. The thing, the tentacle. I feel like, dude, I I don't know when it happened, but like, you, you ever like listen to your, have you ever listened to yourself talk and then just get mad? Has that ever happened to you guys? I feel like, I don't know when this happened, but I feel like I've become one of those fucking DB players that just calls everything a tech. Like, I feel like I, can just, I, I need to start calling some of this shit other stuff. I'm like, bro, the crouch tech into the strength tech, into the hook tech, into the zombie tech. Like, dude, I just shut the fuck up. Like, God, I feel like I'm listening to myself and I'm getting annoyed by myself. Anyway, I think Watery was trying to greed here to get like, uh, to stop that gen from popping. He he left he left Neo on the ground and he finds Ace. To be fair, this is actually kind of working for him because they did have to rotate to pick up the down survivor. And I think, yeah, I'm thinking he, he really wants to try to end the game ASAP. It feels like he wants to end the game maybe with the amount of gens that are up, which would be fucking crazy. Realistically, they're not allowed to have Unbreakable or anything, so the, every every time he slugs like this, he's getting a lot of pressure out of it, right? Like, they, like they're, they're needing to go and rotate and pick up the person that gets slugged. But also, uh, I think there's still a Scourge hook on every... Actually, only Nia is in a Scourge hook, I think, right? Nia was Scourged. So this is the only survivor where, 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 where it's not a Scourge hook, but still, he can get pop, and he can put it on this gen that he's right beside. And dude, it's actually looking like he might be able to turn this into a 4K3. Which is an insane result for Nemesis. Like, actually insane. He's gonna just put, throw a dry kick down onto this gen that's in the shack. He has like four gens all along this side of the map over here. And the fifth one is even not that far out either. I'm kind of very curious how they handle this. I mean, they they, they, they got to get Nia. She's death hug. They're actually splitting just two gens right now. They're splitting two gens, but both these gens have like no progress, man. So even splitting these gens, right? Like they're not going to get either one of these done by the time Nia dies. 
Ooh, this maybe opens up Ace for the unhook, though. Yeah, Ace is going to go for the unhook here. Okay, so Nia will stay alive for a little bit longer. Oh. To be fair, he at least zoned her into the corner, but he's actually going to leave that. He doesn't, he, 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 he doesn't want to stay on that chase. He does know now that Nia is death hook. And that chase was being taken away from all the gens, so I think he's maybe just more comfortable with coming back in. Punches Ace, and it seems like every chase is just being taken deep deep into this pocket now. Seems like he does want to come into this one, which is interesting. Again, it feels like every mind game that Watermelon's going for, like, he's just kind of working these survivors, man. Like, I don't know how else to say it. It feels like every little mind game he goes for, it's just working. Like, it's just working. Every single... Like, it feels like they're just biting every mind game. Because it feels like he's just getting so many hits so quickly. Like, very, very fast are they coming in. Like, the second he, like, like I, feel, I feel like the second he tries anything, it just works, and then he gets a hit. And that's been how the majority of this game has been going. Another very fast down on the, on the, on the ace. He's a fresh hook. Still, still a skirt hook available on the both ace and Kate. He's going to find the trail of Nia here. She's not infected anymore, but she is still injured. And he finds her this filler. And look again, even that, you know what I mean? Like, even that is crazy. What am I not getting here? Like, what am I not, what, what is it that I'm not understanding that's, that's happening this game? Like, the, we just watched this Nia be like an unkillable god last game against Billy. And I feel like Watermelon just like takes a step to the right and then the survivors like slip and fall on ice and then break their necks right in front of him. And he's like, yeah, a free kill. Like, I don't even understand what the hell is going on. It's so crazy. I don't understand. But Watermelon, just everything he does works. It's wild. It's so wild. And yeah, this is going to be a 4K3, man. This zombie is kind of snitching on, on, on Kate. She might be able to... I thought she might cleanse the top of the hill, but she's not even going to have time. She's going to bounce landing away. Doesn't even get that far away. Watermelon taking a good angle on her. She's going to get punched. Ace is on a gem, but it's like just started. She pre throws this, but has to be careful about the whip and the zombie. <laughs> Look out for the zombie. Gets the whip and he's going to leave her slugged and head back in. This, this is a 4K3, dude. Wow. This is a fucking 4K3 on Nemesis. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, like I said, I mean... Realistically, I don't think Nemesis players should be putting up like very big results at all. Like I feel like even a 4k1 should be a very good result. Like I would expect survivors to be able to get out in the set. But dude, watery, like again, I just feel like every mind game he went for worked. Like I just don't like it feels crazy. Like it feels like even like it feels like he was going for like little mind games that have like that have like a 10% chance of working and then they would just still work. Like it's fucking wild the amount of shit he was getting away with this game. It's so crazy. And he was just like, every chase was just so dominant in his favor. He was just downing people very consistently quickly. I don't know, man. I don't know. Very, very strange game here. Uh, Despair, unfortunately, probably going to be getting being sent to the tiebreaker here. I don't see how this gets beaten. Like, I don't see how... Like, and, and like I feel like Dingatrons are going to need to really, really, really are going to need to live up to their name if this ends up going not into the tiebreaker. Because, like... How? They get 4K forward? Like, what kind of fucking dingus shit are they going to have to do to get 4K forward? I don't know. So, like, uh, yeah. Even, like, matching 4K3 is going to be really hard. 4K4 feels borderline impossible. Uh, this shit's wild. Yeah, he even has no ed, too, right? Like, he even has a perk that's basically a dead perk. This is just so, so well played, man. I don't know. Like, so crazy. Um... I mean, well played by Watermelon, but like I said before, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be harsh on them, okay? Because again, these survivors are clearly fucking insane. We just saw them do so well against Billy. These guys are extremely good players, okay? So I'm not trying to be harsh on them, but like a lot of this was good play from Watermelon, but a lot of this was also just very, very sloppy from survivors, right? Like if we're just gonna be honest with ourselves, a lot of this is very, very sloppy survivor play too, which happens, right? Even like the best players in the world will have bad games sometimes. So like obviously nothing against them. They're clearly really good players, just feels like this was not their game feels like this was definitely not their game and i think that was a big reason why this big result happened too was just a lot of slip ups and chase and a lot of a lot of micro mishaps um but yeah finds ace gets it down to him even if kate bleeds out it's still it doesn't really matter it's still the same result here no matter what and man dude just fucking crazy play here not at all what i expected out of, out of this nemi set like not even remotely close to what i expected holy fuck so good dude so good for watermelon.
And, um... So, assuming this goes to tiebreaker, what is it? Demo. Nice. Okay, good. Demo was actually the only killer that we weren't guaranteed to see today. So, I know it's not a guarantee, but it's like, it's pretty close to a guarantee, right? But it seems like a, there's a pretty, pretty high chance that we're actually going to see every killer at least once a day now. Oh, adrenaline, actually. I didn't really, I didn't really notice that. There is adrenaline. Watermelons. Camping this in case of adrenaline, I think. Does you know where the gates are? Are the gates far? There's one gate's right there. The gates can't be far, because cause like the one gate's right there. There's no way. He can kick it. He'd be fine. The gates are not far enough. Hmm... Hmm. <laughs> he waits and then kicks it. And now adrenaline. And now we have a gate sand off. Cleanses though. That's going to tell him where he is. And yeah. There we go. I mean... I, I, I don't blame him for like obviously wanting to make sure he gets the, like, like, uh, the best result. But yeah, I don't know. I just think it's kind of funny. Go zombie, go! Go zombie, go zombie, go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Yeah, give him the nodders. <laughs> that was like the most wholesome thing I've ever seen, dude. Like, I, I feel like he just like he just like gave his fucking zombie like a fist bump. He's why that he's like he's like yeah, dude, good job. Like that was such a good nod. That wasn't like a meme nodders. That was like a that was like a good job, little dude. Good job. Like you're, you're doing great, man. Like that that literally felt like such like a bro nodders, you know. Like, it felt so encouraging. I love that. That was great. <laughs> oh, God. That's so good. All right. GG's. Well played. Uh, man. Man, man, man. What a, what a crazy result from Watermelon. We'll see what uh, we'll see what the killer can do from despair, but this is gonna be this is gonna be like next to impossible to match. Like this is gonna be incredibly, incredibly hard. I'm like, trying to match this, tie this, do anything other than like doing anything other than losing to this is gonna be really fucking tough. So we'll see. But hey, I mean, you never know. We just saw. I mean, we just saw the survivors from despair absolutely work a Billy. And again, it's not like Flamin' Red was even playing Billy that badly. Like Flamin' was actually playing Billy pretty well. But they they still just worked that Billy, and then they kind of turned around and died to that to that Nemi. So you never know. I mean, maybe the same thing happens with uh, Dingatrons. Maybe they'll just kind of fall apart and die here. You know, you never know. Like it's definitely not. I'm definitely not going to say it's over yet. But I'd be lying to you if I said there was like a good chance of this ending 2-0. I feel like there's like a very minuscule chance, but I mean anything could happen. Um, let me get the gamers in. I need to quickly play some ads, and I'm also gonna go get coffee real quick, okay? So let me hold this lobby hostage real quick. I'm gonna play some ads and I'm gonna go grab coffee. I just need a quick minute, okay? So give me a minute. Give me a quick minute. Let me pull up the text. Where is it? Bam, perfect. Alright, give me give me a quick minute, guys. I'll be back in just a second. BRB. BRB one sec. Burp.
Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'm back. Hi, hello. Sorry, I'm back. Hello, here. Hi, hello, hello. Hi, I'm here. All right, I'm ready to go. Hi, chat. How you guys doing? All right, so here we are. Uh, FM on killer. I'm gonna need to get a 4K4 to win. 4K3 to tie. Survivors got to get three gens done. Three gens done against Nemi, and then we'll be going to the uh, the Demogorgon tiebreaker set, which I would... I'm very curious to see the demo set. I feel like we haven't seen a demo set in a while. You, okay, you know what I was thinking about? I don't know why I was thinking about this. I, I saw, I, dude, I've been thinking about DBD. I've been thinking about DBD more when I'm not live than I think I ever have before lately. I think maybe just because I've been getting into comp more and like doing ones more and shit. But you know what I was thinking? We haven't seen a twin set. Like when's the last time we've seen a fucking twin set, dude? Has twins been in the rotation or are people just not picking them? I feel like we haven't seen a twin set in like, months dude like years maybe how long has it been dude i don't know i feel like we i feel like we just don't ever see that killer anymore and i kind of love twins i think twin sets are actually really interesting like twin sets are like one of my more favorite ones to watch like they're really really interesting she's been bugged as hell oh yeah that's true oh yeah that's right wait that's that's a good point that's why we haven't seen twins because she's always super fucking bugged god damn it i forgot Oh, God damn it. That's right. We got to wait for like a perfect patch when she's not super bugged. God damn it. We got to the rework. Well, I mean, after the rework, she might not even be the interesting killer that she is now, right? I, I kind of love the way Twins is right now, just when she's not bugged, you know? Who the fuck would want to pick that? What do you mean? So many people. Bro, I bet Chads would pick Twins, wouldn't you? Chads, you guys would, right? Right, Dino? Is Kurt here? Bro, Kurt's a nasty Twins. Like, I bet, I bet, I bet Chads would pick fucking Twins if they could. Yeah, Psycho Mantis is a fucking twins main, and he's in the he, he's in he's in the fucking last team or the the team that's playing in the last set today. Bro, we definitely get some twins games, I think. Like, and it's it's such a good set too. Like, even even on the survivor side, it's so like unique and interesting, and like, I don't know, like different than all, than a lot of other sets. Like, I think it's like like I think the way you have to play around is so cool. I don't know, man. I just, it's a set that I like. I feel like I just haven't seen it in a long time, and I kind of missed it. But yeah, it does make sense. It does make sense uh, with all the bugs and everything, dude. That poor killer. That poor killer, man. Like, the, like, four Blight... Or, the Blight. The, like, four Twins mains that are out there are fucking suffering, dude. Their, their killer is just constantly, like, perma-bugged. You hate to see it. Gamers just look for elevation and watch and watch Victor fight his demons. True, 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 true. Oh, that's not like a surefire, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just put twins to tier three and put them on Larry's. Yeah. You think Larry's twins? That's an interesting suggestion. All right. Um. Anyway, let's get into this game. Uh, Ruin pain res with agitation. Uh, I don't hate it. I mean, I feel like, hey, if you're going to go for this win con, you know, this feels like probably the way to do it, you know? Just hopefully you can pop the fuck off. Add you them. Like, I think you get downs. Add you them to whatever gens have progress. Hopefully there's a Scourge Hook there too. Use your Ruin plus Scourge Hooks to regress gens like crazy. And hope that you just, like, pop off harder than Watermelon did, essentially. And I mean, so far, a good start. That's a really fast punch. That's a really fast damage. And we'll see how this chase goes. Oh, no filler there. Uh-oh. Flamin's kind of in trouble, but he should make this vault. Actually, they break Ruin, so goodbye, Ruin. And Flamin doing pretty well on this chase. Firecrackers, the pallet, does get infected. He'll have to run away after that one. Good stun, though. Yeah, like, this is, like... I feel like, again, I don't want to be like a, you know, Debbie Downer, but this already feels like a start that's like almost too, like, again, I don't even, I don't even think the killer's doing bad, but it feels, it just feels like this is like enough already almost, right? Oh, that tentacle not landing either. Because, yeah, the gens are going to be flying, right? Like, they're going to be cruising. Ruin's gone already. This chase has gone on for at least a little while. And based on the win con now, it's going to be next to impossible to actually be able to win this. A little late on the tentacle. Claudette makes that vault too. Can probably get one here. Tries to crouch it, but doesn't work. Good drive from FM. The down does come in. But Shaq Gen's very close. And there's two other gens that are not trailing too far behind it. Although, 
If he can get this guy to a pain res really quickly and then also get into Shaq and interrupt it. And also if he lets go against the skill check as he lets go too. That's the three different things that are in your favor. Quick maths, but I still don't know if it's enough because like there's two more gens that are very high progress and I still don't really know how you get out of this regardless, right? We'll see. Looks like, yeah, yeah, both those gens are going to pop in unison. Fil di dirty, filthy, gen rushing, survive with friends, confirmed. And now at this point, Tycon's already met, right? Like at this point, you got to find a way to 4k them without them getting a single other gen done, which is like just absurd. That's just an absurd thing to ask, so... Yeah, looking like it's kind of looking like Dingatron is going to send us into the tiebreaker. Which we kind of expected. But we'll see how the rest of this game plays out regardless. Uh, FM gets another really fast down, though. That also puts him in a tier two. Ooh, oh, don't do it to him. Oh, you had to do it to him. You had to fucking do it to him, man. Yep, Gen pops and Shaq, so that's going to be the win con confirmed. We are going to the demo set. So well played, Dingatrons. Um, but at this rate, it is looking like they might end up getting like a really good overall result, right? Because this is honestly a little bit more how I expect Nemi games to go, right? This feels more like, like more like the run of the mill, ne the like run of the mill Nemi games, where like he's kind of struggling to get damage in when he can, you know, lots of 50/50s he's taken, um, you know, getting whip hits, but then having to follow up with even more whip hits and you know, yada yada yada. So yeah, this feels more like what we'd expect, I think. And right now, coming to this chase on Ace, at this point, I think you can't really justify going for a tunnel out. So I think at this point, you just try to get your skirt hooks in, get your fresh hooks, and maybe just try to put up like a good result in terms of stages. Because it feels like a 4K is pretty out of the question. Shaq Pallet being sacrificed for some distance. Ace will use that distance to go bust, and it's the good bus window. Nice. Can you get whipped through that? You maybe can, right? I guess FM, saw, FM thought the same thing. Can you get whipped through that? It feels like you probably could, right? I know you can get hit through that with like Huntress hatchets and shit, so I'm assuming the whip would probably work too, yeah? Maybe? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'm not sure if it would. Actually dropping that chase with Ace. And finds Michaela instead at a jungle gym. But again, this is the nemesis struggle, man. Like every new survivor you find, you have to hit him three fucking times. So there's the first hit, getting him into the actual infection. And now we got to follow up with even more hits. Pallet break instead. That's going to give Watery some distance. Did he go in the locker? No. For a second, I thought that motherfucker went in the locker. But no, he just went back into the jungle gym, it looks like. FM looks like he's just like, oh god, oh fuck, and then just like kind of run, like just kind of running around the map looking for a target that's a good target, but there is no good target. Both the last two gens are being progressed heavily. And yeah, this one pops, last one's about to pop soon. And I think FM knows, right? I think he knows. I think he, he sees the writing on the wall and he, like, he just knows what the fuck's going on here. And he's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead and end it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and end it. So he's gonna take this chase with Nancy, and I mean, hey, if he can catch this Nancy before the executor power or before the executes are open, maybe he can throw her on hook and get four stages. But they might even be able to send in the boys and get Nancy out, which I actually think, like, low key, this actually might be important, right? Like, I don't, I don't know if FM just kind of like gave up or not, right? It's hard to say. Like, it kind of felt like he did based on how he played, but I don't know. It's hard to say, right? But I do think this is kind of important, right? Because, like, them getting out here with only one stage, they're like, yeah, you can chalk it up to, like, the killer just kind of, like, being, like, meh about it because he knows the wing con's already reached. But also, again, I feel like this kind of builds momentum for Dingatrons, right? Because, like, Dingatron survivors are, are up next immediately after this, right? Like, that's going to be the uh, Nemesis set in favor of Dingatrons. And now we're going right in the demo set, and it's going to be these same survivors up against demo and i think with them getting out with one stage they're probably feeling really good right and i feel like typically that's not what you want is you don't want the other survivor team to be feeling really good you know like it might sound like dumb and like unimportant to say that but like you'd be surprised how big of a deal just like feeling good is in this game, you know, like being confident in your decisions and like feeling like you're playing on point is a big, big thing, right? Like if you have a bit of a rough game or if you kind of like get caught doing some dumb shit that you don't think you should have gotten caught doing, right? Sometimes that can, that can kind of like affect your mental and you can be like, you know, you can start like second guessing every decision you make because you're like, oh God, I'm playing so bad today. Oh, that, right. But like, I feel like if you like if you're if you're playing good and you know that you're playing good and you're like really feeling confident in your like decision making and like in your play. 
That shit matters, man. That can make you play really, really, like, like very much better. It's called morale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, morale really does matter a lot, right? I mean, because, like, DVD is a game of decision-making, right? This game is, like... Like, there's... I, I would say this game is, like... Especially in a lot of the sets that exist, it feels like it's, like... Especially on the survivor side, right? It's, like, 90% decision-making more so than, like, mechanical skill and shit. Maybe 90% is too high. But, like, a lot of it is just, like, decision-making, right? And being, like, really, like, feeling good and feeling confident in your decision-making is so big. And, I, you, and you know that the survivors from, from uh, Dingatrons are probably feeling really good right now, right? You would think. Um, that being said, Alexi was not the killer last game. And Alexi was the killer first game as Billy, where they popped the fuck off and got a 4K2. So that being said, Alexi probably also isn't feeling too bad either. So, you know, this demo set really could go either way. But I do think Alexi is going to have to uh, have a really, really good game here. Because I think Dingatrons are going to be feeling good, and I think they're going to be probably playing at their best. And I think they kind of there kind of needs to be a bit of a roadblock here to kind of stop that momentum. And I think, uh, I mean, I don't know, Alexi could probably do it. I mean, we, we saw the Billy, like we saw the Billy play earlier. And I feel like if this demo game goes similar, it could, it could, uh, you know, like, you know, honestly, you, like, you can never know. You like, end up with a big result here, and, and then, and then anything can happen. This is okay. So this is demo cool tower, and this is like another, like, this is like another one of those sets where I think realistically there should be outs. This one feels like, I, I would say in comparison to Nemesis, I would say this one more often can end in a 4K. Like I feel like Nemesis. Again, like, I don't want to make it sound like I'm like throwing shade, but I think I feel like the Nemi set really shouldn't end in a 4K very often. Like it kind of requires a lot to go wrong for it to end up in a 4K. I think this demo set, it's not like crazy unrealistic for this to be a 4K. You know what I mean? Like realistically, yeah. Like realistically, it should be like six, seven stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's like I think I think if the killer gets like seven stages or higher, that's a pretty good result. But a 4K is at least like somewhat possible here like I, I think a 4k isn't like completely absurd you know whereas like i feel like nemi 4k did feel kind of absurd to me like i was like that shouldn't be happening like i think a demo 4k is in the rumble possibility it's just very very difficult so we'll see we'll see we'll see how the survivors play and we'll see how alexi does but if alexi can even just like put up again if you can even just put up a good result in terms of just high stages right like if you can end this game with like nine ten stages even even if you don't full 4k or even just like eight stages eight to nine stages I think that kind of puts you in a spot where you're probably feeling pretty good. So. Yeah, we'll see, man. We will see. I wonder if it'd be cool to do a random draw for killers. It would change things up so killers that aren't chosen so often get played more. Um, Yeah, but like what killers that aren't chosen very often? I actually think we do see a pretty good variety of killers. Like what killers do you want to see more that we're not seeing? Because like we're not seeing Skull Merchant. Sorry, that's just not happening. Uh, twins, I think twins is just bugged, and I think that's the reason we're not seeing them. Like, I don't think that's a choice thing. I think that's just them being bugged. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if, yeah. From from the pool today, we say ever killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we've actually seen seven different killers today, or at least we will see seven different killers after the uh, executioner set later. Yeah, like, the only killers that we don't see a crazy amount are the ones that are just, like, kind of fucking boring, you know? Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not exactly dying to see more Skull Merchant or more Hag or more Legion, you know? Like, I'm not really dying to see those more. I'm just gonna be honest with you. There are some killers that, like, you know, like, maybe, like, pig sets and stuff. Yeah, sure. Like, maybe, like, maybe I'd be down for some more pig sets every once in a while. Pig's actually about to get a buff, so, like, maybe after her buff, maybe we can see some more pig, you know? You never know. But I feel like... Most of the killers we don't see very often. I'm like happy that we don't see them very often. So you see Alien, but last time we had Zeno in the in the pool, we actually saw Zeno multiple times. I think it was last week, right? Last week I think we saw Zeno like twice. So we see Zeno pretty often in the pool, actually. Same thing with Clown. We saw a clown game last week too. Like we're seeing these killers, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like these are killers that we're that we're having play. I, I just think you guys have to understand that there's like Almost like 30. Is there 30 killers? I think there's like over 30 killers now or something. So like realistically, like, you know, we might be seeing shit more often than you realize just because there's 30 different killers. You know what I mean? So even if they're even if they are being played a good bit, it still might be like a few weeks before you see them again. You know, Chucky still hasn't been played yet, though. Has Chucky not been played yet? Well, no, I remember Chucky got played when he first got released like way a long time ago. But like, since then, I don't think, right?
What's Hen's Impossible Street Goal? What is that? We got one game of Chucky when we had picks before bands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember RGB playing Chucky at one point and getting like a 4K4. That's all I remember on like Suffo Pit. I think since then though, I think we had Chucky in the pool like a few weeks back, right? And I think he like didn't get picked at all. Or he either didn't get picked at all or he was maybe like a tiebreaker that we didn't get to or something. To be fair, most people, people that are sane, unlike Dino Melon, <laughs> typically don't like Chucky, okay? I think I think your average sane human being <laughs> doesn't doesn't like Chucky. I'm sorry, Dino. I love you, buddy. I love you, man. But Chucky is so boring, dude. God, he's so boring. God, he's awful. So I feel like, yeah, Chucky feels like one of those killers that like if we include him in the in the rotation, there's a decent chance he'll just get banned, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dino. I'm sorry. I just, I can't, bro. Like, I want to like him. I just can't. But, like, fuck. Boring to play as or against both. I think both is boring. Like, I think both of it's boring, honestly. But, yeah, I don't know. Hey, Prions, stop it. Knock it off, man. Knock it off, brother. Please. All right. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Alexi on demo. We'll see if they, we'll see if we can slow down the momentum of uh, Dingatrons now. Um, builds seem pretty good. Again, this is in tier two or tier three balancing, I think, as well. So demo does have a lot of restrictions. Like the survivors are going to be missing a lot of the stronger perks, which is obviously going to help out the killer a bit too. Goes for a fast shred there, but actually melee is instead. We've all been there. We've all been there. This path pallet pretty safe though. I'm not really. Are, are they bugs? Oh, I think they're bugged. I'm. I, yeah, they're bugged. Yeah, they're bugged. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah, you can just back out. Yeah, you can just back out. I'll, I'll even, I'll even just DM them. Wait, are they fixed? Wait, they're fixed. I was gonna message him and tell them that he can just restart. He still can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 good, 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 Yeah, that was kind of dumb. There's like a weird bug that happens with killers sometimes where like when you, when you like, when you like first load into a match, sometimes you can't use your power. Like you'll go to press M2 and it'll automatically M1. So yeah, I thought that they, tr I thought that they were trying to send a, a, a really fast shred, but no, they were just bugged out. That happens with like, that happens with like Huntress sometimes too. Like sometimes as Huntress, you'll, like you'll go to like throw a hatchet and then she'll just put it away and you're like, what? And you're gonna throw the hatchet, and then she's, and then, and then she'll put it away. And I think you have to like lunge or something to reset it. Like you gotta like, it's a weird. I don't. It's weird. It happens. It happens just with like a bunch of different killers. A bunch of. It's weird. It's very odd. I don't know. So yeah, that's unfortunate. I definitely feel like that was a that was a rough early game considering that bug. So I'm kind of cool with just giving them a very fast restart. That's fine with me. That is a okay with me. All right, all right, all right, all right. I can't imagine being a dev of behavior. Got to be in crippling tech debt. What does that even, what, what, I don't even know what that even means. Like, what do you mean by that? What do you mean, man? I feel like, dude, I feel like behavior, I've been saying this forever, but like, I feel like what this game needs the most, and I think it's also impossible to do realistically, but I also feel like this game needs like a DVD 2.0. Like it needs to do like what Overwatch did and make like DVD 2. Realistically though, I don't think that's actually ever going to happen because it's probably not realistic. But I think that would do wonders for this game to just get like a full reset. Anyway, here we go. Um, has Blackheart and uh, Barber's Glasses, the pretty much the add-ons we're gonna see every single time. Bamboozle and Double Regression. So I feel like for builds, this is like typically, like this is kind of like a standard like aggressive build. And I feel like a more safe build would be like replacing Pop with no end. But this feels pretty, pretty standard. This feels like pretty much what, what what you'd expect to see on a uh, on a uh, Demogorgon player. Um, this feels like more the type of build that we're like if you're feeling confident and you feel like you're going to be able to get a good result. Because again, these like perks obviously require you to get hooks. If you're not getting a lot of hooks, then you might not be getting a lot of pops. But we'll see. It's a really fast hit on the Claudette. She's going to run towards top side, staying near the block gens. Hopefully to buy her team time to get gens done on the other side. And it doesn't look like there's like too bad of a gen setup here too, which is actually pretty good for the survivors. Because a lot of times you can get some really nasty gen setups on cool tower, but it doesn't look like there's anything too bad here. I think it's just like a three gen top and then like one mid. Oh, good juke on that shred though. 
Oh, tries to go around the back of the demo. Tried to do the old slide through the booty tech, but it didn't quite work. That's really unfortunate because that's a really circular tile. Like that kind of feels like unnecessarily risky, to be honest with you. I don't. I actually like. I get that it's like funny to do, but like that tile, you could have like circled around that tile and been fine, right? Like. If that was like a dangerous tile, like if that was one of those like if that was like this pallet to our left or even this one that we're standing at right now Like these are really dangerous against demo because they're very like straight So you got to worry about shreds that filler was like super circular, right? Like you could have went around the, he could have went around the filler and been fine because it was so circular So that felt that felt a little unnecessary to me. I don't know. I feel like that, that, that felt like he was doofing up a bit But he does give Alexia down Finds the gen that was being doubled and hits it with pop too. So that's good. That's a lot of regression. He's gonna teleport back to hook too. Okay, 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 okay. Finds ace, doesn't manage to find Claudette right away. Might just decide to commit to ace though. Ooh, barely gets that shred. But does get it. That's why I said <laughs> crop check should say, I'm <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Also gets that shred too. Damn, really fast down on Ace though. Two really, really quick hits. And this hook might end up coming in right next to this gen that has a bunch of progress too, which would be massive. That's going to be really good hook positioning. Yep, perfect. Right on top of it. Pain res hits it too. So yeah, it has so like this, all this gen progress, not all of it, but a big chunk of it basically say goodbye to because that gen's just going to regress. The hook's right beside it. It's going to be really hard to work on that without the unhook coming through. So they might just have to like fast unhook to not give up all that gen progress, right? So they might have to send someone in to rotate right now because Alexi seems to be pretty content with committing to this to this Michaela. We'll likely eat a hit here. Good shred, good shred. Gonna throw a pop down on this gen on at, at three, two. And I imagine at this point they're probably trying to break the uh three gen top side, right? Or wait, what are they doing? Oh no, what are they doing? Oh no, what are they doing? Nothing. Wait, Watermelon's just running around top, and so is Claudette, and Nancy's kind of creeping in for this unhook now. But even if Nancy gets the unhook, she'll have the one-for-one one trade. Oh no, this is looking terrible for Dingatrons. This is looking so good for Alexi and Despair right now. Alexi can just secure the struggle stage, and if Nancy wants to get this, she has to basically one-for-one for, one for it, which is not probably not worth. And yeah, he goes struggle, and Nancy's still hovering. She's waiting for him to leave, and he is leaving. So Nancy will be able to, will, will, will be able to get the unhook now, but they have no gen progress. No gen progress to speak of for that. So that guy went struggle, and they got, like, basically nothing out of it. I mean, there might have been a little bit of gen progress earlier on in the hook stage, but, like, towards the end, there was nothing. They meet it, they, they, they meet it main to reset. And I'm a little surprised Alexi's not sticking days here. Gets a really big sh or sorry, gets another really good shred there. But again, a little surprised, because the ace was back in that general area. I'm surprised that they didn't look a little bit harder for ace. Because ace is death hook, right? Like you force that struggle stage. You kill ace there, and this is like almost like a guaranteed 4k. I mean, maybe guaranteed 4k is a little like aggressive in terms of wording, but like it's definitely you're definitely getting a huge result if ace dies here at four gens. You know what? No, I will say, I'll say pretty much a guaranteed 4k. Yeah, yeah, no, actually I don't even take it back. Good prediction there, though. Gets a tag on the water. Getting a lot of hits. Just gonna go ahead and kick this jungle gym pallet. And watery kind of back in the back area where there's nothing. See, I feel like... I feel like Alexi... I, okay, I feel like the, the thing is that Alexi maybe didn't realize it. Because obviously we know from the spectator point of view that they barely got any gen progress done. But Alexi probably expected a topside gen to pop, right? So maybe that's a big part of this too. Because like, we're spectating, so obviously we see everything. But like, from the killer's perspective, you're probably like, okay, they're probably going to pop a, 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 a topside gen for this, right? Nasty shred there, two on the ace, like max range. But realistically, you can kill, and even here, it might still happen. If you can kill Ace while still having this 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 uh, three gen top side, that's gonna be nasty, dude. They are on the they are on the gen eleven though. Rough angle to try to get a shred, but it lo looks like it looks like she wants to try to zone. Yep, zone comes through there, and Ace just gonna die. Did they pop eleven though? I think they popped eleven, right? Yeah, okay, they did pop eleven, so that is good. They at least they they, they at least got eleven, but there is still a three gen with like main one and three like that's still a three gen so like 
This is still pretty good for Alexi. Oh, portal's way back towards bottom. I actually don't like this, though. I would have loved to see Alexi more prioritize the Gen at 3. Like, the Gen at 3 is the most important gen right now, right? You have two gens top, two gens bottom, and then one gen right in the middle, right? Like, this is the most important gen right now. This gen turns either one of these sides into a 3 gen, basically. Like, not a very good 3 gen, but, like, at least, like, a loose 3 gen, right? And it's, like, clearly the number one highest priority gen for the survivors. And I think it probably should have been focused, especially with Pop. Bamboozles the T twice. The old double T bamboozle. And beautiful shred, too. They're just all landing, dude. This feels like this feels like another case of like that de of, the, of that like Nemi game we saw earlier, where just like everything's landing, everything's working. And yeah, they're not doing the three gen anymore. They're actually split. They're split on bottom gen and also main. So yeah, they're working two different. I think this gen at three is gonna get. This isn't a pain res, is it? Oh, it is a pain res. So it might get pain res. And that means that no, it didn't get pain res. So pain res hit main, I guess. Yeah, pain res must have hit main. And then pop goes down on this gen at three. But main looks like it might pop. Demo doing some parkour, getting some distance. Shack pout's already gone though. Oh, oh no, no, no! Look at the no, my what? You what? You what? I mean, water, watermelon. I guess he needs to upgrade his gaming chair, bro, because he just got fucking outplayed. I mean, I don't know what to say. He just got he just got outplayed. I mean, skill diff. You know, like what can I say? They did pop main gen, but dude, this could be a 4K2. This could literally be a fucking 4K2. And yeah, caught it gets found. Not going to break out the wall. I think maybe trying to fake breaking out the wall and then go back to the window. I think maybe thinking Claudette was going to double back around the window if they faked the wall, but not. And Claudette is still full health, so there is still like a minor chance of them recovering from this. But I would say it's like pretty minor. Like, they, they, like she has to win like a multiple 50-50s and then find her way the whole way across the map to like pick up her teammates somehow. And this is also going deeper into the map. Like she just went deeper into the map just now, so like... Yeah, and even even if you throw this pallet, you're still zoned deeper into 11. So yeah, tries to catch that one, but it doesn't work. Just zones it in shreds. So there you go. And I think, I think that's gonna be it, man. I think Alexi's gonna get another 4K2, 4K2 on Billy, 4K2 on Demo. Alexi just the 4K. There's pallets not even here anymore. Alexi's just the 4K2 machine, dude. Literally just a 4K2 fucking machine. Baits out that crouch tech too, and there you go. That's so that's so interesting because like that 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 was like the only time this whole game that I saw people really utilizing crouch, and it got baited both times there, which is really which is really bizarre. Because like every other situation, there, like there was like six different hits in this game that could have been avoided by crouching, that weren't, and then finally Claudette goes for it, and then they get baited. So yeah, Alexi just in their brains, I guess. I don't know, just all up in their brains. And yeah, that's a phenomenal result. That is a. That is an insane result. Again, like I feel like a four, I like got 4K one feels like it's like something that can happen in demo sets, but 4K twos are like, I'd, I'd say this is pretty rare. I'd say this is a pretty rare result that really shouldn't be happening a whole lot. Alexi just kind of popped the fuck off. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, tough for Dingatrons, dude, tough. Very, very tough. That's gonna, that's gonna put a lot of pressure on their killer. He's going to have to come in and basically, I mean, that being said, I guess we did just see Watery Melon get a 4K3 on Nemesis, right? So, I mean, I don't know, you know, I honestly don't fucking know. I really don't know anymore. Like, I like I, like I, I want to say that this is looking pretty good for Despair and that they're most likely going to win the set. Because, I, I mean, I am going to say that. I am going to say that. I think, I think the Despair is most likely going to win the set. I think they're going to be really far ahead here and I think they should feel good about their chances. But I, I, who knows? I mean, Nemi got a 4K3. You know, who knows, man? And if it's if it's watery melon on demo, then I'm gonna be even more unsure. Cause like apparently that motherfucker just wins every 50-50, no matter what, you know? So I don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Time to take the tiers again. Demo and Nemi to the top. True. Both of them going straight to tier one. 
Alright, it's gonna be fusion on killer. And um let me get these gamers back in, y'all. Who the fuck is slutty little back rever? What the fucking Christ, bro? Jesus hell. Um I wish this was more alphabetical, man. There we go. It's like somewhat alphabetical. Like it goes in alphabetical and then it resets. I say this every time, and it drives me nuts. What the fuck? I don't know, but invite them. No, dude. No. No, I'm not. Is it Fett? I don't think Fett plays Billy. If Fett did play Billy, that would probably be the kind of name he'd use, though. So, like, not not a crazy guess. What's a back rever? Back revving is when you basically get right up against a survivor before revving. Like, usually, it's, it's usually in reference to Billy, right? Like, a Billy that gets, like, right up like right up on you and then revs his chainsaw as opposed to like going for like a curve from far away like not back revving would be like going for a curve back revving would be like getting right on top of the survivor and then just getting like the insta chainsaw on him you know but i've heard people talk I've, I've heard people use back revving even without chainsaws like i've heard people talk about back revving with like wraith in terms of like running up on someone and then uncloaking with swift hunt you know like i know it's it's just like it's just like a common term now i guess for like getting right up onto a survivor than using your power like sexually? No, 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 no. There's nothing sexual about back revving. I just that like DVD players love calling themselves sluts. I think. You know. Apparently, for the survivors in that game, the hits felt awful. Well, I mean, yeah, that hit on Watery Melon at Shack was uh, was uh, kind of nuts. I mean, I think a lot of those other hits like were like were just like demo shreds, where like. I don't know, like, some of the demo shreds did look kind of nuts, but I also just feel like demo shreds are, are like that, you know? Like, demo's just fucking stupid. But, like, yeah, I mean, that one hit on Shaq was absolutely absurd, so maybe. I don't know, like, maybe it was really bad. It's hard to say. I'd have to see it from their point of view, because maybe our point of view was different from their point of view, and maybe it was really bad. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's, if so, that's tough. I'd be curious, like, if they check Alexi's ping, like, during this game. Like, I don't know, like, maybe Alexi's from somewhere where their ping is high or something? I don't know. Close up the counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and demo shreds. True. That's, that's the old saying. That's, that's the age old saying. Yep. Those three things are where it counts. Yep, 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 yep. Hail is old as time. They played the Billy set as well, and there wasn't an issue then. Yeah. Yeah, see, like, I don't, I don't, like, part of me wants to be, like, yeah, maybe they're, like, overreacting to, like, the demo shreds that obviously have, like, insane hitboxes. But, like, I don't want to, like, completely discredit them, right? Like, like, maybe they're right. I mean, obviously, that one M1 hit on the window was insane on Watery. So, yeah, I mean, maybe they're right. Maybe there was some weird shit going on. I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I'm not really sure what we can do about it. Because, yeah, it seemed like the, it seemed like the Billy set was fine. And unless, like, the ping is, like, constantly high, I'm not really sure what we can really do about it, to be honest with you. What do you think about a skin trucker huntress skin? I think you said skin twice. A trucker huntress skin that throws semi-trucks. <laughs> uh, man, I don't know. I, I, I think... I... <laughs> Sure. You know what? Sure. Why not? Why not, man? Just full commit to the meme. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Why not, dude? Fuck it. Bro, hit the shred in the Ormontile when there were, uh, when there was only air? See, the shred on the Ormontile really didn't look that crazy to me, honestly. Like, I know that, like, I, you're not wrong. Like, Ace did feel like he was almost the full air on the corner. But again, Demo is like that, dude. Like, Demo's hitbox is fucking stupid. I'm telling you. Like, if you don't crouch and you stay standing, the hitbox of that shred is fucking dumb. Like, that one was, like, a little fucky, yeah, but I don't think it was really that crazy. I think, like, that window hit on Shaq was really the only hit that game where I was like, yeah, that's undeniably fucked, you know? Um. Alright, here we go. So, Bamboozle, uh, Pop Pain Res, same build. Obviously, you can't go for anything late game because the win con doesn't allow it. Uh, we saw Chemtrap in one of the survivors, which is actually really interesting to see. Um, it's on, uh, it's on Yui. The old Chemtrap Gaming. That's, huh. Curious to see if that gets any value this game. Infusion, gonna definitely have to see if he can pop the fuck off super hard. Gonna throw a portal down on this unit too. It's actually portaling back bottom side, I believe. 
Oh no, just right back to mid. Okay, I see. He has a, he, he had a portal right there at mid. Does find Yui. Who's just wisely keeping this chase up towards top. Oh, does have a distance like that window safely. Oh, unless there's a fucking head on center for the logger. Gross. Gross. So good play by Nancy. Very, very solidly played. Dude, the head-on plays in main to like start out matches on cool tower are always the best. I think that was a hit through sprint burst. So I think Nia maybe held that spot on that four lane a little too long. Gets hit through sprint burst. That was a really good play from Fusion. Has his chase with Nia now. She has no exhaustion. Although the window is unbamboozled. I don't see why you don't just bamboozle the window, but you know, hey, what do I know? Um fakes the vault there I, this gamer's bamboozle is cosmetic dude it's a cosmetic bamboozle to be fair i don't think bamboozling this window was that huge of a deal but it is interesting might go for it no no good vault from nia and yeah he's got the bail he's got the bail from this chase this gen in the middle is being doubled, though, so he, does, so he does interrupt two different survivors here, but the problem now is that he has to take a chase with a full health survivor, right? So, like, even though he chases two survivors off the gen, this is still not a great position to be in. Ooh, just barely reaches that one. And one gen pops already. And does get the down, though. So down does come in, just one one gen pops for it, though, and with, with the win con being what it is, this feels like it might have been a little too slow of a start. I mean, he might be able to get pain res and pop both in this gen, which would be a massive benefit, if so. Well, I see has enough for chemical trap. I'm curious to see if this comes into play. There is like a pallet gym over there that, 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 that they could hypothetically use. Ports back to this gen. Can't get it with pop because it's still regressing. Does get tracking on these guys thanks to the portal. And interesting, it's injured Nia and also Yui who has to take a hit for Nia. And now Yui's kind of in danger too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, wait a minute. This actually could snowball. This is two fast downs in the same area? Okay. This is actually really important that Ace is getting this unhook when he is. If Ace was even like five seconds slower to this, this is like almost game over. Like the, the timings here are actually so important. Gets the hit on to Ace. Who do they stay on? Ace? They take the hook onto Alexi. Alexi gets picked up. Pallet throw by Ace. Lots of pressure, though. Goes for a really, really amphibious lunge. Pallet gym being used. And they're kind of getting back on their feet. That was good. I mean, they used a lot of resources, but they did manage to kind of recover a bit. Two, two of the survivors healed. So they definitely they definitely averted the danger, right? I feel like even right now, like if this Nancy dies, it's definitely not as bad of a spot as they were looking just like a little bit ago. Like they were it was looking real grim for a second there. But yeah, they, they basically recovered pretty well. Now this Nancy can use this filler, try to buy try to buy some time down here. Hopefully get some gen progress done. Oh, goes for another really amphibious. What the hell kind of ultra instinct shit was that? This motherfucker turned and like, it was like, there's a Neo right behind me. And just like fucking beeline to her. That was crazy. I don't even know how he knew. I, he might've just wanted to leave the chase. I don't know. I don't even know if he did know. He might've just wanted to leave chase and then happened to find a Neo, but that was crazy. Ooh, kind of catches her greeting the pallet and throwing it late and gets a shred through it. But the second gen's done and they're currently two more gens away from winning. And this is only the second hook. So yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like as long as I think at this point, if the survivors are really careful about positioning, they're going to be fine. Because like, I think the, the, the like, like, like the main thing to mention for the survivor or, or for the killer at this point is that he has broken a lot of pallets. Like they're like pretty much out of resources from the whole way from like mid to top. Like, I think the only pallets that exist on the map right now are bottom side. Like the entire like there, there might be like one pallet mid map somewhere, maybe. But pretty much every maze tile and filler topside is gone. I think this one at main is still there, but that might be like the only one. Um, so there's not very many pallets left topside and they're all bottom side. But that being said, as long as they just kind of play their health stages well and don't position badly, it shouldn't be too hard to get two more gens done, right? 
like the lack of pallets does make it a little a little bit riskier because if they are caught out of position they can't exactly just get away with it because they'll just get you know hit every single time but as long as they position well this is going to be really really tough i mean a few more gens popping as the wind con no one's even that close to dead all four survivors are going to be alive for a, at least a while longer and yeah uh mia's gonna be taking this chase with sprint burst and she's a fresh hook right no she's not a fresh hook actually yeah, she's she's. Was she just got hooked? Am I am I that dumb? She is. Yeah, I am that dumb. Zones out the window. It does get the down on on the Nia though. So it will be a rehook. But like, how much gen progress are they getting for this? Quite a bit. They're resetting on this gen. We're right on top of the portal. Not being too concerned about the information, I guess. That's gonna be Nia's second hook. Gen number three pops. That secures the tie at the very least. One more gen now wins it for despair. There is still like a three gen top side, but again, the three gen's not even good enough. You need a four gen, right? Like you need all four, which is kind of what's tough. I mean, hypothetically though, if Fusion kills this Nia like right now, the only pilot left top side is they get used. But this Nia needs to die, like, right now. Like, this Nia needs to die, like, yesterday. They're going to be breaking the portal and then slamming that gen. But, oh, it doesn't reach it. There's no palace here. You don't even have to, like, go for any risky dashes. You can just run her down. Oh. Oh. Tries to bait them into fucking up the body block, but they're not going to fuck it up. Nia stays up for a little bit longer. She is running towards the gen, though, which is interesting. But I don't think it matters. She's buying so much time with this. She's actually going to make it to some pallets, too, maybe. Nope. Goes down on her pallet. And is Ace going to try to... Nope, he's not even going to try to bother getting it. They could probably just double this and end the game, right? Yeah, they could just commit to this and end it, right? I mean, I mean, like, it's not pain res. So, so like, they could just commit to this and it ends the game for sure. So, yeah, they're, yeah I think they're going to do that. Yeah, Nia dies... Unfortunately, just not quite fast enough. That's going to be the fourth gen popping. Despair is going to take the best of three. Uh, that being said, Fusion might still be able to, like, squeeze out a 4K here, right? He still has this three gen top. So if he wants to get a 4K just for the sake of getting a 4K, he still maybe could, depending on how this plays out. But unfortunately, Despair's 4K is already going to be stronger no matter what. So they're going to win the best of three. But this is a really good set, man. This is a really good set. Really swingy. Like, I, like very bizarre, man. Like, big results on killers on both sides like nemi getting a 4k3 is crazy billy popped off and got a 4k2 demo gets a 4k2 and then now maybe a 4k1 even like really really big killer results in these sets it's very very interesting this is the only survivor that isn't a pain res so possibly the i don't know you could say the, the worst target right now but maybe not these guys are also healing out here but gonna grab this hook if he also if he spotted them resetting he could have just slugged and then maybe tried to end it but this is gonna take this hook up towards top and again we'll have pop goes the weasel now the other survivors see well like now it's pretty good because now i feel like every target is, is, is solid too right because now nancy's death hook and then the other and then, and then and then the other two people are pain reses so it feels like from here no matter who you down it's gonna be a, a good idea uh it's going to portal down towards bottom, I believe. No, nope, just towards mid. Does see someone rotating in for the unhook? At least I think he saw them. No? No, because they're not actually rotating for the unhook. And I there, there was nothing to see. Apparently, I was seeing things. So one of the survivors is going towards 11. And the other survivor is kind of hovering for the save. So, like, you was going to try to progress 11. But the problem here is that you don't have time, right? Like, you don't have time to finish that gen... By the time Yui die, or, or uh, by the time Nancy dies, like this would be a good play if you get that gen done for it, but you don't get the gen done for it. Ooh, crouch tech attempt, but aim one point. Ace is gonna get hit. This is gonna be a 4K one, yeah. This is gonna be a 4K one for Fusion. So yeah, actually, I mean, again, really, really good performance here for Fusion, regardless, right? Like a 4K one is demo is a really good result. Like realistically, I would say the average result for demo is something like six, seven stages with like the survivors getting some outs and everything, right? So I feel like the fact that he was able to get this 4K is still a really, really solid result for him. It's just, again, 
The killer from the last round, Strivers from, from uh, Dingatrons, unfortunately just got 4k tuned. And yeah, just one 4k a little stronger than the other. But if this was the first game, like if this was the first game of the demo set, I'd be like, damn, fusion popping off and giving his chance a good, uh, like fucking give his team a good chance to win this. Like I'd be, I'd be talking this up and calling this performance amazing. So to be fair to fusion, he did play this really well. It's just that I guess the, 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 the actual result he needed was just a really, really big ask. You know, it was a very, very big ask. So what are you going to do? Good try. I mean, Dingatron still played this really well. I still think they should be proud of their showing. I think their 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 Nemi set in particular was nasty good. And they definitely kept up with the spare really well. This is a really, really close matchup. These two, the, these two teams were very, very close. And this is a good best of three, man. I mean, decided by one gen, essentially. So GG's well played to spare. They're, 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 they're going to go ahead and take the 2-1 win. And that's going to move us into our final set of the day. Which is going to be Sorrow versus Four Dwight's One Locker. Uh, is Sorrow... A team that we've seen before, or am I dumb? Don't know. I don't think we've seen this team, have we? I think this will be a team that. No, 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 this is. Wait, Sav's on this team? Wait, now I'm confused. Oh, was this the team that Momo was playing with before? Oh. Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Yeah, yeah. So we so so we did see these guys like last week. I think. I think it was this last week. Um, and they'll be going up against Four Dwight's One Locker. It'll, it'll be four. It'll be Four Dwight's first. Four Dwight One Locker's first showing in scrims. But they are a team that I recognize. Right. I recognize a lot of their players. Again, someone pointed it out before, but they actually uh, were one of the teams that played in the first ever Swiss tournament that we had. So they've been around a while, like clearly have a lot of experience in the actual community and like kind of know, I have a pretty good idea of, of like what's going on. And this should be a good one. This should be a really good one. I'm, I'm, I'm real excited. Um, it's going to be Wraith, Pyramid Head, and then if we need the tiebreaker, it'll be Demogorgon. And uh, yeah, so it'll be Wraith, the Dog Saloon. And this will be really, I'm really curious to see how teams that are like, like really experienced. Because again, like I think our first set of the day was two teams that are like, like, like they're kind of like more like newish, but still like moderately experienced. Um, but these, but these are teams that I think are like pretty deeply experienced, right? Like, I feel like these teams should put out some good results here on the survivor end, most likely, considering our rule set's still pretty lax. But I don't know. Like, again, I don't know. Like, we'll still see. We'll see. I mean, I still think it's one of those sets that could be really swingy. Like, if you if you fuck up, even just like once or twice. So I would expect like at least decent results on the survivor end, but I really wouldn't be surprised still if the Wraith manages to pop off a good bit. Um, let me give you guys the map again. Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. And I'm not 100% sure if both teams are going to be ready immediately, but I mean we're pretty much on schedule. We're like five minutes ahead of schedule. So yeah, 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 yeah. All right, while we're waiting for them, I'm going to play some ads and get them out of the way real quick. Um, and then we'll see. Is is Momo playing tonight? Do you guys know? Or was Momo just playing on that first week? I'm not even sure. Swapa. All right. It's going to be Wraith set first. Um, Sorrow's Wraith up against the Survivors of Fortnite's One Locker. And then after that, we got four Dwight's one locker's pyramid head. So we'll see how it goes. Let me get to the gamers in Meow. Maybe. Perhaps I'll get the gamers in Meow. Wait, do I gotta is this is this me not accepting friend requests again? No. No, I think I'm good this time. No, I think I'm good this time, actually. I think I think for once I'm actually good this time. If I like focus really hard on the names. Okay, thank you. You know what? Thank you. Thank you. Fix it for me. Thank you. Perfect. 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 Oh, I hit the wrong button. I tried to run ads and I snoozed them instead. Fuck. All right. Perfect. 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 Let's go. So we got Cyber Eye, uh, Le Fish. I like this guy's name. Le Fish. Is four Dwight's one locker allowed to have four Dwight's? No. We, we, uh, we had a team earlier called McGowers that are all Megs. And they weren't allowed to run four megs, so no. 
No, absolutely not. No. Although I would allow four Dwights before I allowed four Megs, but I'm still not going to allow four of anything. So no. No, 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 no. Are they allowed to all gather in one locker? I mean, I would love to see that. Because, like, I've never seen that before, but I would be down to see it. Sure. I'm going to go ahead and say sure. That is allowed, yes. All right, here's the gamers. Luma, Bitsy, Lefiche, and Cyber Eye on Survivor. Going to be Dead Dog Saloon. Going to be Wraith from Swappa. Again, I feel like from Wraith here, I, I wouldn't expect them to deviate too much from the standard, which is probably going to be like Corrupted Invention, uh, Sloppy Butcher, Pain Res, uh, Bamboozle, right? With like Swift Hunt and Shadow Dance. That's pretty much like the standard Wraith build. Um, we have seen some deviations in the past. I think especially if we allow a lot of healing perks, which to be fair, we actually do allow a decent bit of healing perks. You could maybe make the argument of taking off Sloppy, but I feel like we allow... We allow some healing perks, but we don't allow so much that I think Sloppy becomes useless, right? Like, I think maybe with our old rule set, you could maybe argue that you don't want to run Sloppy because it doesn't matter. They'll just reset fast anyway. But, I mean, I don't know. We allow what? Like, we'll make it leader. Desperate measures. Like, those are basically, like, the best ones. So, might still be worth to run Sloppy, I think. I think Sloppy would probably still be valuable here. But, I think if anything would be deviated, maybe, like, Sloppy would be taken off in exchange for, like, Pop or something. Um, we have seen some psychos take off bamboozle, but I feel like that's a little bit rough. So like, I don't know. I feel like taking off bamboozle feels like the scarier thing to take off for me because then main building becomes a lot more abusable and then all, and it becomes like a strong place to be at all times, which is probably not great. You'll end up having a lot of your time wasted at main. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Wouldn't really expect much deviation there. I think it's just going to boil down to execution. And honestly, I love Wraith sets, man. I know, like, every time Wraith sets happen, I know a lot of the players are always like, uh, Wraith sets, because apparently Wraith is, like, miserable to play. I don't know. I have not played in a lot of in, in a lot of Wraith sets myself. I don't even scrim that much myself. I really should scrim more. But apparently Wraith sets can be, like, fucking miserable to play, apparently. But I love watching them, man. I think Wraith sets are great. I feel like there's so much, like, micro involved. And I feel like, especially on Dead Dog Saloon, right? Like, Wraith, Dead Dog Saloon... It feels like it's a lot of micro and it's a lot of like fair micro, right? Like survivors getting the better of the killer usually comes down to them making like really, really good plays on pallets that aren't necessarily safe, right? Like I feel like a, I feel like survivors beating a killer when when they're just kind of like running from safe tower to safe tower to safe tower and you're just like, well, I mean, what 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 like like what can the killer really do here, right? There's not really much opportunity, right? Like I know that's not always that simple most of the time, but you know what I mean. Like I feel like the fact that like Wraith, I feel like Wraith is almost always almost always in a spot where like you're at least in some danger, makes this really interesting, right? Like it really requires the survivors to really really be on top of their game and play well, and I like it. It just feels like there's a lot of potential back and forth. There's a lot of chances for each side to outplay each other. Which is interesting because of how basic of a killer Wraith is, right? Like, I feel like if there's, like, a Wesker set or something, it's like, yeah, I mean, con like, there's, obviously there's going to be constant outplay just because Wesker's Wesker. But, like, Wraith is, like, a pretty simple killer, bro. He just, like, goes stealth and gets, and gets fast and then runs up on you. But even still with him being simple, it's still, like, a ton of back and forth. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I enjoy it a lot from a spectator point of view, at least. And I'm curious to see how these guys handle this. We'll see how we'll see what Swappa can do. All right, offerings look good. So this feels like the type of again. This feels. I feel like I'm. I probably sound like a broken record. This feels like the type of uh, set though, where like if the survivors play correctly, they should be able to get some outs, right? Like they should be able to get some outs, but. Dude, I'm just. I I am a broken record. This is the same thing I've said about the last like three sets. If if, if the survivors start fucking up. This feels kind of similar to Demo in that way, actually, to me. This kind of feels on, the, on like, the same level as Demo in terms of, like, chance of it being a 4K. Like, I think if the survivors start fucking up a bit, it can definitely start to snowball fast. But, like, less so than Nemesis, right? I feel like, I, I, I feel like Nemesis was that one set where I was like, yeah, it can 4K, but, like, it really shouldn't. This is one of those sets where, like, it can 4K, and, like, there's at least, like, a decent chance that it will... But realistically, the survivors can get out as long as they play well. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. He actually does circumvent uh, Sloppy. So I guess maybe... Or no, he does have Sloppy. Wait, what's he... Oh, he doesn't have Corrupt Intervention. Oh, shit. That's interesting. See, I've actually heard this a lot, too. I've heard that this is one of the sets where you can maybe justify not having Corrupt. 
kind of ballsy, right? Like, kind of ballsy not giving yourself that, that, like, early game buffer, but maybe it'll pay off. We'll see. If you can really pop off early and get some hits and downs early. So far, really good play from this Fang. Being really patient on this window, and then also leaving the tile really well played. Doesn't leave the tile. I thought I heard her running away. Goes to show, goes to show how fucking good I am, bro. This is, see, this is why I suck at spirit. I thought I heard her running away. <laughs> I didn't hear that at all. But still, Fang playing that very, very well. Very, very well played on that pallet. Adam will get, sorry, that's not Adam. That's Tap is going to get hit at main. He'll be running upstairs. Bamboozle on the window and Tap's going to be in some trouble now. Unless he's got, he does got, he does got. He's got balance. He's going to be able to balance his way towards this pallet. Good stun as well. Very, very well played. He's making his way towards the window now. Pretty good tile. That'll at least force the bamboozle. Double bamboozle. Cheeky. Thanks to this filler, though. Good stun. Beautifully played. Survivors are doing a really good job so far. Pallet break comes in. And this should be the down now. This should be the down. Ooh, the vault on the, the Z-Wall Infinite. Not the Z-Wall Infinite. Somebody stop this man. Okay. The man's been stopped. Still really good. Galagen's going to pop. Gen behind Gallows is going to pop. And then Fang also has a gen very close too. Two gens close to three gens are, are going to be done. This gen will probably get hit by pain res. But two gens done. Most importantly, Gallows gen too is a really, really important generator. Because... Gallows Gen's kind of like right dead center of the map. It's really easy for the killer to pressure. It's very dangerous unless you have like balance landing or sprint burst or something up. So it's a really, really good gen to get out of the way. He is going to locate the gen that has progress though. So it's going to get pain res and pop. So lots of regression going to come through there. But still, pretty good start from the survivors, honestly. And the unhook going to come in. No, just kidding. Kate going to think differently about that one. Is instead going to decide to bail. Quick and, quiet, uh, quick and quiet on Kate should tell Swap a thing or two about what else is going on in that build. Good play on this pallet, though. Pallet break coming through. Oh, can't quite decide who they want to go for. Is going to, I think, choose Nancy now. And the unknown comes in too. Okay, well played, well played. Kate takes the first hit. This will give this will give Tap at least a chance to run into main a bit. As a matter of fact, it looks like Swabo does not want to go for the tunnel out. Which does kind of make sense. It kind of feels like we're getting into the stage now where like by the time, yeah, I was gonna say, by the time he gets the down on him, this gen pops for sure. But then you only have two gens left. Kind of feels like you're getting to the spot where if you come to a tunnel out, you're just gonna lose all the gens by the time it happens, right? Like this feels like territory of not tunnel out. You know, you can't really justify tunneling out at this point. You would lose way too much and end up with like three stages by the time the game's over. I think Swappa, maybe recognizing that, is going to go after somebody else. Finds injured Kate. This feels like an okay target. Just going to keep bamming the windows as she vaults. Still has a pallet here, though, too. This pallet not the safest, though. This, bam this, 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 this window is still bamboozled, too. She has the back window. But does she make it very far? Does she make it to this filler? I think she does, actually. Oh, never mind. She doesn't. I think she might have thrown that pallet late, thinking that the killer wouldn't swing. Because that looked like one of those like late throw type of hits, you know? I don't know. They're hard to say. But they are split on three different gens right now. It's a lot of progress coming in. This gen will likely get hit by pain res. And then uh, Fang will have a lot of progress on the on, on this on this bottom side gen behind Gallows. So, yeah, I mean, progress looking good for the survivors right now, though. Gens are cruising, dude. They're cruising. Pros pop down on this gen and will make his way back towards mid. But the survivor's in pretty firm dominant control right now, man. This is like, this is tough. Because, like, who do you go for right now, right? Like, there is an injured tap upstairs, so maybe this makes sense. Yeah, I mean, this feels like maybe your best bet. But, like, both the other survivors are full health and their own gens across the map. If you go for them, it's obviously going to be a bit of a struggle because you have to like hit them twice in order to even try to down them. You can't really camp the hook because there's too much gen progress now to justify it. Good block on the window. That's really good. That's actually really good. Fang has to run in and get the sun hook now and get hit for it. And she won't be in the in the in the best position for this chase either. Oh, 
for the people from Nancy. And she's gonna go down. Uh, what's he thinking? What, what's he thinking? Like buckle up or something? Because we don't allow that. Is he like, is buckle up allowed? Is buckle up allowed? Is buckle up allowed? <laughs> I don't, like, what did he think she had? Would golf maybe? I don't know. Maybe we'll go. No, we we'll wouldn't do it either. I don't think anything does that, right? Made for this? That's not allowed. No, I don't think. I don't think there's anything that's allowed there. They're 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 kind of tripping the last. Oh, the pain res. They were tripling it, but the pain res was perfectly in time. And now Pop goes. The weasel's gonna get put down on it too. I think. Unless they, unless they die for it. Are they gonna die for it? Nope. They're not gonna die for it. Pop's gonna come down too. Tons of regression. Ooh. Oh my lag burst. Holy hell. What the fuck was that? Fang sprint bursting away very laggily and she's going to be okay. Everyone's injured now though. And they're trying to get this last gen done. Interestingly enough, them trying to get that, them like really greeting this gen might cost them. This might cost them. Because now K takes it down and this might be another pop goes the weasel. And yeah, like this is actually kind of starting to look a little. Is everyone lagging? What is that? What the fuck? Is it me? Am I lagging? Is the server dying? This gen is just getting fucking bashed, dude. It's just getting hit by regression over and over. They're back on main gen, but yeah, they're up to like four stages now. And everybody's injured means that it's a little scary. Feels like they're trying to play really safe around this gen now. Oh, just kidding. Cast a curse. Down goes Nancy. Fang's the fresh hook, so I think they're really wanting to protect Fang. Because she's fresh hook. She's 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 worth she's worth the most amount of stages. I thought she was gonna go for a CJ, dude. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> it was kind of looking like it. But I'm pretty sure they like probably want to just protect Fang. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of surprised that she's even working this like this. Like, I thought she would just bail and they would just take the, this like this like main gen, right? I mean, th th this kind of happened anyway, I guess. Sh she's gonna grab the unhook. The final gen pops. See, but like this, she's worth so many stages, dude. She's worth so many stages. Nancy's gonna body block for her. But the fact that the Wraith knows where she is too, right? Just being able to like locate her. Unless they can get a gate open and then also send tap to body block or something. And Fang makes her way back towards Shaq. Sell the Shaq pilot. Which she will throw. The gate is open. Yeah, to be honest with you, they might like they, they don't even have to body block with uh with, with tap. Like even even if Nancy takes a hit for her, like at, th at this point, like anyone can die for this, right? Tap does get there though. But yeah, Nancy is only worth one stage. She'll she'll happily die for Fang if if she can. Even Kate, too. Look at them. They're, they're like, take me instead. Take me instead. Take me instead. This is so good. Nate. I said Nate. I was trying to say Kate and Nancy. I guess if you combine them, they become Nate. They they, 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 they actually swap genders and they become Nate. Nate both dropped back because they're both only work. They're, they're both only work only worth one stage each. So there we go. That uh, that's going to be the kill on Nancy. And that's going to be six stages. Six stages, three fresh. Very well played from the survivors here, man. My lord, very, very well played. Like, actually fucking nasty play from these guys. So, uh, that, that's a pretty good start here. I mean, we'll see. That being said, like I said, I think Wraith, Wraith in these settings should be, like, at least a little bit of a struggle, right? Like, it's, it's not exactly, like, free, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, like, a super struggle either, right? Like, this is a good result. Not an unbeatable result. Like you never know. Like the, the survivors do have exhaustions. There, like there, there is a lot that they have in our in our settings that they don't in some other settings. Realistically, we still could see this set flip the other way. But that's an that's a fantastic start on the survivor end for sure. Very very well played. All right, let's see who the killer is for uh, for Dwight's one locker, and we'll see how they do. They got to beat six stages, three fresh. So they got to get six stages, four fresh or seven stages or higher. And then they'll win. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that was just a phenomenal performance. I feel like, I feel like they're like, again, like that was one of those games where I feel like their micro was just so on point. Like it felt like it was so difficult for the Wraith to really get anything going. Like every hit had to be like earned. 
so in, in like such a difficult way like it was like it was like like basically none of it was free it was all so so difficult they got to fight tooth and nail for it essentially and that's tough man that's always tough um is swapo playing survivor swap is the first person i saw i'm just gonna invite him if he's not playing survivor i guess other gamers could join there we go sick all right all right all right all right all right all right Putting Wraith in tier two doesn't make sense. Please explain, sir. Look, man, look, 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 I know. All right, we've been talking about it all day. I'm probably gonna put him in tier three. I, I think when we were deciding tiers, the reason why I thought that is because a lot of our balancing is not based around like the highest level play, okay? It's based around like kind of newer teams. And Wraith, Dead Dog is honestly fucking deadly. It's like super deadly, man. Like we've seen like even even with like the old rule set where we allowed like Delhi Unbreakable and shit, we still saw Race getting like 4K two sometimes and shit. Like it was, it was absolutely a thing. Cause like a lot of new teams, like again, I think in order to do well against Wraith, you have to have like really good micro and my, I mean, it just requires you to play really well. And I feel like on the Wraith end, it doesn't really require like, like I feel like a team of survivors that isn't really on point can get punished even by a wraith that isn't like crazy good if that makes sense because it's not like there's like a ton of like mechanical skill in the race end right like it like it feels like when it, when, like, it kind of felt like when it was like newer teams versus newer teams it felt like wraith results were always really high but that being said i think even our newer teams are improving a lot to the point where yeah i think him being in tier two is too high yeah like i i think tier three is still fine to be honest with you like he, I'm, I'm sorry but there's no way he's going tier four like we are going to allow exhaustions against wraith because I do think, like, again, a lot of our teams, especially, like, our newer teams, Raid Dead Dog is a struggle, man. I'm telling you. Like, it's a struggle. It's a hard set for, like, teams that are, like, more newer. And Raids still end up getting really big results. So I know it's kind of crazy to see, like, you know, exhaustions against Wraith and everything, but I honestly, I've, we've still seen Wraith putting up crazy results, and I feel like it's going to have to just be okay. But Wraith really should have less reset perks, yeah. I kind of forgot that we have him in Tier 2, so, yeah, he actually does get a lot of reset perks. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he should definitely be in tier three. Yeah, yeah. Move Wraith to Toba Landing. Yeah, that's a great idea. I love that one. Toba Landing. Yep, let's do it. Yep, 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 yep. Bro, how about that new map? I can't remember what the fuck it's called. The fucking theater map, dude. I kind of love that theater map. I think the main issue with that map is just that it's fucking gigantic. But maybe the fact that it's big will be okay because he's so fast. I don't know, man. Less reset perks and no DS is basically necessary, though. Yeah. Yeah, true. They get DS, too, right? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, there's like there's like DS in this set, too. In, in this set, too, huh? Wow. Okay, you know what? Actually, maybe maybe the, maybe the set really isn't over, honestly. I kind of, dude, what? Yeah, what? honestly, what was I thinking? You know, all right, I'll just admit it. Look, I think even with my line of thinking with of, of Wraith being kind of newer for or harder for newer teams, yeah, oh, dude, to, past Tofu was kind of crazy. I don't know, dude. I don't know what past Tofu was, was talking about. Wraith should definitely be in tier three. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm on about. Because, yeah, like, even like, like, I feel like DS in this set is super brutal, too. To be fair, okay, to be fair, you got to keep in mind that we were used to seeing Wraith with, like, Delhi Unbreakable and, like, Circle of Healing and shit, right? Like, we were used to seeing that kind of shit. So I feel like I was like, hey, this is a good step in the right direction, right? Because, like, Wraith were even 4Kng with that kind of shit. Like, Wraith were getting 4Ks when even we had, like, like, we had, like, DS Dead Hard, and then we had, like, fucking Delhi Unbreakable, and then we had, like, Circle of Healing, you know what I mean? Like, we had some, like, ridiculous balancing, and race were still getting 4Ks sometimes. So I was like, you know, I don't want to take too much away. Like, survivors are still struggling even with all this shit. But yeah, no, fuck them. I think at the end of the day, this is, I think this is just, like, a skill matchup. And I, and I, and, and like, and, like, I think at the end of the day, survivors will still be able to do well with the restrictions. And, and like, I think the survivors that, that, that are going to struggle with, like, the, with, with, like, the, 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 the reset perks, then they're, like, they're going to struggle regardless, right? So, like, whatever. Whatever, man, whatever. It's fine. Anyway, here we go. Uh, no one on the build for Luma, which I think is good to see. Um, yeah, so no Sloppy. Is running Corrupted Intervention this time around, though. So no Pop goes the Weasel. Uh, finds Jacob. Bam, gonna come through in the window as he passes by. That's pretty good. This pallet also... Okay, I was gonna say this pallet... When it gets thrown, you can like hit them over the little like railing thing. But instead, it's just gonna get kicked. Jake trying to use some of these fillers that are outside of this. 
Ooh, very aggressive swing. A little amphibious. Halligan's thrown here, too. There was some sparks going on on the... Uh... Ooh. He's going to uncloak. Interesting. There was some sparks on the Gallows gen, and yeah, I think Luma might decide to turn around and go after that. They are split on three gens right now. But also, you gotta keep in mind, because we allow these exhaustions, that's probably just bounce landing, yeah. And there goes Nancy. She's she's out of this bitch. Finds Claudette at the bottom of the street. Claudia doing a pretty good job with this pallet. Oh, Luma trying some shit. Full sending it, but not quite gonna work. It's good stun there from Claudette. And so far, this is a really good start. This is also the DS driver, too, which can be pretty huge. Throw Shack Pilot as well. Really strong early game so far. Still nobody going down. Water Tower Gen's almost done. Luma's gonna head over there to interrupt that one as well. But still, no health states lost. Ooh, actually, this should be a hit. So does get attack on a swap up. Gonna turn around though. Gonna catch off Claudette. This pallet's still thrown though, isn't it? I don't think it ever got broken. And she's gonna be heading towards Water Tower too. Great pathing. She should be able to make this. Force a kick. And Jen's still being worked. Still lots of Jen progress around the map. No Jen's popped yet, but they're getting close. There's just a lot of progress on the map. Ace still has multiple pallets here. He's going to head over to this kind of makeshift maze tile. Pallet break comes through there, too. I mean, the, dude, the survivors are doing so well right now. Wrong offerings on the survivors, by the way. Minus 0.5. Wait, really? Oh, no, that's so sad. Oh, no. Wait, which offering was it? Was it like Hatch or Shack or something? Hatch or Shack? Hatch or Basement? Ah! There's a down swap, but three gens done, though. Three gens popping for this first down. That's massive. That's huge. Pain res comes in. I mean, I say that's huge, but if really, realistically, that's like similar pacing to last match, right? Last match had like two gens done as the first one came in, and then the third gen was close, and then it popped shortly after. Like, it popped shortly after the unhook. So this really isn't that far off pace from the first game. Again, a little bit of a better pace than than, than the uh, first survivors. But not by a whole lot. Ooh, doesn't quite get the reach around. I think was going for the hit on the Jake, but accidentally hits Ace instead. Ooh, okay. Takes advantage of the grade there and gets a tag, though. So Jake will get injured. He's going to run main, but Bamboozle with Shadow Dance makes main a little bit less free. Oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, noes. Yeah. That's... Well, you know, I mean... Yep. That's, yeah. hey, that's three stages. That's three stages right there. And then this is going to be stage number four now. That's that's unfortunate. That's really sad. That's really depressing. These guys want such a good start, too, dude. Like, we can't say guaranteed they get the win, right? Because, like, no one was still there with the, in, in the back pocket and everything, right? Like, it, it was going to be close. Because, like, all, all it really takes is, like, for Luma to get, like... Like, if Luma just finds, like, two more hook stages... And then finds, like, a fresh hook or somebody worth a lot of stages, like, uh, late game with no end... That's, like, enough, right? So we can't really say that it, this would have, like... But maybe, right? These survivors had such a good start, dude. Oh, they had such a good start. That's so depressing. Son of a back rever. Agreed, dude. These back reven sons of bitches. I can't believe it. I mean, technically, they're only at five stages, so technically, it is still possible. Technically. I mean, realistically, no, but technically, yes. Ooh, Nancy getting away from that one. Gets a good stun there as well. And finds Claudette, but she's in a tough spot in a complete dead zone. She's going to go down. She's also a fresh hook. Worth like a gazillion stages. Bro, look at the gen progress, man. Honestly, you there's literally no way to know. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way to know. Because I feel like they had enough gen progress that they really maybe could have gotten this. You know? 
Like, with a, with a whole other survivor in this match, dude, like, this gen's maybe even just done by now, you know? That's so tough, dude. That's so tough. It was, like, actually going to be so close, but I think, I think instead it just becomes a pretty obvious killer win. Um, really, they're currently sitting at five stages, three fresh. But the next hook stage of any kind wins. So, if this guy gets camped to struggle, or even if anybody else goes down at any point, they basically just do not take any more downs from here on out and also escape. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not looking too great from here. Kind of heartbreaking, man. Kind of heartbreaking for these guys. Because, like, I feel like they were in a position where they maybe could have got this win, this win con, even with the win con being really tough. Jake tried to emote to go under pallet, but he didn't quite make it. Luma's going to go interrupt this gen on the bottom that, 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 that they knew was being worked. Ooh, balance coming through. But I'm going to get this pick up. As Nancy goes down, but Nancy's a fresh hook. She's the final pain. Well, yeah, the final pain res. Pain res might hit this gen on the bottom of the street. And yeah, this secures it. This hook right here secures it, though. So, yeah, that's gonna be the game-winning hook. Man, that's so unfortunate, dude. Like the like 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 the like the unfortunate part is that there's no there's like nothing for us to do about this, right? Like it feels kind of unfair to like make people replay and then not use the start they got, right? Like I don't know. Like if we're that far into a game, we can't really just make people replay. But at the same time, like really, what else can we do? Unfortunately, there's no like system in DVD. Like, it'd be, it'd be lovely if there was a system where you can, like, pause the game or something and then have people, like, reconnect or some shit, right? Like, that'd be sick if we had something like that, but nothing like that exists. Unfortunately, we gotta make do with what we got, and, um, yeah. Yeah, no. Because, honestly, even a replay here for the survivors, even that wouldn't really do them justice. Because they had like a they had like an exceptionally good start to this game, right? So even like even if, even if we even if we replayed it, we don't even know if they would have gotten the same good start, you know? So like even that's not really fair. So I don't know. Just pretty unfortunate all around. Then it comes in immediately. Jake Sod will make it, I think. I don't think it's a behavior doesn't care about such quality of life. Again, I think a big part of it just comes down to like those kind of features being really, really hard to add because of the way that the game is like was made, right? Like I think I, again, I've th I've talked about this a lot. I'm no I'm no developer, I'm no programmer, but like I know that this game was coded like seven plus years ago, and I don't even I highly doubt this game was even coded in a way that where like they expected it to like pop off and be the game that it is today, right? Like, it's probably just like a pro like, like basically any code that is added to the game today is being built off of code that's like seven, eight years old, right? And I think like adding things like being able to pause the game and have players reconnect, while not impossible, I think it just, I think it takes a ridiculous amount of like programming work and effort and also would probably cause a bunch of bugs that would then have to be changed. Like, it's just not really realistic, right? Which is what again? Why I was talking about like a DVD 2.0, you know? I think that's why like something like a DVD 2.0 would be really, really nice in the future, so that like things like this would be easier to add. Again, realistically, probably never gonna happen, but I also think expecting them to add things like you know pause features and reconnect features, the no head coming through, the no head coming through with the 4K. I think expecting them to add things like that is, uh, yeah, it's just tough. It's very, very tough. Like with 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 what they're working with, it's just not really realistic to expect them to do that kind of thing. I think the features of the asset might even design them from start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it also seems like that too, right? Yeah. Like it feels like that's the kind of feature that even if it's not built for it, it's still pretty hard. So yeah. Just not really uh Yeah, not really ideal. Not really ideal. Hey, Dev, it looks like you have the wrong map for, for Dead Island Saloon. No, 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 don't, don't, don't agree with Bucket Man. Fuck you guys. This is the right map. Bro, I'm sorry. If your guys' fucking 12 is like my 10, like my 9 or 10, you're, you're crazy, dude. You're just crazy. I'm sorry. This is the correct map. Fuck you. What, what, why is that every map has main at 12 and then shack at 6, except Dead Dog Saloon for some reason? Gamers just decided to go all wacky wonky. Like, what, what, what the fuck are you guys talking about? 
why would main building not be 12 and Shaq be 6? Like, like, you know, like it is on every other map ever to ever exist ever. Like, what? Why? But why, though? Nah, man, you guys are crazy. Sorry. Main still 12? No, no, no. Main would be like... Main would be like 1 or 2, wouldn't it? With the map that you guys are telling me to use. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, you guys are crazy. Anyway, uh... Pretty unfortunate way for it to happen, but four Dwight's uh, one locker end up going up 1-0 in the race set. And that's going to take us into our uh, Pyramid Head set, which looks like it looks like it's going to be Cyber Eye on, on Pyramid Head up against the Survivor from Sorrow. Um, hopefully, hopefully co uh, connections are all good and stable this time around, because, yeah, that was really, really unfortunate. Because those survivors were looking really strong. Just, again, I mean, lag outs suck. Like, what, like really, what can you do about it? Um... But we'll see what they can do here. Uh, let me get the gamers in. I'll dub up. Thank you. Thank you. Fuck. But the pyramid set should be interesting. I mean, I would assume Wrecker's Yard. Dino told me to just accept to, to basically like to basically like uh, like every map is going to be whatever makes the most sense. So I'm just going to say Wrecker's Yard and I'm just going to switch the map to Wrecker's Yard and I'm not even going to I'm not even going to wait for confirmation. It's got to be Wrecker's Yard. So Wrecker's Yard and Pyramid Head. Um, this should be interesting. I feel like we haven't seen Pyramid Head in a while. He's a really interesting killer to watch. So we'll see how this goes. Cyber Island Killer, we'll get these survivors back in. I understand what the gen icon and the hook icon means, but what does the barbecue icon mean? That's fresh hooks. That's fresh hooks, which is basically the first time someone's hooked. It's like the final tiebreaker. So like hypothetically, say that both teams get the same amount of gens. Like say they both finish all five gens and they both get like like seven hook stages, right? If one killer got seven hook stages, but he's hooked every survivor at least once, and the other one hasn't, then the survivor, then then the, then the killer that hooked everybody at least once gets the win. It's a way to like kind of prioritize, like going after other people and stuff, you know? It's just the final win condition. It doesn't even come into play that often, but sometimes it does. People just don't associate barbecue with fresh hooks anymore. True. We should put like Grim and Brace up there or like or like Pain Res or something. <laughs> I think that's the new I think that's the new fresh hook thing now. Yeah, no one even no one cares about barbecue. No one cares about getting four sacks of barbecue anymore, you know? Sad. Fucking sad. I mean, I say sad, but it was actually for the best, dude. I don't know. Like maybe this is a hot take. I know everyone got mad. They were like, "They took away our barbecue and chili extra blood points." But bro, like who the fuck was enjoying feeling like you had to only have three perks every game? Like, it felt so dumb. Like, I feel like it was like, you almost, it almost felt like all your builds were three perks because you had to have barbecue. Like, I think making the general blood point economy easier and then, and then, like, not forcing you to have to run a perk every game felt great. Like, it feels great, man. I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I think, I think the barbecue change was great. I, I don't give a fuck. Corrupt Interven? Wait, what? Wait, did I say Corrupt, not Barbecue? Or wait, are you saying that you need Corrupt? Because I, I, I don't think you need Corrupt. It was a comfy perk to run? I think it still is a comfy perk to run. I don't even see Swappa in here, dude. Like, I see that everybody's ready up, but I don't even see him. So apparently this is Swappa here somewhere. I don't know. So, like, why? If you guys disagree, like, why? Did you just like the feeling of getting double blood points? Because, like, you guys realize what happened, right? Like, they made it so that barbecue do didn't give you bonus blood points, but they also made everything in the blood web cheaper so that even if you get less blood points, you still get, like, the same, if not more, levels per, like, game, you know? Like, realistically, you're actually leveling up more per game than you were before. It's just that you don't get stacks of barbecue and get 100% bonus from barbecue every game. Like, realistically, you're leveling more, and the blood points are more, and it's freer, right? Like, it's more free, and you don't even need a perk slot for it, and you're no longer, like, tied to a perk. So, I don't know, man. I already have minus one perks. I already have minus perks. Uh, sorry, minus one perk slot, though, with Corrupt. I guess, but I don't think you have to do that to yourself, right? I mean, I guess you, you could say, sure, I mean, why not, but... See, you guys say anti-camping, but, like, barbecue sometimes did the opposite. Like, if you got a hook with barbecue and you didn't see any auras, then then it's Camp City, baby. It's fucking Camp City, you know? Hello? 
I don't know if barbecue is necessarily the best anti-camp. I think plenty of people still camp the tunnel, you know? Like, obviously, people want to get their four stacks or whatever. Bro, did he spawn crouching? Is that possible? Did I just see that correctly? Did that motherfucker just spawn crouching? What the hell? Anyway, um... Double range of the add-ons for Saburai. It looks like it's going to be Corrupt, Agi, Pop, Pain Res. Pretty solid build. Um, Agi obviously really good on a map like Wrecker's Yard. Uh, ooh, can't quite track. Uh, kind of like struggling to track this guy a little bit. We're maybe looking for somebody else. I'm not sure. Whoa, whoa, is this lag? What's happening? Am I lagging? Are they lagging? Is the server dying again? Oh, God, I'm scared. Good shockwave hit on the Swappa there. Follows him the whole way to the pallet. Oh, that's a good double back. Swappa's going to be in trouble. Does he have a filler here? He does not. And that motherfucker is dead. Oh, he has a filler here. But gets zoned. And down he goes. So pretty fast down. Pretty fast down. Jen's just getting started. Nancy has a good bit of progress, but that's it. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Gonna get a pain res, most likely. Probably gonna be able to get in there with, with Pop as well. So, Pyramid Head's an interesting killer because I feel like a lot of the times, like, again, I've, I keep getting told by, like, high level players that Pyramid Head is basically, like, a gamble set where, like, because his shockwaves are just such, like, gambles every time, it feels like half the time that like, you get, like, results on Pyramid Head, it just boils down to, like, gambling with the fucking shockwave and, you know, like even like best players versus best players, it just like a lot of times it feels down. It, it feels it feels like it comes down to like coin flips. So like, yeah, I hear that a lot, and I'm curious to see how Sabrai plays this and whether or not we're gonna see a lot of those like kind of risky shock waves being gone for. And I think whether or not they land might end up being the telltale sign here, right? I think you, I definitely think you can play in like a more safe play style, a more like safe kind of a play style. But the survivors can also punish that too. So it just kind of depends on how it goes. But obviously, if you're going for really aggressive shockwaves and they're working, then you can pop off really hard. Interesting. Not forcing the one for one. Oh, it actually doesn't even get the hit on the ace there either. That was what just happened. That was weird. Like not really forcing the one for one and going for the double hit. But the the actual second hit on the ace didn't even come through. It was a little bit early. Ace was still kind of an iframes. It didn't look like it was an iframes. Like it looked like it was on, it was on time, but it must have just been like a little bit too early. Um. But he's going to trade hooks. Claudette now being put on hook. Is there like a really good gen setup over here or something? It seems like he's just juggling hooks deep in that corner, which is kind of interesting. Okay, he's actually actually committing pretty far out now. I'm going to put Pop because the weasel down on this gen. There's not really no, there's not really that crazy of a of a gen setup over there. I thought maybe they were like they, they were trying to just keep staggering hooks on like a really good gen setup or something, but no. Like the hook positioning being that deep in is interesting. I don't know if I like it. We'll be able to follow up with Chase on Claudette if they want to. Claudette does have crane. Does she have I was gonna say she seems like she kinda wanted to get chased with her pathing. So I was gonna say I kinda felt like she might have had decided to strike, and she does. Ooh, doesn't get down by that swing. That's going to buy her some more time. Needs to be careful of the goop. She cannot step in the goop. The goop will be very bad. Must be careful of the goop. Ooh, but just pass away. That's so good. Looking out for shock waves. Watch out for the goop! <laughs> okay, I was more worried about the goop than I was the sword. Okay, so DS will get some value here. Can immediately just vault this this LT and keep the and keep the uh, the chase alive for a little bit longer. Does the killer commit or do they bail off to this gen? <gasps> the gen pops. Two more gens done. Down down to two left. Looking really good for the survivors now. Oh, they got the timing on it and the shock waves comes through. Very well played and down goes Ace. So yeah, there's a weird thing on Pyramid Head where like if you send out the shock wave right as the stun kicks in, the shock wave will go out even if you get stunned. And yeah, it's hard. To, it's sometimes hard to react to. You got to react like really quickly to getting stunned. But yeah, Cyberite does get the shockwave through the stun. And that's really good. So down goes Ace. Gen number four pops though. Down to one gen left. Really well played here, man. Saru in a really, really strong position now. And again, no like late game perks for Cyberite either. Like no, no ed, no, no way out, nothing. So like hypothetically, if they can get this final gen done while being in a pretty good spot. Good pathing there from Claudette too. If they get this final gen done while still being in a pretty good spot, 
This could end up being a big result. This could end up being huge, man. Like, fucking huge. Oh. Zoning, zoning, zoning. Goes for the, shake sh the, the save shock wave. Gets it. Now, do you hook or do you cage? You cage. Because if you hook, you get pop. But I don't really know how important pop is right now. And I think Cyber Eye seems to agree. Pop's not that important. Oh, good shockwave on the ace, too. He's death hook. He's death hook, which means if he really... Like, if he has, like, a decent chase here... Like, this is, like, a weird... Oh, he's letting himself go down under hook. Okay. Is this a bait? It's not a bait. Jake's here. They're just trying to buy time for this gen, basically. Like, Nancy's on the last gen. So Ace is like, dude, I, yeah, go ahead. Oh. And they get the save. Slapa stays up uh, stays up a little bit longer. Jake's a fresh hook. And so is Nancy. So, like, if you don't think you're going to be able to get... If you don't think that you're going to be able to get a kill in time to, like, try to, like, actually make more happen, which doesn't seem very likely, chasing Jake here feels like a pretty okay play, which I think is what Cyber is doing. Maybe realizing, like, okay, Jake's a fresh hook. Probably not going to stop this final gen. Probably just want to maybe, like, like maybe best case scenario, I get this down quickly and get pain res and interrupt it a little bit longer. Worst case scenario, they pop the gen like this. But at least I'm on the fresh hook survivor. Ooh. That was kind of sick. It didn't land, but that was kind of sick. Like, what they were going for was kind of fucking cool, to be honest with you. Good play from Jake, though. Gets the stun, forces the pyramid head down out under the edge map side, and then runs deeper into the map. Now has a body block. Although, body blocking... You know, body blocking doesn't work on a well-aimed shockwave, but... This kind of forces the killer to have to go for a shockwave, which is a lot more risky, right? And this kind of eliminates the possibility of getting an M1 hit. You have to go for a... Shockwave. And it doesn't land. And wow, wow, sorrow, four stages. Four stages ends up being the final. Was it even four? Was it three? No, four. It was four stages. Four stages is the final result there. Um, four stages, two fresh. Very, very well played by sorrow. Wow. So yeah, they took that last that last game where Swap a DC'd and they were like, okay, hold up. We'll just do the same thing right here. Easy peasy. Came through, played very well. And god damn, that's a that's a that's a rough game. Um so now the win con for their killer is going to be either five stages or four stages, three fresh. So not going to be that crazy of a win con, but we'll see, man. I mean, we'll see. These It feels like both these teams are, are putting up really, really big survivor results. So like, even though this feels like a pretty easy result to get to for the killer, you never know, man. You never know. That's honestly kind of a heartbreaker, though, because like had, had Cyber Eye managed to get that Jake, that would have been like most likely seven stages, right? Seven stages, three fresh. Which is not a bad result at all. Like, 7 stages 3 fresh would have been a pretty solid result. So it was so close. It was really, really close to being good. But just just not quite. Just not quite. Them, them getting that Jake out was super huge. Um, Let me get the gamers back in, y'all. Wait, who am I even inviting? Oh my god, my brain is, like, malfunctioning. Uh, Okay, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Back revving that pallet. Can you believe? Can you can you guys believe those back revs? I'm back revving this lobby right now. That's crazy. I'm about to back rev this cup of gamer subs right now. Holy shit, I'm back revving the fuck out of this. That's wild. Yo, Yorkies, thanks for the 75 months, by the way. Wait, sorry, that's 73. 73 months, you crazy bastard. Thank you. That's a lot of months. Holy shit. Thank you, man. Appreciate that a lot, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the support, my guy. All right, um, gamers are getting in. Again, win con now is going to be really hard for these guys. They're going to have to get... They're going to have to basically beat this and somehow get three stages, which is uh, not going to be the easiest. That's going to be very, very difficult. Also, I think um, whoever's on overlay must have uh, had something come up. The overlay is currently wrong. It should be five gens with four hooks on the other side, but it's fine. We, we all know what the last result was. It's fine. It's fine. We can just... It's fine. I do be juggling. Oh, are you doing it all right now, Dino? I see. Yeah, I know. That's fair. That's fair, man. I mean, it's really no rush. I didn't know if you were like, if you were on top of everything or if like there was someone else. Yeah, if you're doing it all, then that's definitely, that's even more reason for it to be. Yeah, it's totally chill. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 72 months is six years. Yeah. So that's a, that's a six year and one month resub. Yep. 
Yep, 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 yep. Which is pretty crazy. Um, kind of crazy that I've, I've even been streaming that long. Like, that's so fucking long. That shit's wild. I back rev, you back rev, he, she back rev. Yeah, of course. Of course. This is basics, man. Like, come on. But the, 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 the good news here about this right now is that Sorrow lost the first set. Uh, and Four Doids One Locker won the first set of Wraith. And it's looking like, again, obviously nothing's decided. I mean, the survivors still could come out here and have a crazy good result. But it is looking like uh, Sorrow could take this Pyramid headset. And if they do, that will take us to our tiebreaker. We'll be going the whole way to the uh, demo set with these two teams, which will be interesting. I think demo will be very, very spicy with two teams of this level. So, yeah, curious to see how that goes. Commentator curse? Yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, like, you never know. Like, like crazy shit can happen. Like, we've seen really, really good strive results here. But, like, I, again, this is one of those spots where I think knowing the win con, right? Like, knowing the win con. Like, if you go into this game not knowing that you just need five stages, then you maybe, like, kind of go for more, and then you end up, like... Because, again, like, Cyber Eye was, like, so close to getting seven stages, right? And, like, yeah, they maybe could have just stuck to Ace and killed Ace and got five stages, or whatever but instead they like kind of went for the fresh hook and then just didn't quite get it and it was like really really close but like if you just know that you need five stages and that's it you can do things like put on the perk no one escapes death you can do things like i don't know play around that win con that makes it just so much harder like like these survivors need to have even like like a these, these guys need to have a significantly better game than the last survivors like not even just like as good of a game they need like a significantly better one because, again, the killer is able to play around that win con, and that's all they need to get. Like, these survivors basically need to pop off crazy hard. I don't think it's even possible to, to cast a curse this one, to be honest with you. Like, this is... I mean, eh, well, maybe it is, though. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's just going to be very tough regardless. I think no matter what I say, it's going to be really tough. Nightmare, what up? Welcome, man. Good to see you. And damn it, the Ozwing girl, that's a long-ass time. I feel like I haven't played with those motherfuckers in forever. I mean, obviously, you know, puppers. But, yeah, I mean, I haven't even hung out with any of those guys in a very, very long time. That was that was a very, very long time ago. All right, so here we are. They do have head on in one of the builds, which is kind of interesting. But similar build, just instead of Pop Goes the Weasel, we have Noed. So pretty expected, but Agi Painter is still in play. Makes it very good for you to be able to choose your hook, your hook locations, as well as making sure you make it to your Pain Res hooks. And we'll see how this goes. Nancy playing pretty aggressively. She does have decisive strike, so it makes sense. Ooh, already going for some pretty aggressive shockwaves. Good juke from Cyber. Has this edge map filler. Which this edge map filler can be deceptively decent here, to be honest with you. Because, yeah, stuff like that. Like, you go behind the pallet. Ooh! Ooh, the live! Making the killer whiff. Okay, okay. This is where you can find your... So, like, this is where... Oh, I was going to say, the killer might just send shockwaves there. Because, like, if you get the hit, you basically have Nancy damaged and zoned into the corner. But instead, breaks the pallet, chases her down. She runs out to get hit. Now she's going to be running a, further, a, 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 a little bit further in to get hit. So this follow-up hit now will take a little bit longer having to chase into the map like this. But she does make the bus. It's the split bus. But it is still a bus. Ooh, good patience with Rainy, though. It does get the down. So good try for Cyber. Still a pretty decent chase. <gasps> I mean, that would have been cool if it worked, you know? Oh, they wait. They blinded Cyber. Eye. That's good. Wait, hey, hey, hey. We at least blinded the survivor. And looks like he's gonna take a, he's gonna take a beeline with that hook. I don't think it even was a pain rest. No, it was a pain rest. Never mind. It just, it just, it just hit, it hit Fang's gen. So Feng gets pain res. The, the Genet Shack should be popping relatively soon. But first hook does come in at five gens, technically. And also the hook is right on top of this bus gen, which is one of the gens that was being worked. So out, out, of, out of the three split gens that were being worked, two of them are going to pop, and the other one is going to kind of be sitting right on top of the hook. And I think Rainy kind of understands, again, especially based off WinCon. This is kind of what I meant, right? Especially based off WinCon, 
this play becomes a lot more viable. Like this play is maybe not as viable if you're the first killer and you have to like set a result, right? But knowing like knowing the like you know what the result is, right? Like you can like you can force struggle here, and then basically from here, as long as you just get somebody fresh hook late game, like by late game, right? Like by like at, like at this point you force struggle, and then at some point between now and them leaving, if you just down someone fresh hook and then secure that, it's over. You know? Feng here to try to get this one for one, and she will one for one. So does does get the driver off hook before struggle at least. But that's gonna be another pain res coming through. And I think he also got a skill check when he let go of the gen too, which is really unfortunate. So that's gonna be even more regression because fuck you, RNG. Life sucks. But yeah, I mean this is still the same position, right? Because now like it's kind of the same thing. Like it's still like at this point if you just find either like at this point honestly yeah it might, it might even make sense not to not camp this hook and maybe just seek out either kate or tap right because if you find either kate or tap and just kill them and then stand in front of their hook you basically just win right i mean i guess maybe a non i guess one of the people that are even hooked could one for one could, but no even then you'd still win right like there'd be like there'd be no way i think i'm pretty sure as long as you chase if you find a fresh hook and down them i think you just win Is gonna probably is gonna try to pressure that gem with struggles a little bit. Decides to come back to try to secure struggle. Is anyone even making a move for this? Nancy is. Kind of makes sense. Nancy's the only person that's been hooked already. She's not worth that many hook stages, so she'll come up and actually, she'll sneak it. The pyramid actually left a good bit, and they managed to sneak the unhook without any damage whatsoever. Not bad. And now actually sticking to to Fang. I'm a little confused by the decision making of the pyramid here. Because now, like, I feel like now we're getting into territory where this could somehow go in the survivor's favor. I feel like if you're the killer, yeah, you just, I think, again, you just find Tap or Kate. And then you stick to them like glue. Right? That has to be what you do here. Because there's only one gen left now. And we're kind of getting into the territory where it's, like, kind of getting a little manka. Oh my god, that shockwave. That's what we were talking about with the whole like coin flip killer where you just like send out a shockwave in the distance and then sometimes they might juke into it on accident and then yeah, like just crazy shit. But crazy hit there and down goes tap and I think that should basically all but lock it down, right? Because at this point you can just hook tap and then probably just stand in front of it. Not even probably, you literally can. Like there's no way that they're going to be able to like they'd, like they'd have to send all three healthy survivors to try to unhook and then have to get everybody out without anybody going down, which is just going to be crazy impossible, especially with Noed. But they'd have to break Noed and send three of these survivors. Like, I don't know. That's so that's so crazy hard to work around. Um, but the last gen is being worked by Nancy. Can I go to progress. Oh, a ah! little delayed on the head on. Two survivors still here. Are they gonna just gonna are they gonna sneak this unhook without any damage? No, they're not. Oh, throws the pallet. I, I think she was hoping to throw the pallet without the getting hit so that she can get the unhook safely, but that hit means that she can't get the unhook safely anymore, so she has to leave. And yeah, they'll pop the last gen, but the second that Adam goes struggle, or sorry, not Adam tap. I keep doing that. The second tap goes struggle. That's game over, because that's the fourth hook with the third. That's that's four hooks with uh, three fresh, which is exactly what the killer needs. So, yeah, it's just too little too late, you know? I mean, again, the survivors honestly did keep it close. Like, they really did. They kept it very close, but... Yeah, that's going to be it. So, uh, so Sorrow's going to take... So, uh, Sorrow's going to take this one, and that's going to take us into the tiebreaker. The demo set will be played. And it's going to be a tie game. We'll see how this goes. And we all know that if the demo set gets tied... Then we're sending out the juicers. We haven't had a chance to do that yet. I'm still waiting for that to happen. Someday. Someday we're going to get a set where we can do the old send your juicers. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to happen eventually. <laughs> One of these days. One of these days we will send your juicers. One of these days. But hey, man. Very well played by Sorrow, honestly. Like, they're, like their survivors this round were fucking nasty, dude. They were nasty. It happened the one... Oh, yeah. Wait, who was it? Wait, so, the, wait, like, did it actually happen? And who won? Like, 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 who was in between? Like, what teams were they? And w who was the juicer that they sent? Waifus and rats. 
Okay, if it was waifus, it was, it had to be Z Slasher then, right? Z Slasher, then who who was it for rats? I don't even know. Contra? I see. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. And who won it? Who won it? I I mean I I feel like I want to say probably Z Slasher because I know I know he's a little one v one nerd. But I don't know. Ice is good though, so I wouldn't be surprised. Them? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, Z Satchel's kind of a nerd, so it kind of makes sense. Also, I kind of lost track of what was going on, but uh. Oh, that shockwave. Bruv. They did locate Noah in Shaq. But Blitzy's down and is a fresh hook. It looks like they're going to get picked up. I'm a little. I don't know, the killer. It looks like they want to protect Noah, but they allow the pickup to happen. Oh my lord, brother. These shockwaves. What the fuck? Oh my lanta. Oh my lanta. No, it is up, but it's being cleansed. So it's going to be. Oh, but the down comes in right before it gets cleansed. I didn't even see how it happened. It came in, it came in right before the cleanse. Wait a minute. Are they going to be able to slug for the 4K? No. Nancy's crawling out. You guys ever seen that episode of Dexter's Lab where it's like a tortoise and a fucking slug racing for the remote control? I feel like that's what Nancy's doing right now. But also they pick up they pick up tap and this time he doesn't get hit by the mile away shockwave. This time he doesn't get hit by the, the close range shockwave either. And yeah, they're all kind of staggering back onto their feet now. Nancy's still crawling out. Kate is probably gonna get picked up. And Oh my god, brother! Oh my lord! Er my lord gird. And this driver's fresh, so like, honestly, even just taking this hook and being like, yeah, it's a fresh hook, I mean, that's solid, right? I mean, that's five, eight stages if you kill the survivor, so like, that's still really good. So yeah, yeah, gonna take that hook on to Kate, the rest of them are at the gate, that should end up being an eight stage game. So, very well played by Rainy. Got, got, got the result they needed and then some. And, uh, that will take us into the tiebreaker. Demma Gorgon. Demma Georgian. Tofu, what the hell does Lanta mean? Why do you always say that? Okay, I have a confession. Uh, I have no idea what Oh My Lanta means, but uh, I used to I used to be friends with like a with like a group of like really really flamboyantly gay dudes, and they would say shit like that, and then I kind of just picked it up by hanging out with them a lot. So now I just like there's like a few things that are in my vocabulary that are just like that are like ten year old gay speak, like gay speak from like ten years ago. That's just in my vocabulary from hanging out with a with a big group of gays, you know. My lanta's and oh yeah, my lanta's like an yeah, it's like it's like an antacid or something. I don't know. I just knew I just knew these really flamboyant gay dudes that used to say it a lot, and I feel like I just like picked up on the things that they said sometimes. It happens, it happens, man, it happens. I don't know. Did you have sex with them? <laughs> no, I'm not gay. No, I'm not gay. I did not have. I was I was not having sex with the with the, with the, with the gay friends that I was hanging out with. No. No, 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 no. I, li I like the question. I like the line of questioning. That's good. I like it. J just checking to be sure. Just checking to be sure. Are you sure you didn't have... Did you have sex with them? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, whoops. Same lobby. Or no. Yeah, we <laughs> did you back rev each other? Oh, uh, yeah, dude. That's how we spent our weekends back revving each other. Yep. 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 You figured us out. No. Okay. It's gonna be a different lobby. Uh, I'm gonna get some ads out of the way real quick. This will be the last ad break of the night. So I'm just gonna get them out of the way so that we can be ad free for the rest of the night. It'll be the last demo set. So let me just get these out of the way and then we'll watch the demo set. But, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. I Googled Oh My Lanta. It sounds like it's from Full House. Oh, really? That's weird. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like one of those things that randomly picked up. I really have no idea why. I don't know. We still use it today, do you? See, I don't know. I figure all my I figure all my things that I knew from 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 gay speak was from like when I hung out with you know a lot of the friends I used to have a long time ago. But it's not a thing anymore, so I don't know. But like, but like then again, I just don't really hang out with very much very much of anyone anymore. So I don't I don't know. The fucking streamer life, man. Anyway, here we go. Swap on killer. Let's get the survivors back in. Uh, uh, uh. Do 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 do. Did you see the new icon, Tofu? 
I conned these nuts in your mouth. Ha! Ah, got him. Good try, monkey burrito. You're not getting me, fucker. Is there actually a new icon? I can't trust anything you say, monkey. I feel like you're always trying to do not me. All the new fresh hooks. Oh, it's like a Floods of Rage looking thing. Is that what that is? Floods of Rage? I can't even tell. I think that's the Floods of Rage icon, right? Oh, sick. That's not Pain Res, no. Pain Res has like a gen under it. I'm pretty sure that's Floods of Rage. It's from Pain Res? Really? It's the Scourge icon. Are you sure? Oh, I guess Pain Resonance does have that, but over the gen. Well, it's not on every Scourge. It's on like Floods. Like, I, I, okay, so both Floods and Pain Res have that same hook thing, but these ones don't. Weird. I don't know. Whatever. Regardless, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's on both. Is the pain res hooks chopped off from the gen? Monkey did it. Oh, hey, good job, man. It looks really good. I like it. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, apparently, yeah. I mean, I think they weren't wrong. I think barbecue is not really associated with uh, fresh hooks anymore, unfortunately. So it does kind of make sense to change it. I think it's a good idea. I work with a middle-aged woman. She says it like five times a day. Is she gay, though? But is she gay? Is she a gay middle-aged woman? That's the question. How long before Fresh Hook Icon is just Grim Embrace? Dude, I'll be real with you. Grim Embrace is not really as popular as I thought it would be. Like, I thought that perk would be fucking everywhere. And I do see it a good bit, but, like, not as much as I thought. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. She's a back grab expert. That's right. That's right. Middle aged, she bro, she's she's done enough. She's done some back revving in her day, that's for sure. That's for sure. She's been on the catching and receiving end of the back revs quite a few times by then, you know. Is that as strong as I thought it'd be? Really? I think it's incredibly strong. I think I think the thing about Grim Embrace is just that you don't really see the value directly, right? Like with a perk like pain res or pop or whatever, like you see the gen go backwards. You're like, oh, that gen was at like 90 and now it's at like 60. You know what I mean? Whereas like with Grim Embrace, it's just like stalling. It just stalls the game a fuck ton. And especially when you get to like all four stacks, bro, it's like ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Q I don't even know how to say your name. QP here? I agree. Grim Embrace is dumb strong, dude. It's super dumb. Like I feel like if you're running like Grim Embrace with like pain res dead man switch, like, life is just fucking misery, dude. Life is misery. Like, best of luck. Like, that shit's a nightmare. Fuck that garbage. Queeper. 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 I see. Quee. Quee? Like, Q- Wait, like, Quee? Quee. Is it not Quee? Is it Quee? Hmm. Bro, I just, I'm just bad at pronouncing things. I don't have to tell you, man. Not we. We. Oh, like why? Wait. What? Like Kwai? Kwiper? What? Are you saying Kwai instead of Kwi? Like, like saying the word why, but like with a Q. I'm just going to call it Q. Man, I, I give up. I give up. I give up on pronouncing anything ever. I just give up. I'm just going to call you Q. It ain't my strong suit, man. I'm going to be honest. I'm not good at it. Like whip. Yeah, like whip. Like quip with er on the end. Quipper? Hmm. Ah, like quipper. Like you're playing the, that, that Jackbox game. Like you're like you're someone that's actively playing Jackbox. Like you're a quipper. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I know. I'm 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 growing so much as a person. I'm learning so many things. This is going great. This is going great. I love this. Oh, this is fantastic. If like vibing, I always use Grim Embrace, Pain Res, Corrupt, because those three perks together, I don't even need to look at macro gameplay. Yeah, bro, that, that combo is nuts. Like, Pain Rose Corrupt is, or sorry, like, like, uh, Pain Rose Grim Embrace is, like, even just that combo of two perks, it's just such a massive fuck you, dude. Like, you're on a gen, someone gets hurt, and it's like, boom, goodbye 25% progress, and you're like, ah, oh, I guess I'll get back on it, and then boom, it gets blocked, and you're just like, really? 
Like, fucking seriously? <laughs> like, can I play the goddamn video game, man? <laughs> like, can I please play the fucking game? Like, that shit's like such a massive fuck you to you as, as, as a survivor. Yeah, I'm very surprised that we're not seeing it in like every build. Like, I'm, I kind of thought that like every single public game match would have Pain Res Grim Embrace. Cause yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. Shit is pretty strong. Anyway, here we go. Uh, swap ball on the Demogorgon. Let's see how this goes up against the uh, survivors of four Dwight's one locker. Going for a pretty aggressive build, so not going with the old no ed fallback. I think feeling pretty good about his chances of making something big happen. Looks like there's three gens bottom, so there should be probably some kind of a four gen setup on top side, right? Uh, actually, the middle gen is decently middle, isn't it? It's kind of like a 3 1 3 split. This kind of looks like maybe the most ideal gen split you could ask for. Maybe. I think, anyway. It's kind of looking 3 1 3. Uh, finds a survivor of this ballot and actually gets a quick tag on him, too. That's a really good start. Same add ons that we'd expect to see all the time. Uh, breaks this pallet, kind of keeps him zoned bottom. It looks like the, looks like the survivor kind of wants to stay bottom anyway, though. Oh, good shred there, though. I think Tap maybe could have pathed around the back of that rock instead of trying to vault it, but instead goes for the vault, gets punished. That's going to be a pretty quick down and not a crazy amount of gen progress. I mean, this is the highest amount of progress right now, and this is he's about to carry a hook. He's about to carry a survivor right to this gen, too. So firecracker attempt by Kate, not going to go through. But yeah, first look coming through. Not not really a lot to speak of it either. Portal's gonna go down. And yeah, I would say this uh, this gen setup definitely favors top side a little bit more than bottom. Like this like this mid gen is definitely leaning more towards top than bottom, I think. But still, I mean, pretty close to like a just like an even split of gens as you can get. Like 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 uh, nothing too crazy. We've seen some pretty we've seen some pretty wild like four or five gen setups in this map before. So like this is really not that bad all things considered, and it looks like Swappa likes his chances of being able to actually get this tunnel out in time. This unhook happened relatively quickly, and yeah, he gets the rebound on the tab very fast too. Tab's not able to make it to Shack in time, so yeah, he's just going to go down near Shack, and this will be another hook on him very, very quickly. You can even maybe justify putting a... Like, I actually am a little surprised. I think you can justify putting him in basement and then putting a portal at the top of basement. And then when the unhook comes in, just dropping a portal and teleporting back and then getting the kill that way. Like, I feel like you can go anywhere on the map and still basically protect your hook because you can just portal back from anywhere on the map and be in a relatively good position to, to tunnel him out. So, a little surprised to not see that, but this is also fine too. Hook some kind of bottom mid, kicks that gen that's like top mid. They do finish the gen at 11, but still a really good spot. I mean, still a really, really good spot. Tab is looking like his his days are numbered. They're trying to progress his gen and he keeps scaring them off with Shred. He's trying to find the survivor rotating. Oh, he actually sees the survivor rotating for the save. Finds Nancy, forces Shack Pallet out of her. Oh, iframes protects the guy on hook. Doesn't quite get the reach around correctly. Does get the follow-up hit on do thing there though. And now it's just uh how long does it take for this tunnel out to happen? This tile or th this pallet is pretty solid. Nancy's here to take a hit if, if need be. Okay, Le Fish turning up though. Look out for that boy, Le Fish. He will get zoned towards bottom side. He kind of has this shitty. I don't know. I don't even know. What, like, 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 what do you call this tile? I don't even know. This is like the shittier Ormond tile. That's what I call it. And yeah, he will go down. Yeah, this tile is not very great. It's uh, unfortunately a pretty bad tile, and he can't manage to get it, get to uh, get away with it without going down. And there you go. Let's give it a tunnel out with three gens left. Three gens left. So pretty good spot to pretty good spot to be in for swap. But there's still a three gen bottom side, although it's a pretty it's a pretty far three gen. Like this is a, this is a three gen bottom, but these gens like I think the like like the five gen and like the seven gen are pretty far from each other. But it is still a 3 gen, so still something to work with here. This could end up being a pretty big result, depending on how this goes. Variant gym? Yeah, the variant gym. Tetris tile. Yamaoka tile. I don't, see, I don't even know, man. I have no idea. Like, I don't know what... Like, can we just call this the shit tile? I don't know. I don't know what to call it. It's a weird tile. I can't quite seem to come up with, like, a good solid name for it. Getting some kicks down on these gens and getting some regression on them. I get. I think just wants to get regression going on all three of these gens. 
But so, like, not really, like, getting much pressure on the actual survivors in the last, like, minute. They're currently doubling the gen top side, and Nancy is stealthing bottom, so this is really good. I like the way the survivors are playing this. As long as this Nancy stays hidden, this is really, really good. Because Swappa now basically has to, has to make a choice, right? Like, do you go deep in the top side to try to pressure survivors? Because if you do, Nancy will punish that by doing a gen bottom. But if you don't, then they're just doing gens for free, and you're just sitting there doing nothing, you know? So the killer will venture their way down here. But this should trigger Nancy to get on a gen. So now you're kind of on a timer, right? Like, if you don't make something happen within, like, I don't know, 80 seconds or so, then you're probably going to lose one of your three gens. Well played by Fang. 99 Sprint Burst is still a thing that exists, and it's going to get popped. Gets away from that shred, too. They, they do manage to pop the gen top, uh, the, the gen top side that they were working as well. And the down comes in. What's the progress looking like on that bottom side, gen? It's probably going to get pain rest, which is unfortunate. But this is still good, right? Like, even though they're not going to pop it, it's still good. It's still a lot of progress. And this, is like, kind of puts pressure on the killer. It makes them not want to walk away from this. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I think even right now, I think maybe if you just stealth away from this. Yeah, I think actually the better play here would have been to pre-stealth and just try to do the same thing. But maybe it's okay. Kate gets found. Swamp are going to head in and find it. Uh, uh. Kate's is just pressuring this hook so heavily that the demo doesn't really want to walk away from it. That's going to be the tag. Does Nancy... Okay, Nancy's just going to stay on the gen. Nancy really wants to finish that gen. But the problem now is that Pop's even more valuable. So Swampa goes in there with Pop now, which I think he is. That's going to be an even more valuable Pop. I think Kate will manage to get the unhook while this is happening. But Pop's going to get a lot of value there. And the unhook comes in. But now what do you do? Who do you go after? I think you almost have to go after the Nancy, right? Unless you can get a down on the Kate, like, immediately. You almost want to maybe want to send the Nancy. Well, actually, this might be a down, so... Good juke from the Kate. Gets away from that one. Also, goes, also throws the pallet. Does get zoned slightly, though. So Kate's still kind of in trouble here. But this might be enough time for that gen to pop. Right? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. She kind of was zoned edge map, so she's going to die. Yeah, I think this will be enough. Right? I think it's going to be enough, right? Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, it's going to be close. No, it pops. No, it pops. No, it pops. No, no, no. She gets it done. Oh, my God. She doesn't get it done. Never mind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was so close. Oh, God. It was so close. It was like a split second. That's actually so huge. That gen stays up. Nancy's now in trouble. She's going to get hit. Feng was way up at Water Tower. Oh, man. That's so unfortunate. Or very fortunate, I guess, if you're a fan of uh, Sorrow. Because, I mean, yeah, that kind of keeps the game very, very much alive here. In the sense that I think the survivors are probably going to get 4K'd. Because they're going to pop that top side gen, but this bottom side gen now, like this like this Shack gen is going to be going backwards. And they're both injured. And I think that the killer is going to have a pretty good idea that they're both top side right now, too. Especially once they see the, this heal come in. Like, once this heal comes through, then Swap is definitely going to know. Like, okay, they're top side healing probably near main or somewhere top side. So he pretty much knows, where to, he pretty much knows exactly where to look. These gens are going to regress quite a bit. At least the Jen and Shaq, anyway, is regressing. And it's going to regress quite a bit. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Tough spot. And Kate goes struggle. Nancy's going to finish the Jen at main while Feng tries to make her way back into the map. But again, the fact that the killer knows where they both are now just makes it so hard, right? Like, it's so hard to do much of anything. Like, any rotations you make, he can, he's, he can know exactly where you're coming from. Like, right here, he knows that Feng is here, and he knows that Nancy is still upstairs and maybe making her way over here to the, on, on this other side. Sees Feng again, just kind of holding rotations now. And yeah, what do you do here? Like, what do you do? This is so tough. Injured Nancy actually kind of putting some pressure on the hook. While Feng goes for the gen. But look at how much it's regressed, dude. It's like down to like 50. It still has so much, so so long to go. Doesn't get that shred. Oh, is this unhook actually going to come in? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The survivors. Hold on a second. Swappa actually getting kind of aggressive there. I think that was a little bit of a throw. That felt like actually a pretty big throw to me. I feel like you just play close to that hook. Like, that motherfucker was about to die. I think you just play close to the hook there. Like, why wouldn't you? 
Like, like worst case scenario is that they send Feng to like one for one, but even then you're still getting a rehook. Head on not coming through, but also not getting the shred either. And now they're kind of scrambling. If they all get out of here, it's gonna be crazy. Are they gonna get out of this out of this bottom side? If Kay can get out of here without going down, she's actually just gonna oh he's gonna bail. Wait, what? What's happening? Blind on the vault. Jen's gonna get kicked. It's still rough for the survivors though, because all their progress is on one gen. Like all their progress is on the middle gen. Like if they if they had a bunch of progress on the outer gens, this would be a lot more reasonable. But like they kind of all, all have all their eggs in one basket right now, and it's tough. Because yeah, like even though I think Swappa misplayed that a little bit, he can still just do this now, right? He can kick this mid gen and then just kind of patrol it, and then what do you do, right? Like it's kind of hard to actually work this gen, especially if he gets his tag on the on the Fang, right? She like she's she's full health, so she can kind of pressure it. But if she gets injured at some point too, then then you can't pressure it at all. Then it, 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 it's just completely fucked. And yeah, there it is. There's the hit. She doesn't even make it that far either. She might have her sprint burst 99. I don't know. They're currently doubled. She doesn't have her sprint burst 99, so she's actually in trouble here. Ooh, not falling for those fakes. Not falling for that fake either. The bravest Feng Min you've ever seen. They're actually gonna double this gen. They're gonna they're they're gonna get it done. This is not pain res. This gen this gen will get done. Interesting. Wow. And on top of that, Nancy's a fresh hook and she's full health now. A full health fresh hook survivor. If they can get that fresh hook Nancy out, that'll be fucking massive. That'll be huge. She did head up this way. Okay, Swappa sees Nancy. So if, if we've been tracking hook stages and we know who's fresh and who's not, this Nancy is like, like you're like licking your lips and rubbing your hands together. You're like, ah, yes, the perfect target. Yes, yes, yes. Cause this Nancy is exactly who you want right now if you're the killer, right? Like you just, like you get this Nancy, you put her up on hook and then you just kick back and relax and take your 10 stage game and feel good about it. But I don't think it's gonna happen. That was a really good stun. And yeah, Nancy's actually gonna get out. So never mind. That's so huge. That's so huge, dude. So that's gonna be what? Four stages getting out. It's gonna be an eight stage game. Eight stages, three fresh. Wow, dude. What a recovery from the survivors. This was literally looking like, like definitely like 4K1 territory. Especially with that, that kill happened so early, dude. Like that first tunnel out happened with like three gens left. Like this was such a strong position for the killer. And I definitely think fumbled it a little bit for sure. The strivers handled it very well though. And yeah, man, managing to get that managing to get out with that many stages is so massive right here. That's that's so so huge. That being said, that being said, the kind of like expected result here from proper striver play is like seven stages. So like I think they recovered there and got a pretty solid result, all things considered. But I still think this overall killer result is actually not that bad, really. Like, eight stages, three fresh is really not terrible. Like, this is definitely still winnable, right? Because, like, really, really, really good survivor play will kind of make it so that, like, seven stages is kind of, like, expected, right? That is obviously with, like, really good survivor play. But I would argue that that's what we've been seeing from Sorrow, right? Sorrow survivors have been giving us really good survivor play. So, like... I don't know, man. Like, as much as they recovered really well and managed to, like, get out of that with a good result based on what they were looking at, I still think it's not a bad spot to be in. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm actually not in the next lobby yet. Um, see, I don't know, man. This is interesting. This I really have no idea how this is going to go for this last game. I really don't know. This is going to be interesting. Back rev like they've never back revved before. I know, man. Crazy, the back revs we saw that game. Fucking crazy. Absolutely wild. Okay, uh, we're in. It'll be Psycho. Psycho Mantis will be on the uh, on the killer, or uh, as we call him, Le Fish. Le Fish. And let's get the gamers in here. And all right, all right, all right, all right. Do me a favor and make sure Sorrow brings a bloodied instead of Vigo's blueprint this time. They messed up that offering in the past two sets. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell them in the in, in chat when they all join in. Um. So wait, what? Wh which one is that? Is that like, ba is that base pin or is that? I don't know. I'll just tell him. Yeah, I'll just tell him. Dude, big slug energy. Sorry to hear, man. That shit sounds awful. I don't know if I've ever had it, but it sounds fucking rough. Wait. Oh god. This, yo. 
I think perks can. Uh. Hopefully. Hopefully they get it. He should have camped the Kate in that gen. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the biggest throw there was not camping that Kate. Yeah. Like that Kate was about to die on hook. And Nancy uh, I can't remember who it was. I think Nancy was injured and then the Feng was full health, I think, right? And yeah, like you like you like you literally just sit there and protect that. And like again, best case scenario for the survivors is them and like there's no way that they pop the gen at Shaq, right? Like there's no way that they pop the gen in Shaq. So I think like best case scenario there for the survivor is that they like either run up and die for the unhook or they try to get as much gen progress as they can, in which case you're still fine, right? Because after Kate dies, you can go kick the gen and just camp it. So like either way, you're good, right? So yeah, I think that was definitely the biggest mistake there because I think that easily could have been a 4k one from that spot for sure. But again, like I said, I don't even know if it really matters a whole lot. Um... Uh, no, uh, wait. Whoops, wait, Shaq, what am I saying? What is it? Vigo's in binding, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vigos is the one where you start far away, right? Yeah. So Vigos and Binding, I'm pretty sure that's correct, right? Hopefully I didn't tell him the wrong shrouds. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong shroud. Or, or sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the right shrouds. It says Anno, Bloodied, Vigos, and Shroud. Wait, it says... Huh? Why do you have Hag as a tier 4 killer? Because she is dog. She is dog shit. She's absolute dog. That's why she's dog. Uh, where am I looking? Do, 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 do. Hmm. Oh yeah, actually it doesn't really sh it doesn't really sh wait, it really shows three offerings for some no wait. No, it shows all four. It shows annotated blueprint, bloodied blueprint, Vigo Shroud, Shroud of Binding. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Edo, bloodied, Vigo Shroud. Yeah. I messaged her team chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They just weren't bringing bloody either, either the last times. Ah, I see. I see. I see. Kazuki, thanks for the resub. Six months. Welcome back, buddy. Appreciate support. Thank you, gamer. Thank you, buddy. And Dianox Gate, thanks for the eight months as well. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Welcome back in. Anyway, sorry. To answer your question, Hag's in tier four because Hag's one of the worst killers in the entire game. Uh, she's awful. Uh, like, realistically, when teams are good, Hag usually has, like, no play. Like Hag is a killer that solely relies on survivor mistakes, basically. And if a good if a team plays decently well and doesn't make a lot of mistakes, that killer's fucking dog shit doo doo. Dog shit doo doo. One of the probably the weakest killer in the whole game, I would say at high level. So Vigo's for this or no? Vigo Shroud. Shroud of binding. Then basement hatch at Jack. I can't remember the names of the basement and things at Shack, but hopefully that's clear enough. Executioner Balance only shows three three offerings. Yeah, well that's because that's on Wrecker's Yard. If it's any map if it's any killer that's on Wrecker's Yard, then you don't really need to worry about basement and shack because where the fuck else is the basement gonna be, you know? So if it's a killer that has Wrecker's Yard, yeah, it's it, 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 it is only three offerings. But this is Cold Tower, this isn't Wrecker's Yard, so it kinda does matter here.
You say that to my knockout trail sloppy nurses hag and you're going to be sorry. I mean, if you want to go scrim a really good team with that build, I mean, I would be glad to watch. I actually wouldn't be glad to watch. I don't want to watch hag games. I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't be glad to watch. Never mind. I lied. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I mean, Hagen, I'm forced to run coup de gras because her lunge range, her, her trigger range is too far. Yeah, that's getting changed with the buffs, though, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that's being changed with her buffs, which is really cool. Because I feel like I've always found it weird that like she has like add-ons that make the trigger range bigger. Because like, why? Why would you ever want that? And they're like, it kind of feels like they're kind of acknowledging that by making like the default range shorter. It's kind of nice. Kind of nice. I mean, fuck Hag, but like, it's kind of nice, you know. I'll never forget Poop Wilson's 47 minute long comp hag game. Poop Wilson? Their name is Poop Wilson? That's amazing. Do I know Poop Wilson? That name is so silly, but yet it sounds familiar to me for some reason. Why does Poop Wilson sound, sound, sound so familiar? Poop Wilson. Anyway, here we go. Uh, we got Noed on the build. So, no, there's like pretty much the same build, except instead of Pop Goes Weasel, we got Noed. So, a little bit more late game insurance. He was the founder of Sweater Force. He also streamed. Interesting. Poop Wilson. I wonder. I think I might have saw Poop Wilson play in uh, one of the Swiss tourneys. Like uh, maybe that's why. I, I feel. I feel like that's a name that like me and Ralph probably laughed about while casting Swiss tourney. That seems like a thing that probably happened. We were probably like, ah, Poop Wilson. You know, that's probably a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't really remember exactly, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, finds a chase with Nancy. Feels like we're controller gaming right now. Good tag though. She tries to fake like she wasn't gonna vault and then vault, but Lefish not falling for that shit. So pretty decently early hit. She'll be going up to the top, and I think she, she have balance. She does have balance, yes. So in a good spot to balance landing out of here. She's still just chilling up there, probably looking, yeah, looking down on the demo. Yep, just watching them, making calls to her team. Good start for Sorrow so far. Gonna head upstairs. Pressure down. Balance landing. Ralph and I, not me and Ralph. Hey, fuck you, man. Fuck, what the fuck are you? My English teacher? Eat shit. Fuck you. It's me and Ralph. Fuck you. This is a really good chase so far. They're getting a lot of gen progress. And even like this gen, like he walked right by this gen that had like a good 70 or 80%. So this down needs to come in like really quickly. Really, really quickly. Uh. Oh, that one doesn't land either. That's really unfortunate. You hate to see it. Unlucky. So, yeah, that chase taking way too long. Jake will get interrupted on this gen, but it's got so much progress. Like, honestly, maybe Nancy will even run up and just finish that if the Jake can take the can take the chase far away. And this is a nasty good start. This is kind of what I meant about like results on the survivors end, right? Like, this feels like an exceptionally good start for the survivors, but like, I definitely don't think that that, that eight stage like result that they managed to squeeze out at the end of last game will necessarily be enough based on how this goes because like they're playing this very well so far Ooh, doesn't quite get that pallet break for some reason too unfortunately just aimed a little bit wrong three gens done still no hook always bailing from this chase too oh no there is actually the final four gens are all topside there was actually kind of a nasty five gen topside this game one of them's already done but there was a five gen there still is a four gen but still only one injured survivor and they're there and they're currently sitting upstairs upstairs with bounce landing so they're in a relatively safe safe place anyway everyone else is full health no hook stages yet this is looking rough man needs nine stages to win or eight four fresh but this is not looking great to start finds nancy again who has bounce landing and will get the fuck out of dodge with it there she goes Uh oh, oh tries to bait her and does get her to leave tile. She tries to crouch check that, but doesn't end up coming through. The down comes in. But what's gen progress looking like, man? Not that crazy, actually. Not actually that crazy. They're they're uh, split on three gens. This is probably the main one, right? This is gonna get hit by pain res most likely. Yep, there it is. But they're split on three different gens, and none of them are like really, really high, but there is like, a, like at least a bit of pressure on a bunch of different gens. So again, if you're the killer here, how do you handle this, right? There's so many different gens that have progress. Just seems 
tough to really make anything happen here. Finds this gem with some progress. Doesn't find the survivor. Gonna head deeper up. Finds Jake at 11. Holding the pallet. He doesn't go, though. Ooh, can maybe get a hit here? Ooh, maybe thought he was gonna try to crouch it, and he doesn't. But doesn't end up getting that hit. Jake's gonna get some distance away. He should at least take a hit here. But he's stalling out a lot, circling around this object on top side. Hit comes through now. He'll use the speed boost to get the fuck out of there. But the reset's there. And main is done. Ace doesn't have any exhaustions to help him get out of here. So he's just going to drop immediately and try to go. It doesn't really matter too much. That's the, that's the middle gen too. So now there's like a decent split, right? You have like 10, 11, and then 1. Actually, it's not even like 10. It's like 9. It's like 9, 11, and 1. Um, so like not a bad gen split either. Like they can pressure nine and one and those are pretty decently far away. And it looks like that's probably what they're going to be doing. They're resetting everybody. And this look, I mean, at this point, I don't really know how poor Dwight's one locker could get out of this on top. I feel like Sorrow is in pretty firm control right now. They've just been playing so well. Like, like, I feel like the survivors from Sorrow are just so on point right now. Like, how do you manage to get to the win con? I mean, you do have no Ed, right? Like maybe no Ed is the only hope. But even with Noed, you're going to need a lot with Noed. They're currently doubling the gen at 9. Lefish teleporting back. We'll interrupt it. But again, if you start pressuring the map over here, they're just going to start getting gen progress on 1, too, right? Like, you really need downs. Like, you need someone to slip up and fuck up and go down really, really quickly. Like, you need to get, like, a fast 2-tap on somebody somehow. The heal comes in on Swappa. Everyone's back to full now. And yeah, they'll be making their way up towards the 1 o'clock gen that, 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 that they'll start pressuring. There's a quick hit. They're actually just now getting on the 1 gen. So it kind of seems like they've been taking this time to reset as well as that survivor at 9 kind of getting away from it. Uh, sees some scratch marks behind main. Wants to see if he can catch him off with the rotation. There is a still a survivor back here. Bamboozles the window. But yeah, they're just playing it so safe, man. Just like making sure they hold distance. If they ever get chased, they just run away from the three gen. And where's like, where's the opening? You know what I mean? Like, where's the opening? Like you got to find a hit on somebody and then have them like stuck in a bad spot so that you can follow it up with like another hit immediately, like really quickly. And it's just not really happening. Ace back on the gen at one. Jake using this filler. He might be able to get a hit in here with his shred. Maybe. No, not quite. Jake even greeting the pallet too and keeping it up for later. So good. He will eventually get a hit, but look at how far he is, dude. He's so deep in the bottom side. So he's going to get hit and run. And... Takes the pallet break. Maybe he doesn't... Just wants to commit to Jake, perhaps? No? Nancy's here. Huh. I guess wants to just commit to this chase bottom side. Maybe he realizes, hey, eventually I'm going to have to commit. Still good pallets here, to, though, too. Like, that's a, this is a really strong pallet. So even, even with wanting to commit to bottom side, there's still so much here to use. Jake's going to be able to buy some time. Nancy's here to body block. Although if no head pops, this body block might end up being... Uh... Well, she is, she is the only one that's been hooked. So I guess... She's the ideal target to, if you're going to have somebody go down. And it kind of seems like that's what they're waiting for, is for Noah to pop. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe they actually are trying to get around. I don't know. Oh, they were, they were holding adrenaline. Okay, they were holding adrenaline. I see. Nancy was waiting to get hit so that she, had to, so, so that she could adrenaline away. And there you go. Perfectly timed. And no heads up. But at this point, you need way too much, right? Like, you need way too much now. Um... Yeah, like you need like three different survivors dead and on hook and losing a bunch of stages and no has gone. Oh my lord, as if it couldn't get any worse. Holy shit, and they ends the cleanse no end. God damn, dude. The survivors from Sorrow, man, just look so good, dude. Holy fuck. Like these guys are just all over it, man. Just all over this. And yeah, I mean, not going to be able to get anything done. They're resetting the ace that just got hit. Jake is injured at the exit gate. He might go down. All right. Hey, at least the Jake went down because he, he he's worth three stages. So that'll at least give you more stages to end with. Um, 
The other three, I think, are just gonna bail and take their win con. I guess Claudette really wanted to seal the portal first. She 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 ain't satisfied. With, actually, wait, they still have to open that gate, maybe. Okay, yeah, she's still in the portal while they open the gate, I guess. But yeah, I think these guys are just gonna go. They don't like they don't they're not I don't think they're gonna stress about the extra three stages. It's still gonna be four stages, which is not enough. Or wait a minute. Maybe Ace wants to I don't know. What are they doing? These two are like, let's go, and Ace is like, but my friend! Hold on, I gotta save my friend! And these guys are like, motherfucker, let's just get out of here. Like, let's just take the win. Like, fine, we'll come help. God, I guess. Fine, we'll come fucking save. Jesus. I feel like that's the comms right now, right? It's probably something along. I feel like I'm got I gotta be close, right? I I I think I think I gotta be close here. Yeah, I mean, hypothetically, this could end up being okay, wait. Somebody left. Okay, never mind. They decided against it. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. They decided they they decided to take it and go. So never mind. There they go. GG's. That's gonna be four stages for Le Fish. Not quite enough to get uh, the win. Sorrow gonna take the two one, but this is a good set. This is a good set, man. I enjoyed this. I mean, I guess the set that four the four twice one locker one was. Again, I don't know if I want to say it's because of the lag out. Because again, we still don't know. Like that set could have been close even with the lag out. I don't know. It was really hard to say how that set was gonna go. But regardless, Sorrow looked really really good here. Like, very, very clean play from the Survivor. And, um, yeah, just very, very solid set for them overall. Four Dwight's one locker also looked really good, too. Just, again, I think Sorrow just kind of one step ahead of them. It felt like they were just kind of one step ahead of them every step of the way. Uh, just a little bit better performances on the Survivor rounds, especially. And, yeah, just squeezing out wins pretty much every set, except for the first one where the lag out was. And GG. GG's, man. That's a very solid set of games for the day, though. Oh, I just realized that I had the Wreckers map up for the whole, this whole final, this whole final game, huh? Yeah, that, that was not Wreckers. That was supposed to be Cool Tower. Oopsie. Well, hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? But hey, GG's, man. GG's. Those were, uh, those were some solid games. That's going to be it for the schedule. That's all for the day. Uh, it's been a good seven and a half hours of casting, so I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to get the fuck out of here. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for chilling. If you guys are new and you guys enjoyed, feel free to follow. We do this every Friday. So next Friday, we'll have some more games lined up. If you guys are interested in participating, but you don't have a team... Exclamation point solo queue will give you a form you can fill out where we'll match you with other people that have filled out the form that also want to get into comp. So please only fill it out if you have a very patient mindset where you're going to be okay with losing and you're going to be okay with like kind of getting in with other people that you don't know and trying to learn together, right? Even if your team doesn't stick together, it at least gets your foot in the door and you can meet other players that play comp. And even if your team doesn't stay together, you can still probably get hooked up with other teams that you scrim against and stuff. And maybe they'll sign you on as, as a player if, if, they, if you impress them or whatever. It's a good way to get your foot in the door. So feel free to use the solo queue form. Uh, if you guys were here earlier to watch Team Mirage play, that was a solo queue form team. And they played fucking phenomenal. That team was genuinely super impressive earlier. So like... It's a good way, man. I'm telling you, it's a good way to like get into it. Silicu so form, don't don't neglect it. If you want to give it a try, but you don't have people to play with, Silicu so form is your friend. Feel free to go fill it out. Um, that will be it for me, though. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, tomorrow's my day off. Tomorrow's Saturday, so we won't, I won't be live tomorrow. Uh, Sunday, Sunday at noon Eastern time. Me and Ralph. Okay, if you guys enjoy Comp DVD, tomorrow Saturday, Ots Darva and Hens are hosting are, are are casting the grand finals of DVD League. It's going to be Elysium versus Calamity. Then on Sunday, me and Ralph are, coasting, are, are casting the grand finals of the arcade, which is going to be Elysium versus Sinners. So two grand finals are happening um, this weekend, both tomorrow and the day after. So Odds and Hens will be tomorrow on Duty League. Me and Ralph will be on Sunday with uh, the arcade. So make sure to catch those if you guys enjoy watching Com shit as well. Um, Again, obviously, come watch me and Ralph because I'm going to support. The, I'm going to want you guys to come hang out with me. But don't miss the DVD League one either because that one's also going to be fantastic. It's going to be a really, really good set. And again, Hens and Ots will be casting that, which is a great duo. So that should be a really, really good set too. So yeah, lots of lots of comp happening over the weekend. I'll probably be back on Sunday. There is a minor chance that I'll take Sunday off, but I'll be back Sunday or Monday at the latest. Uh, at the latest. Thank you guys for so hanging out with me. Let me find somebody to raid. Um, hold on a minute. Dude, 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 Tofu in the Procaster arc? Bro, I gotta stop stuttering and swearing so much. <laughs> then, then maybe. No, but I am trying to get it on casting more. It's been, it's been really fun. It's been fun to, like, cast more and get into it a little bit more and... I don't know, it feels like a good experience to have, you know? Uh... Damn, there's, like, not that many people online right now. What the fuck? That's crazy. That's crazy. Where's everybody? Oh no, where's everybody? Oh no. Who do I raid? Oh no. 
Alright, I'm gonna throw you guys over to Grim. Grim's live. You guys can go chill with him. Super wholesome dude. Uh, super nice guy. Uh, he's a kind of a regular around the community. Uh, real chill dude. Would highly recommend. If you guys don't know him yet, you guys can go get to know him. I'm sure you guys will enjoy him. I'll be back next week. Hey guys, for hanging out again. Love you guys. Thank you guys for being here as always. That's it for me. Have a good rest of your night, guys. Go hit this man with a get rated nerd debated. Hope, hope you guys have a good rest of your night and a good rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys next week. I'm out of here. I'll see ya. I'll take care of ya. Uh, see you later. See ya.